Hey guys, so I've just restarted. I've just restarted the stream. And I think, I think Twitter has got like um, teething issues with how it uh, picks up streams. <clears throat> so hopefully. Twitter is showing it. So, guys, welcome to the Lionet stream again. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna uh, go through all the same details as I was going through a second ago because I don't want to repeat myself. But yeah, if you're, if you're here, um, if you, if you've got into the private sale or the public sale, like, congrats, you've just got into something that's very special because you've, you've bought into, you've bought into a blockchain before any, any venture capital uh, companies know about it, and that is something truly special. That, that does, that doesn't happen ever. That ne never that never happens the chances of the chances of um a regular person being able to buy into um a, a, a layer one blockchain or even even like a like a project that's got a lot of support a lot of vc funding to get into a private sale or a public sale is so like rare not many people get the opportunity so yeah it's it's pretty pretty impressive to be honest Hey, Fa. Hey, Mark. Yeah, I'm a, I'm just about to jump off, but I'll um, announce that there's a new link, and I've already changed it in the you know the events on Discord. But yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll be back in like an hour or two, and then yeah, we can further chat. But I was yeah. thinking perhaps you know we can um think like recalling your um an analogy about you know peeling one one layer at a time of an onion. We yeah, might yeah. Go into the deep dives um, and the summaries. Summaries of the deep dives that we have on the newsroom, on the official yeah. website, and just you know do them one by one, trying to understand them, decode them ourselves as well. Because there's obviously a lot we don't understand either. So yeah, it'll be good to get into the crux of it. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a, it's it's a pretty deep dive in it when you start looking at it. Like there's so much to there's so much to look at. It's not just like one one thing. It's it's yeah, like you said, yeah. peeling back. It's like peeling back an onion. Yeah, yeah, and, and I'm sure Kevin has a lot more that he hasn't shared with us because he has infinite ideas. But yeah, um, we we'll, yeah we'll do that. So yeah, I'll I guess I'll leave you to it for now. But yeah, I'll be back. But yeah, try and get Skippy and who was. Uh, Rona can I'll share I'll tag and share the link with them as well yeah yeah will do no worries I'll catch you catch you in about an hour catch you in an hour my god I don't know I don't I don't know who noticed that then but my screen my screen was going absolutely mental it was literally going back and forth back and forth back and forth so I don't want to connect my wallet Ronak I'm just adding you in bro I'm just adding you in yeah hey Skippy yeah i'm on how are you doing guys i'm good the fun the fun of twitter spaces I, the thing is right i've created this i've created the new the new space now and you can you can select to restart the existing page restart the existing space or create a new space and the the link the actual link to it is the same link so it mustn't it must just be like refreshed in the back or something yeah <clears throat> so this is what they've oh 
So the, these are the actual connected chains what are currently on there. And if you look at if you look at this list, right, I guarantee, I guarantee, like, I reckon every every quarter this list is going to increase. Typically, right, when you go when you go to a website and you'll you'll go on the about us section. When you scroll down to the but like, and if you if you look at this website, it's a pretty it's a different looking website. It's unique. It looks more like a like an operating system kind of kind of. But when when you go down to the about us section or the bottom of a page on a layer one, you'll see. Typically, you'll see um, all the venture cap companies that they're connected with, <laughs> and you'll probably have a list of like ten, um, like the really really big names in the space. And like here, you don't really see any. You've got you've got the projects, what the like the main projects that they're, they're currently working with, and then the connected chains. And like, I reckon this list. It's just going to keep on growing. Like, right, so you got ETH, Binance, um, Polygon, Solana, Phantom, Avax, Optimism, Arbitrum. And then this has been added on for Bitcoin for before the halving. But yeah, this this space, I think it's just going to it's going to grow and grow and grow. It's going to be um, it's going to be funny watching it evolve over the next next twelve months. Because the thing is, as this as this evolves here, then that means Layer One X is growing and doing obviously doing the right thing. And then the projects here. This is good. This is going to grow. Uh, but yeah, just forget. Just for getting started, like you got to you got to take into account as well. Like Layer One X hasn't hasn't gone live yet. So to have any like official partnerships with game studios and with like blockchains that are onboarding onboarding for digital identities and like a Dex, it's pretty impressive. So. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting twenty twenty four for sure. Did you get some uh, good sleep, Skipper? Have you have you still been awake since last time you were on? Is it still the um, same day for you, or is it night time? I know it doesn't really matter for you because you 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 work on your own time. <clears throat> no, it's uh, quarter to four. So um, no, I had I had sleep. Yeah, of course. But I'm just checking out some. Um, I ordered two laptops, i seven. And uh, oh, yeah. I'm looking for some uh, some cooling stacks now, you know, for to put under it. Yeah. Yeah, they they, they yeah. come on like little little stands. Yeah, with the ventilators in there, you know, for um, because a laptop, you know, it gets hot. I mean, it will only be using it for the notes, you know, but still, you know, it, it can get hot if it's on twenty four seven. So I might as well get everything sorted uh, right. Yeah. yeah, you don't want it getting you don't want it overeating. I think exactly. if the, I think I think if the screen's off, you're probably gonna be you're probably gonna be okay, but it's just making sure that the screen's off but the computer's still running. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure that's I'm sure that's not an issue because like you got a computer, you your monitor, it's it's actually a separate device, isn't it? In reality, like a, a laptop's no different than a computer. I mean, the screen's connected via a wire internally instead of externally. I mean, you can power down your laptop, you can power down your screen on your on your PC. You don't have to have that on. So, I think just having your computer on without a screen shouldn't be an issue. Yeah. Yeah, but you never know, you know, even those stacks, you know, they're, they're like uh, tilted. So you're not on the floor of your uh, desk, or whatever. Yeah. So I think it's a good idea. Yeah. So I'm just going to jump on to the, the L1X team. Um, so a lot of people don't know everybody that's part of the team because a lot of some people, some people on the team are on the front end, some people on the back end and um, the ones that are on the back end don't always have like um, they don't they don't always speak into the community, so not everybody knows everybody in here. So like the founder, if you don't know, is this guy here, Kevin Coutinho. He's the um, the mastermind behind Layer One X. That's everything you see now has come from like Kevin's Kevin's mind. And like the virtual machine, the way it works, this is all like through Kevin. But then you've got Joshua Hunt, who's the co-founder that's got his own legal practicing team. He's got his own uh, legal firm in Australia that's very successful, very big um, legal firm. 
So Josh is the co-founder. Then you got Norman Lip, who's also a co-founder. And to, I'll be perfectly honest, I don't know a lot about Norman. I've never, I've never spoken to him, which doesn't mean anything. I mean, I was going to say the same thing. I never saw. Yeah, him. <laughs> yeah, I've never spoken to him. Um, I don't know like what input he has, like financial or knowledge base. I'm not too sure. Like everyone knows Machu. Like everyone knows Mike. Um, so Matthew is chief operating officer. Mike is the street chief strategy officer. So Mike and Matthew are like a married couple. Like they go everywhere together. They do everything together. Um, I, I don't know if I don't know if they uh, share rooms together when they go on um, <laughs> when they go on events when they go to events. Because I know like Matthew and Mike. If you don't know, like last um, last year when the uh, Ethereum. Oh, what's it called? The Consensus. So Consensus is a massive event out in Texas in USA. And um, Mike and Matthew went over there. And then from there, uh, they went to New York, Las Vegas, California, um, Dubai. Uh, I think they went over to uh, Singapore, perhaps, back to Dubai. And then they went to uh, India as well, where they had the hackathon, and they basically just they just travelled all over the world, and I think they were gone for like six to eight weeks or something, like a ridiculous amount of time, just kind of letting people know about Layer One X, speaking to VCs and connecting. They went on um, one of the big news channels, I think it was, was it CNBC, possibly. Um, so yeah, so these are the these are the two people that you see most of on a regular occurrence, and then you've got FA. Uh, who's the chief ecosystem officer? He was the chief gaming officer, or he had he was in charge of gaming, but I think he's been upgraded, so he's on a C-suite position, and that's because of like obviously all the hard work he's putting in and all the connections he brings in. Like FA connected on chain with Layer One X. Uh, I think he also connected that was, uh, uh, the Nasdaq show uh, crypto. Yeah, yeah, yeah that Nasdaq show. That was it, Nasdaq show, and yeah, so that was that was that was pretty big. I think I think they share a king size bed together, mate. <laughs> <I'm pretty sure. laughs> yeah, and they were and they were the Power Rangers outfits while they're doing it as well. <laughs> 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 a bit a bit of a what do they call it? That um, yeah, I'll not I'll not digress. Yeah, no. so FA so FA um, he's he brought in i think i think he made the connection for deagle labs as well so fa is like a an fa is based in turkey as well he's a really nice guy actually i've had meetings with him um a couple of times so he's very educated he's very well connected and yeah i think that's why he's now got a c-suite position at l1x because he's all his like input that he's brought and then we've got cody king who if you don't know Coda, you know his grandma slogan because it's like if grandma can use it, and that's that's come from Coda. So Cody is like he was on the he was actually on the stream yesterday. He popped in for about half an hour, uh, and we were chatting about the L One X app, the user face, everything to do with like the visuals that you see, um, and just to give um, a shout out to Chris as well. So Chris is like the I don't know what his title is, head of user interface, head of graphics or something like that. But he's Chris is like part, partially responsible for creating the L1X app. So Corey, Corey creates it in his mind. Um, and then Chris basically translates that into the UI UX that we see uh, when we go to L1X app. Um, Pony Clark, she's she's like, uh, like head of research and she's at the she's from the university of western australia the blockchain department so she's a fantastic academic asset to have on board uh then we've got achinta das who's a blockchain researcher i don't i don't know this guy i think we might have seen him on on a stream i'm not too sure i, I think we, i think we are i think he's been on a stream with kevin um, and then we've got niraj kewal I hope I pronounced that perfect. And I think everyone's familiar with Niraj because she's been on quite a lot of, uh, well, she's been on a few recent um, live spaces with Kevin going into like the, I suppose, the tech of Layer 1X and explaining it um, with Kevin. So they're, they're the core team, if you will, and very, very experienced, very knowledgeable um, and very well connected to. So 
yeah we've got a lot of i mean and and like just just for reference right i've 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 had video chats with fa i've like been to a football game with cody um i've like so th these are these are real people so if you've not seen them in the vc like i've met josh i've met Matthew, i've met mike i've met kevin uh met cody so the they're not like avatars just picked off picked off google like these are this is a real company they're a real team uh the headquarters is in perth western australia which is the cbd of western australia and yeah they, they're doing some they're doing some amazing things and then the partnerships they've got so anyone that isn't aware like prism group like when you when you're creating this is the thing right people call like blockchains or whatever they call them projects like they're not some some projects are projects projects really is like a side hustle something you're working on in, in at the weekend or something that's typically what a project is like layer one x is like a full-blown company and it's going to be like a blue chip company it just it just needs to get that network effect going but like they, they partnered with prism group so these are like world leaders like prism group is a tokenomics partner for L1X delivering value to platforms by levering established economic research. Prism Group is an economic consulting and corporate learning firm focused on emerging tech. And these guys work with Ethereum. So when you've got when you're working, still, with, still working with them, because uh, I know they had some other partners uh, either besides them or, you know, yeah. instead of them. Well, there's Prism Group and then there was... Um, another i'm not sure who the other one was now it used to be it was on the website wasn't it but um can you remember what it was called the there was there was another partnership as well wasn't there at one point too yeah well they had a they had a, a couple because uh i know prism group has been there from the beginning you know yeah, also yeah. Uh, work out the tokenomics and uh and, and stuff like that the vesting and all this stuff and then they had some different partners uh because they wanted to change some of the stuff so I'm not sure if they're still working full time with them or that they're just, uh, you know, have multiple partners. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of it's like advisory as well, isn't it? And like initially, yeah. I think that's what L that's what got them. That's what got the tokenomics up and running. And, but I think it's, I think it's prism group as well that kind of along with, um, see the, re the reason, um, there was a, like a delay in the launch as well. They had, something called proof of x phase and the proof of x phase was basically bringing more awareness to to l1x before launch um which prism group in collaboration like with well in part in, in in an advisory role with other projects that like were connected like deagle labs and advisors and investors come to the decision to act to to kind of put out the proof of x phase as well uh just to give it more time and to get to get um layer one x in front of more people so and then you've got l1x labs which is the developer partner for layer one x and then like this is where the academic side of it comes in is university of western australia who like help put together the white paper and this is what uh matthew always makes a point of saying when when he's in um like a an ama or he's doing any any kind of event like university of wa are part of the group of eight uh, which is like universities across Australia. So they basically um, like do innovation. So U UWA is leading Australian research university and has an international reputation for excellence, innovation and enterprise and a member of the Australian group of eight, uh, which is research universities. So they're, they're, they're very, like a very academic uni and they're, they're actually in the top 100 universities in the world. Um, my daughter was actually going to go to UWA um, for uni, but she wants to be a teacher. And um, UWA is more uh, classroom based, and for a teacher, you, you want to be more practical and hands on and school, like in school. So, plus, it was if she'd have gone to UWA, UWA it would have been me dropping her off, uh, and I was drive every day. So, thankfully, she didn't. But it's a bit like a Harry Potter school, I'll be honest. It's it's huge. It's old. It's impressive and l1 l1x has actually had some events there so last year the the biggest the biggest crypto event in uh, western australia is called wa web3 and it's it's actually held at the university of western australia so last year layer one x was like the um the main sponsor so kevin did an amazing like um 
presentation on stage and brought a lot of a lot of awareness to layer one x and i think that's where i brought obviously a lot of uh investment into layer one x as well that's where i kind of first saw kevin uh do his magic on stage and, and this is another thing as well just going back to the the team like kevin is is one of these people that is like very very talented and probably like if you, if you look at like a lot of a lot of developers the not all developers but a lot of developers have got like social <laughs> social issues or they're not very um i don't know charismatic they're not very um they, they don't really communicate too well to community and that kevin's the complete opposite so kevin is like the guy that does all brings out all this amazing tech has all these amazing ideas but he's also very articulate as well and he can come into uh spaces go on a stage and really captivate captivate an audience so yeah don't want to i don't want to blow his trumpet too much but yeah he's a he's a pretty solid he's a pretty solid guy hey crypto walker is in the house again he's back crypto walker is back And if hey you guys, wanna, you if you wanna, when we'll be able to, when we'll be able to sorry. Uh, waste our rest of the tokens. Sorry, we'll, when will we be? When will we be able to what? Waste our rest of the tokens. Vest the rest of the tokens. Um, I think it's when they when they're made available. Because like right now, the only tokens you can get your hands on are from the sanitization, aren't they? Which is when you've. Um, you've bought on the public or you've bought on the private sale so i think right now everybody's waiting for the release of like any reward tokens like through referrals and stuff um so we as far as far as i know i think we're just still waiting on that news because i think everyone's everyone's like eagerly awaiting to get their hands on the rest of the tokens so then they can put them towards hopefully put them towards any nodes or sign up to like platinum or gold or silver yeah and uh crypto crew yeah those those coins will be released as uh as per schedule yeah yeah they're not they're not actually locked to the node because you're purchasing a node, you need those 25K, but they'll be released like, uh, as long as you don't stake them inside the node, they'll be released like like schedule, like the normal ones. Yeah. It's like, uh, it's weird, isn't it? Cause it's actually, it's like you're getting a free node pretty much, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you are. I mean, you, buy, you, buy, you, buy, you buy in the node and you, then you get the token, then you get the, the L1X coins back uh, on the on the schedule over time uh, but then you've got the note you've got the node as long as you have the this is the, this is the only thing that that need, needs a little bit of clarity is do you need to keep your l1x coins um in the wallet in yeah available or can you utilize people staking which then you're utilizing means... uh you're utilizing people staking into them but the thing is, when they take it out, like it has a month, uh, you know, it takes a month for them to take it out. Uh, what happens then? You know, do you need to uh, fill it up yourself or do other people come into it? You know, yeah, That's it's, it, very cool. yeah, it's kind of like really like regardless if um, you can secure the node with people staking, it's kind of you. It's as if really you need the tokens there as a backup just in case, don't you? Like because the yeah. bull cycle the bulls the cycles are going to play a big part in what's what's being locked up anyway like you said if someone's staking um you're probably going to get a lot of people staking like before the bull run finishes aren't you but when the bull run finishes then you're probably going to get a lot of people removing them from from the staking thing um so yeah be interesting i mean I, in all honesty i don't want to be selling selling too many um because you never know, do you? Like the thing, the thing is, like what's um, kind of unknown chartered territory now is 
like the cycles, are they are they going to be as volatile as what they have been in the past because of all this new like institutional money that's coming in? Because they're not they're not going to be playing all the same games. Like the, the all these all these um like like, like BlackRock and uh, Grayscale and Ark in, Ark Invest, they these are these are going to be buying Bitcoin. The the Ethereum ETF is probably going to be coming out sometime in the near future. Um, well, potentially. So they're going to be buying the Ethereum ETF as well, and they can't they can't just swing trade it. They've got to hold it because it, it's back in it's back in the ETF, isn't it? Like if people are buying a Bitcoin ETF, it's got to be backed up with a Bitcoin. So they can't be just mm. like selling it and bringing it back. They've got to keep hold of it. No, so if they, like keep... they, can. they can and they will. I mean, they've been doing that for for uh, decades on the on the stock market. Same thing, you know. You have an ETF on the stock market. Uh, you have, uh, you know, just shares on the stock market, whatever companies, they do it all the time. I, they just bring the news, you know, they bring the news, they sell, they hype it up. That's when they sell. And when they bring bad news, that's when they buy. They do it all the time. Yeah, They'll but when you've got, but, but, but when you've got an ETF, when people are buying into ETFs, like a Bitcoin ETF, they've got to have that asset. They can, that, that The ETF is tied to the asset, so... They can't have a Bitcoin yeah, ETF have, if, if it's not tied to it. Oh, it's a ETF. I mean, it's it's all the same. Any fund, you know. I mean, they do it all the time. They just bring out the bad news. They, uh, you know, if you listen to influencers on the on the on the big channels, you know, like Bloomberg or whatever, you yeah, just yeah. do the opposite is what they say, and then you're gonna make money, you know, because they're always hyping up something, and then they need it for exit liquidity, and then it goes down like a couple of weeks after. Yeah. And the other way, the same thing. So they play these games all the time, mate, and they're going to do that with crypto, the same thing. Either it's crypto, it's just a company, you know, it might as well be a, a listed company on the, on the Dow Jones or whatever. It's just exactly the same. The shares are now tokens, but, but it comes out to the same. Do you think it'll be as volatile then or more volatile? Or um, it, it will be volatile, you know, like always. And uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum, especially Bitcoin, is going to be more stable. It's already more stable, like you see now, you know. We don't have those big dips. We haven't had them yet. They might come. I don't know. But, I mean, the, the, all the old coins are going to be volatile, the same like they always were. Yeah. Well, the, the, the old coins are like the whale's playground, aren't they? Let's be honest. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, the old coins is where the whales make all the money because they... They just acting basically like shoals of fish, like whales just scooping up all the little little like plankton and the small sardines and stuff. Yeah, but they do it on the big ones too, you know, like the bitcoins. And uh, I mean, if you have a lot of people that are short, you know, they're gonna pump up the price. And if you got a lot of people that are long, you know, they'll short it and they'll bring some bad news and it'll go down. They have a lot yeah. of power, mate. These big guys, these black rocks and. Uh, and these influences, they have so much power, mate. They can do what they want. Yeah. Yeah. We might be we might be the L1X whales, though. Maybe. Because by the time by the time a lot of people have found out about L1X, it's like well, no, the, the price could have. I mean, I don't think it's going to take them long to get in, in. In all honesty, I think I think once L1X does go live, and it suddenly starts getting traction. They, they've got to buy it, aren't they? they? They're not gonna. They're not gonna just sit on the sideline and just ignore it. So, but they're not. They're not gonna get in our prices. But the problem is, they've got like way more capital. Like you look at, like you said, you look at some of these big influencers. I mean, they've literally got millions of dollars just sat there doing nothing, haven't they? They've got so much money to just to throw into stuff. Yeah, they do. But they can make a drop too, mate. I mean, if they want to get a good price, you say they can't get a good price. But if they want a good price. And that price might be 50 cents or 60 cents, whatever, you know, you don't know. But if they really want it, they'll get it down. Yeah. That, and that's, that's the possibility. You just got to yeah. keep sit tight, mate, and just not, you know, don't get emotional. Yeah. That's where sometimes, like, I think I think about, um, like, because, because Layer 1X hasn't gone down the VC route, which because and, and because it's not gone in the VC route, it's also not gone down the big influencer route either. Because if you, if you let in VCs in, 
a lot of these VCs are so tightly connected to major influencers as well that because basically them two them two sets of investors haven't got into L1X. When L1X does go live, like just to, just out of bitterness, they could come together, couldn't they? And they could buy a ridiculous amount of the supply of as much as they can, and then let it go up a bit or whatever, and then basically all come together and dump it at once. Like you said, to then get a better entry, to then reduce the, basically DCA in, but doing it in like a mani manipulative way through a group of really big whales. Yeah, they can if they want to. But if they get it, you know, at the floor price anyway, it's a good price anyway. So I, I don't, I don't foresee that. But uh, you know, later down the line, if it goes up, and I expect it to go up, you know, uh, big in the beginning, especially because there's no sell pressure. You know, I mean, this all you can sell is what you buy. I mean, we're all we're all having a cliff, and we're we're vested. So uh, yeah, the first four months or three months, it's going to go up. It's definitely yeah. going to go up. And what happens after that, you don't know. But the first the, the first release, we're going to see a, a dip, you know. It just all depends how high it goes and then how far it retraces, you know. Yeah. But you just got to keep the emotions out of it and uh, if you hold it. But that's that's the hardest part. That's why they have AI, you know. That's why they have algorithms and, and all these computer systems, you know. They don't have emotions, so it's easy for them, you know. But we're sitting there, oh, shit, man, oh, it's going down. I need to sell, you know. Yeah. I mean, I, I like it. I mess about with like um I, I suppose shit coins on, on Solana and I set I set like um limit sells and limit buys and it's fantastic. But if I if I sit down in front of the charts and I see some like volatility and price action, sometimes I act impulsively. And yeah. if I wasn't if I wasn't there, it'd be way better it'd be it'd be way better not being there. But sometimes, like you said, it's the emotion, isn't it? You see you see, yeah, you jump in a VC, you get hyped up with the chat, and you shouldn't do, and you do. People do, don't they? Emotion takes over. Sometimes you're better off just not even being part of any chat. Just, just look at the chart, just read the chart, and then just set your set your like, your limits and just leave it at that because you're better you're better off ninety percent of the time. Yeah, so true. But with Mema, of course, it's it's dangerous. But you know, with all the blue chips and everything that is in the in the top 100, 200, 300, whatever, you're pretty safe. You know, you can just uh, you know, like uh, LM LMFG said, you know, just DCA into everything, and you'll be happy. You know, especially at the end of the of the cycle. Or he's talking about 2030, so that that's the second cycle. Yeah. But yeah, I mean... yeah. Go ahead, man. Yeah, now the, you know, I was, you know, was going to say you're right. Like if you DCA and just wait till the end of the cycle, or when you think the end of the cycle is going to be. But I mean, shit. Yeah. If you wait, if you wait until 2030, yeah, you're going to be. I think everyone's going to be laughing, aren't they, at that point? Yeah, if you can hold out, you know, because. But yeah, I have a diff different, different. Uh, uh, you know, if if you if you get this bull run right, and you sell, and then goes down, you know, you go into the bear market. And then you rebuy so you're like like you're doing yourself you know like you still like you talked about yesterday maybe you have a hundred thousand coins and then you'll have five hundred thousand coins you know for the next uh, run yeah so yeah. You, you can you can stay put you can i mean you, you'll be happy too but if you play it right you're gonna be more happy <laughs> you're gonna have more money right yeah yeah i mean and and you know the thing is as well you do know when it goes when it goes parabolic because you you have a month where it just goes from like yeah you, you literally have a month where everything's been going up gradually but then in a month you might 10x on a really yeah. high and a really high market you could be at like a i don't know like layer one x for instance it could be a it could be at a two million dollar market cap when ethereum's at, um i don't know a seven a, a seven billion dollar market cap and then all of a sudden eth goes to like 15 15 billion and everything else shoots up l1x shoots up and then if, when it goes up that fast you kind of know that you, perhaps now time to start selling yeah because when, yeah, when, when it when it when it goes up hard it comes down hard as well doesn't it yeah exactly but you don't have to sell everything at once you know just do chunks you know you can you can sell like 10 percent and then 10 percent here whatever 
but you don't have to wait until the end of the bull run but like you said we don't know eh? because this could be completely different eh? because all of a sudden you get uh you know it's it, it starts being mainstream if it's mainstream we might not even have that bull of the bear market anymore not the bear market like we know you know like the 95 percent drops one of these cycles is going to stop mate i mean it it doesn't keep it's been going like four years four years four years but all of a sudden that could change like the same like now you know i mean the bear market we're really still in the bear market you know if you, if you follow the cycles the cycles start like maybe three months after the halving that's when the bull market starts but we're already uh top the all-time high on bitcoin so it's already changing a bit you know so it's also a risk that you drop out and then oh shit, this time it doesn't go down you know i mean yeah i think that's probably why um let's put i think the reason why it's not dropped down is because because all this because of the btc etfs all this buy pressure coming in and i think a lot of the whales that probably would normally manipulate the chart they're probably a bit reluctant to sell because of all the buy pressure that's coming in because they could be pricing themselves out of out of buying back because they're not dropping the chart are they yeah because i mean you might i mean these whales hold a lot of bitcoin but when you've got these uh etfs and michael seller and they're they, they buying like hundreds of millions at a time like you, you if you've not if you're not creating sell pressure as a whale when you're selling it you're not going to sell it are you if, if the buy pressure is too much it doesn't make it doesn't make any sense yeah but like the you know the michael sailors i mean they've been around for a while so they they were there the, the last time the same they're always buying you know i mean they could still bring bad news you know china is uh, cutting off bitcoin or, or uh, cutting off uh, crypto or whatever and stuff like that and 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 larry fink was always uh, you know very negative on uh on on uh, crypto bitcoin and but all those guys joined now they openly joined they're openly buying so that bad news is out the window you know i mean they're gonna have to think of something else because they always think like some black swan uh, event whatever and this time it might not even be bad news but this time it might be like a like a big blackout you know i mean they've been talking for that for for a couple of years now if everything goes off you know all the computers all the electricity everything not a brownout but a real blackout so that might be the only thing because it's hard to bring the bad news now when everybody's already joining you know openly joining countries are joining yeah well like you said uh, el, el salvador like they they're generating bitcoin through the um the volcanic uh, through volcanoes isn't it they've basically got the mining it through volcano power yeah yeah and it, because they you know they uh they they went into bitcoin like a like a country like an economic and and it's not the only country i think there's a couple more countries that are doing it so uh and and they started like a couple of years ago whatever so that you know they should be doing well now i mean especially at the at the moment what it's costing and of course they started when it was down a, a lot more you know yeah yeah it's gonna be um yeah it's it's, it's funny in it because it's exhilarating it's exciting and like no, nowhere 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 else you've ever been able to make so much gains i mean this technology is just it's a proper transfer of wealth in it like literally you can be a, just a regular person to a ridiculous millionaire like through a couple of really clever investments yeah or clever or luck i don't know most of the time it's luck. you used to be able to do that do you know the pink sheets on uh on the stock markets the what sorry the pink sheets oh yeah like they're, they're the penny stocks yeah the pink sheets yeah they, they are dangerous they're just like i mean i used to play them uh, years ago and they're just as volatile and just as dangerous as uh as most of the cryptos you know most of the old coins and, yeah. and you could do that there you know but it was the same like that it could be there today and it could be gone tomorrow the same like uh the same like solana plays like say memo plays shit coins whatever so but but nowhere else than that you know the pink sheets and uh and this Crypto. Yeah. yeah yeah but i love it i love it <laughs> i think like i think like most people i think they've got that de degenerate nature aren't they so people like um, a bit of a high risk tolerance because i speak to, i speak to a few of my mates and it's like 
I'm up on I'm up on this project and it's got to um whatever it like doubled or tripled or whatever. And it's like, have you cashed out? Have you cashed out? It's like, no, nah, mate, I ain't cashing out. I'm I'm like I'm with this to the I'm with this to the bitter end. <laughs> And it's not that you are with it to the bitter end, but you you don't even want to if you if you make really good gains, a lot of the time you might take out your initial investment, but you kind of leave you leave it in, don't you, for the moon bag just in case where it goes. I've I've been yeah. getting I've been getting like really strict with myself. I, I've been doing quite a do quite a few different Ethereum plays, and I basically like take my initial investment out, and then swing trade on the vol on the like the like the eyes and the laws and just trying to trying to bring that up and i've done really well out of it to be honest i put a thousand dollars into one project i took out my thousand dollars and i've got one project up to up to two thousand dollars after taking out my initial investment just by yeah. watching it going up and down it doesn't always it doesn't always work though that's the thing no it doesn't it doesn't i had that same yesterday yesterday i went to into a stock uh what is it solana stock and uh, it's at the i, I went in 18k and then it went to uh, 119, like 120. So that's a six k, six uh, six x. So I took out uh, like half, you know. So I already made profit, and uh, I left the rest sit, you know. I mean, and it went down, went down to 30, went up to 100 again, and went down. And now today, it's uh, it's like stuck on 30. But I've got a good good feeling that this will come back, you know. And it's all profit. I'm writing profit. I'm already. I'm already in yeah. profit, you know. I already took a that's, two X, whatever. Yeah, that's what's so good about it, isn't it? If you as soon as you take out that initial initial investment, you don't yeah. really care as much if it goes to shit because you've not lost anything. Yeah, but then you got to watch out what you're doing. You know, I used to do that all the time too. Then it went down, and then I started buying more. I said, "Oh, it's, it's down again." You know, those those lower regions. I'm going to buy more cannot go down anymore and then it goes down more and then you buy more and then it goes down more and then you buy more and then you're stuck you know i have one play i put in in total nearly 15 soul but i'm stuck now because it's 9k you know it's worth nothing anymore so yeah what can you do i mean there's nothing you can do you can just let it go to dust or you can hope that a miracle happens and then it comes back again you know yeah i, I got into one on solana um three three days ago i think and i put i put 1.5 1.5 solana in and it went to 20 sol and i I took out five and i was going to take out 10 and i thought nah i'm going to keep you get you get greedy don't you you get greedy because you think that that 15 that i left in i'm thinking well if i take 10 out i'm not going to get as much back and then it it just it tanked <laughs> so i made i made three and a half solana but in reality i could have made 18 and a half yeah, but you, you always look at those ones that go to the millions, you know, and you think, but we're always in the wrong one, you know, that doesn't go, you know, it goes up, but then like 500,000, whatever, and then it starts going down again. And they, oh, this point, everybody's very positive in the chat, you know, and you think, ah, oh, yeah. this one can go to a million too. So you get yeah. greedy. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, this, <laughs> one, th th this one went from, I got in at 50K and it went to 1.4 million. Yeah. So and but then the buy the sell pre when it when it got past a million the buy pressure was the form of buys were get were coming but the millions that kind of point in it were sell orders start as well yeah so it kind of peaked at 1.4 and i i sold i sold at a million um but i i should have sold a lot more and and that's the problem in it like you get people that support a project and they they buy in early but they make the mistake of not selling enough. And then when it goes down, then they get bitter and then, then they're selling. Then that's, that's when projects die. And then, and then you keep buying and then you're stuck. But, uh, like you said, you know, 1.4 million is, is not because that 1 million barrier is very hard. You know, like you said yourself, you know, you sold at 1 million, but there's a lot of people psychological, you know, that in uh, 1 million or just before 1 million, they're going to be selling. But if it goes over that, like you said, like 1.4, you should be safe, you know? If it can go to 1 million, 1.4, it can go to 5 million or 10 million, you know? So that's why you stick around. And in your case, it didn't work. But normally, it's that 1 million barrier. That's yeah. a problem that usually when you get the dip, but if it crosses that, it's a yeah. good sign because there's not many sellers. So it's going yeah. up and it went to 1.4. And you got unlucky, you know? It went down from there. But it could have could have just as well gone to 2, 3, 4, 5 million. Yeah, and if it did, I'd have been laughing. I'd have been laughing. 
Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, even, <laughs> even, even, even now though, it's, it's not, it's not dead. Um, but I, I have, I'll be honest, I've do, I've done what you said, what you said, what you said happens a lot of the time when it come down in price, I'm like, Oh shit, this is so cheap. And then I've, I've had that where I've bought in, I've bought in, I've bought in again because it's, it's so cheap. So I, my supply of tokens is like, I've got a really good supply of tokens, but if the value isn't there, it doesn't matter, does it? Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. Like I've got, right. I've got two, I've got 2% two of the supply now. Whereas before, when I when it went to when it was worth twenty Solana, um, it, I had 025 percent of the supply. Now yeah. I've got now I've got two percent of the supply, but it's not worth it's not worth nowhere near what I <laughs> what it was. But I, oh, oh. The, the thing is that I was in the um, I I basically pushed the chart through being in the voice chat and video chat, um, but then this started. I had to do this stream. So if I'd have, if I'd have stayed in the video chat, I reckon I'd have got the market cap back up. But then I had to do this streaming. Like there's not there's no one in the uh, video the voice chat which is kind of pushing it as much, which is annoying. Yeah. But yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, you know sometimes I I bought one today. It's only uh, it's 19k now. I think I bought at 15k. But there's not much volume. But you got to understand it's Easter weekend, right? So. Uh, Anything can happen. It's a new coin. It's only a day old. So I bought only one soul and I hold 1.12%, you know, so more than 1%. They have 69 billion supply. So I hold more than 1% and just only one soul, you know, because you got lucky in the beginning. Now, this could be very interesting because, you know, it can go, of course, it can go to, uh, you know, nothing. It can go down, you know, but it's still a small community. And if it does, get to grow and build that community because now there's only like i think 40 something nearly 50 people in the in the tg but when they get that up to hundreds of people this will fly and then i'll be sitting nice with the one percent you know 1.1 percent so yeah yeah it's 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 all a gamble mate you gotta be lucky but if you can buy for one soul more than one percent then yeah why not i'm in the top holders i'm number 13 in the top holders so yeah you just just gamble it you know and then uh if it turns out you're good and if it doesn't you lost one soul yeah it's not the end of the world is it exactly yeah yeah that's why i don't i don't do too much like i i got into i got i i brought a thousand dollars over to solana and i just brought that over as like play money and whatever yeah. happened whatever happens happens and at the minute i'm still in profit so i'm still i'm still up i've 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 made I've made a lot, but I've lost a lot. But I'm I've made more than I've lost, so I can't really complain. Yeah. Because I know I know friends that um, one of my mates he he got the FOMO of this uh, one project, and because like other other similar projects had done well, and he had five Solana, he just chucked five Solana in this one project, didn't know anything about it really, and it just died. And his his five Solana now is worth about ten dollars. Instead of just putting like one Solana in. Because think, thinking it's going to be that moon, that moonshot, and more charts than not look the same, don't they? They have that big initial pump, and then they steadily come down, either foot, either fast or slow, and then they stay down. <laughs> yeah, but it depends on the market cap, you know. I mean, if if it's a very low market cap, like I said before, like fifteen k or eighteen k, the other one that I bought, I mean, it's all right to put small amounts in there. But when it's already like a hundred or hundred fifty, two hundred k. You're gonna to have to put a little bit more in because, or else it, you know, it's it's not worth it. It's not worth the risk. So yeah, I understand that. I do it myself. You know, if it's uh, if if I think it's good, you know, and that it's positive and it's going, I might throw uh, five or even ten uh, Solano into it. You know, if if uh, if I'm trusting the the thing, usually it doesn't work, of course, because sustainability is very hard on uh, on Solano. You know, you got no tax. You got no uh, commission costs, so no gas fees, you know. So there's a lot of trading going on, and the trading is actually that's what's good about uh, Ethereum. I don't like it because it's too expensive, but I mean, at least you don't have as many jeets because they're paying like two hundred on gas fees, you know. And sometimes you have also the tax, so that stops a little bit of the jittery. And that's why yeah. uh, Solano it's so hard, you know. You got to you got to have something exceptional, something. You know, strong to make it through that. 
Yeah, well, I've um, that's what on, on like a few Ethereum projects that I'm working with, like working with that I'm trading. Um, it's good because you get you get substantial buys. You don't you're not getting small buys, are you? Because of the gas. So typically, like you're getting like six seven hundred dollar value buys minimum, and like some of them, they can be anything, can't they? Like two, three, four, five, ten k buys. So like the one I the one of them that I'm using at the minute, it's got a five percent buy and buy and sell tax. So but I've been making good money on it, and that's yeah. like ten percent. 10% like when you bought and sold back but it's it's just ranging so well it's like it's it's going from like 2.5 million market cap down to 1.5 million dollar market cap so because it's got this really good range you can you can just set your set your limit orders and typically they'll get executed every every two or three days yeah and you don't and the thing is as well you don't care about the gas because if you're making if you're making like 30 percent or whatever after after and taking into account gas it doesn't matter does it you don't it's, it's free money yeah i think fur's jumping back in in a little bit Yeah, LMFG saying Fidelity has been mining BTC in 2015 and a few of their sites are next to volcano power plants. I mean, it's a genius really, isn't it? You literally tap into a volcano and you've got your initial expense to get it up and running. But then, and you, I, I mean, it's not free, is it? You've, you've got to set up a plant and then you've got to have maintenance as well. So it's not like it's free, but I think your initial costs and maintenance, at least you, you then... Your electricity supply at that point is it's a natural resource so yeah you're kind of laughing aren't you yeah yeah have you have you actually ordered them laptops now then yeah 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 i got uh i7 intel i7 so that's pretty good uh, processors, 16 gigabyte RAM and one terabyte uh, SSD and Windows 11. So uh, I got two for like 950 euro. Yeah, that doesn't seem like a bad price, does it? That's a good price, mate, on AliExpress from uh from a european depot you know so they so they don't have to come from china they have five day delivery uh, oh so they've got the they got local they've got local um like delivery points yeah they got factories everywhere in europe mate france spain uh well, another couple of countries so um that's good for the import tax yeah, they've got it good. They've got it good, really, aren't they? Because like, you look at like AliExpress, and really, it's like the same companies that are on like Alibaba, but they're just allowing regular people to buy small amounts. Yeah, it, it, it is Alibaba. It's the same company. It's just for risk for for uh, you know for normal for normal people, and and Alibaba is more for companies. You know, you buy uh, you buy also you buy big big. You know, it's. Um, yeah, Alibaba is more for uh, like like a shop or a company, whatever that buys a uh, thousand units. Yeah, well, I used to use um, I've 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 saw suppliers on Alibaba. Like, um, and I know a lot of it's a lot of it's in China, but it's it's global. They're all over, aren't they? They're everywhere. Yeah, it's just suppliers. It's just, I mean, AliExpress itself is not a shop, mate. There's, there's all shops in there. It's, it's the same like Amazon, you know. And yeah. we have uh, uh, ball.com in, in my country. Uh, what else? Cool Blue and stuff like that. It's just a, just a website, They're just hosting a website. And, you know, you as a shop, you can go in there. So, uh, but I think it's pretty good because you can talk directly to the merchant. And, uh, you know, uh, they, they don't pay them until you, uh, you know, you, you got your stuff uh, inside everything. So it's pretty safe.
Yeah, I find I find um, a supplier because I've got a an Amazon an Amazon uh, business, and I I was on Alibaba. Oh God, for for so long getting samples and stuff, and in the end, I I found this company in Pakistan on Alibaba on Alibaba um, that I ended up going with, and yeah, but so much so many different so many different companies to look through and browse through and it takes time doesn't it getting samples and stuff when you're dealing with yeah. these because a lot a lot a lot of the time as well the samples they don't want to deal with like small even even when you're putting in your orders when you're starting off you you say right well i'm only going to be ordering so much and a lot of them they don't even want to know you've got to have minimum order quantities before they even want to contemplate giving you a price when you start yeah. out, it's kind of hard. So trying to find a supplier that will support a small business is kind of it narrows your such results down a little bit. Yeah, it does, man. It does. But on Amazon, there's a lot of Chinese shops as well. You know, I mean, uh, there's a lot of scams on there as well. But Amazon is actually pretty good because one time I bought something. But if the price is too good to be true, you know, usually it isn't. And they didn't even they didn't even let the let it go through, you know. They just emailed me from uh, well, this one, this shop uh, looks a bit dodgy, you know. So we didn't put the put it through. So uh, yeah, the back end is good in both of them yeah. actually. AliExpress too. Yeah, I I I, I actually the last bull run, um, I started um, a direct ship. Um, merchandise store so it was called shop cryptopia and basically just doing custom aliexpress find i found like um print on demand service aliexpress that direct dropped direct shipped but yeah the down the downside was the delivery times were just too long because yeah. the, the thing is with custom design stuff they can't do it in the country of origin because the production costs are too much so they'll do you the custom mugs, your custom T-shirts, but they, they do it in China and then they ship it. Um, but the customer satisfaction was so poor because it was taking sometimes a month before people were getting stuff, two two weeks to a month. And like people don't like waiting, <laughs> even though they know. Yeah, a lot of people did that, right? I mean, you, you, you get a straight delivery. So you think you're ordering somewhere else, but you're actually ordering from, uh, you know, AliExpress or whatever, you know, and it's yeah. coming from China. But those times have changed, mate. I mean, uh, like a couple of years ago, it would take like five weeks, four weeks, whatever. But it's not like that anymore, mate. It's it's very fast now. Even if you just buy a simple small thing, still maybe uh, seven days to 14 days that you get it, you know, usually fast yeah. within 10 days. It was quite good. I put a lot of... Um... I put, I put a lot of time into it. I create, I started creating like custom. So all, all your major blockchains I started creating like custom, like designs on t-shirts and hoodies and stuff. And started, I actually sold quite a lot of stuff and I were targeting at the time I were targeting, uh, influencers. So they were like a big influencer back in, uh, 2018 called Tony Vez. And he's a proper like Bitcoin maxi. And, he had like this community and these other influences around him. So I started targeting them and um, created some custom t-shirts and the community started ordering them. So it kind of, kind of started taking off into something bigger, but then, then the, um, the bear market, hit. <laughs> and no one, give, no one give a shit. <laughs> that happens, right? Yeah. That yeah happens. You, you, you get merchandise and like people buy it in a bull market. No one gives a damn in the bear market. Yeah. Like, I'm not. I'm not wearing. I'm not wearing a freaking a chain link uh, hoodie when it's worth like a dollar. But then yeah. people are. That's the thing. It, it's all this herd mentality with a lot of people as well. Because like when when something's going good and all the hype's behind it, everyone's talking about yeah. it. People are proud to wear it. Yeah, I'm at the forefront. But then when it goes the other way and everyone's slagging it off and calling it a scam, I'm not wearing that. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna gonna get looked, looked at like I'm an idiot. Yeah, it's true, mate. But, you know, without that, we wouldn't have a bear in a, in a bull market, mate. We wouldn't be making these great profits, you know, because it's like a lot of people that I know that are not familiar with Bitcoin. Whenever I talk with them, like last year, they were like, oh, no, you know, this is nothing. Even when Bitcoin was like uh, 35, you know, and then it went to like 30 or 31, whatever. Uh, did you see Bitcoin went down 5K? I said, it didn't go down 5K. Yeah, it went down 5K. 
I said, no, mate. I said, it was like, if you look a couple of months before that, it was like 15K, right? Yeah. So now it's 30K, but you're only looking at the top, you know, going from yeah. 35 to 30, but you're not yeah. looking at the bottom, you know, which was 15K. It's actually doubled, you know, but you can't, yeah. you can't, you can't explain it to these guys because they're like, yeah. Mm. And then well, when everything started going up like a couple of months ago, you know, they were like, I'm teaching them now, you know, how to set up the CEX, you know, and how to buy and stuff like that. What, 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 what do I need to buy and whatever? And now they want to buy, you know, they only want to buy when it's going up. Exactly what you're saying, you know, but if they weren't there, we wouldn't have exit liquidity made. So it's yeah. good. It's good the way it goes. Just let it ride like that. Yeah, I like it. I like it when when people start talking about it, and I and I I know I've been holding it, I've been buying it for like the previous like eighteen months, two years. Puts a smile yeah. on your face, doesn't it? Like you want people talking about it, you want the hype. Yeah, my, 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 my nephew, he's like he messaged me, he messages me about about crypto. He never buys it. He always messages me. He said, "What about this?" I said, "Yeah." I said, "You buy it." I said, "You should have bought it a year ago when I told you to." But yeah, you can buy it now. You'll still make money. I tell people now, I said, literally, I said, if you buy any, top, if you want to play safe, if you buy any top 20 projects outside a stable coin, and my brother thought he could make money on a stable coin. <laughs> I said, Gareth, I said, it's a stable coin. I said, he yeah. said, what about, what about this? It's, it's, it's a dollar now. I said, it's, I said, it's always a dollar. <laughs> it doesn't change. <laughs> but like, I mean, really, if, if you had money, you could put money in any top 20 project and you're probably minimum got a 5x your money. And for 500% gain, that's unheard of in traditional, any any finance in it. It is not really, I mean, there's always risk, but the risk of not making money now by buying anything that's in the top 20. I mean, you could you could, you could could extend that to multiple projects, couldn't you? But if you, if you want to stay really safe and just stick with like your top 20 projects, you, you you can't really lose. No. Where the hell have you been? You said you were going last night, and you'd you'd only be gone an hour, and it's like ten hours later. Uh that's what you call kids Easter and chocolate. <laughs> uh, that's all good, brother. It went kids it, Easter it, and chocolate running around. The stream the, the stream died off about three o'clock in the morning because. Um, Sleazy came in. Uh, well, Skip, Skippy was in, and Sleazy, Sleazy was in. But then Skippy went, and then it was me, Sleazy, and Ronak. And yeah. I could, I, I could tell Sleazy were like um, a kangaroo in headlights. <laughs> <laughs> he he yeah. had that fear of he had that fear of God in his eyes. Like, oh my God, you're gonna leave me. You're gonna leave me. He said, "What do I do?" So I'm like, well. Um, there's this game. What is going on with Eldarune? You can play it, and you can um, you can actually win L1X coins. I said you could do that, and it will like do you know them. Um, oh, it's one of them games. You know, like TCGs, the uh, trading card think, games. Yeah, I think I saw a couple of little previews. Yeah, it's similar. It, it's similar to that. So we started playing it, but yeah, then he right. ended up. Yeah, I think he I think he was up. a little bit petrified of. Yeah, I think I think it was a little bit. Um, Side shot. Yeah, I don't think he felt too comfortable just being because he said how many people are here. I said, well, there's, thir there's thirteen people on YouTube, and it's showing like a thousand people on Twitter. But I can't know. Okay. And I think he, yeah. So I said, I said, listen, Skippy. I said, uh, I said, listen, Sleazy. I said, don't worry. I said, it's three o'clock <laughs> in the morning. I said, we'll end, we'll end it, and I'll just turn it back on in the morning. And so I did that. I didn't want to. I didn't want to like. Because he, he said before, he said he doesn't like talking for more than half an hour or something, and even that's when you're talking to other people. Yeah, well, I, I held it up for a little bit with um, with uh, Me and you. Uh, uh, no, yeah, no, Ash, Ash, uh, you, you went and got a feed, so I went and um, it was a Ash Yield, Ash Yield. Oh yeah, yeah, I think. yeah. And we got we got a winner, didn't we, for the uh, competition too? Yeah, so like, um, yeah, that suspicious person. Suspicious, licious, or whatever he's called. Yeah, he's got he's got six hundred hours. What do you think we should do for the next uh, the next one? Because I've got to do an, I've got to put a tweet out to do another another one. Um, should, should, should it just the same thing, like just resharing? Don't want to make yeah, it complicated. It's, it's, it's it's all about sharing now, isn't it? <laughs> we had one the same. We had one the same. Uh, the Twitter uh, thing competition of yours. Yeah, yeah, chasing the ducks. 
Yeah, yeah, luscious, suspicious, luscious won it. Maybe yeah. um, is there a ca kangaroo race for Skippy? Yeah, yeah, we did it. We did a duck race. It was quite good actually. Oh, we've got someone else in the chat, Harry. Morning, Skippy. Harry, you see, Harry is my friend. He's our graphic oh, yeah. designer from for our Harry. website and stuff. He's on my. Uh, you know, I have a, a own token, right? It's called the Book of Wales. You know yeah. the book, yeah, yeah. Mama Polano. It's like the narrative at the moment. You know. Yeah. So we did, and we're actually doing uh, very good now. We did, we made an uh, all-time high just today. So uh, I said, Harry, I said, Harry, come and come and join us. I'm up here. He said, only if you shout out uh, Book of Wales. So I did. Okay, Book of Wales, guys, you know it. No, Harry Belafonte. Harry Bulls. No, not. Book of Wales. I'm all for a good meme coin. I'm all for a good meme coin, I'll be honest. It's a very yeah, trusted we'll, progress, mate, yeah. because it's, you know, Are we going to be part of, part of the um, Book of Wales? We'll probably be part of the Book of Wales, eh? You can be, you know. I mean, if you're engaging in, your, in our community, you yeah. get the name of the Book of Wales but, on our website. Literally, you can find literally, website literally a whale. Yeah. Literally a whale in the book. Yeah. Hey Mark, are we going to have the same uh, giveaway today also? Um, yeah, I think so. I'll, I'll put a I'll put another tweet out because we're doing the same. I think um, giving away six hundred L one X coins again to somebody else. Um, so probably a, and again it just because it's a new because it's a new uh, Twitter thing anyhow a new stream. Just put it. I think probably just do the same. See, it's easier, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, because yeah. it's not invo it's not involving Intract, it's not involving um, Zila, and it's not asking too much. Be I mean, end of the day, p getting people can engaging, we, people engaging a tweet is hard work, isn't it? For some people, can we put the race for a bit longer so we're all um, it, it's a bit more um, a bit more commentating, a bit more racing, you know, like a, a couple more minutes. Yeah, and maybe do it, maybe do it when there's more community around her. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Because I can still, I can still take the um, the coin. I can still, I can still take the count from midnight. Um, so I'll cut off points yeah. midnight, which is what this is pretty much what I did last night. As soon as it turned twelve o'clock, I just started adding up all the uh, people that had commented. So I'll yeah. do the same again. To, do the same again tonight and see who's in the chat. If there's people in the chat, we can do it. Um, but otherwise, I can kind of wait until wait until um, the, the morning, maybe. I must have been pretty loud at midnight because my missus started commenting. Oh, she wasn't happy. Oh, she reckons, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you were getting, you were getting the, in the heat of the moment. You were getting excited with the uh, the old ducks going for it. Yeah, and I'm, I'm I'm in the lounge room, so there's no there's no closed off room. Where the hell is my thingy gone? Yeah, it's getting closer and closer, eh? It's getting closer and closer. I actually thought last night I might have been able to stay up until morning, but I... No, you need you... to refresh yourself in case that David dude pops up or anyone. Or just Mr. for your brain. Mr. Go Mr. Gockstein. Come on in, Mr. Gockstein. Hey, go on. Hey, gang. Hey, hey gang. Well, I'm not saying. There you go, so, mate. But, there you go. I'm not saying the end bit. Check the right. prawns on the barbecue. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Did you check it out, crypto? What's that? Sorry. I said, did you check it out? Oh, pass us one of them, Skippy. Check Cheers. what it. Book of Wales, my project. And uh, yeah, yeah, no, I've looked at it. I I was checking it out. You told me about it. Um, I think last last week. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah, Book of Wales dot com or something, isn't it? Check out the website. Very very nice website. Interactive QR codes, stuff like that in the book.
Yeah, I like how it rains gold tickets. Raining gold tickets. We could even get you as an influencer, a crypto psycho. We'll shout you some uh, some <laughs> coins, and you yeah. can uh, make a video for us. Hey, be how an, about that? Be an influencer for your project. Yeah, I mean, I see you all the time on TikTok. You're know, TikTok crypto. He's TikTok. definitely gonna. He's definitely gonna have to stop work. Throw the ute away. Yeah, well, that's the idea. Like, I'm not, I'm not doing, I'm not doing, I'm not, I'm not looking on her for the love. And like, I said that to a customer over there. She said, um, "I hope I don't." I said, "I hope I don't see you again," because like, obviously, when you when you've done when you've done a repair on a roof, it's a compliment saying, "I hope, I hope you don't see you again." And she said, "No, no, I, I hope I do see you again." She she said, like, I've, "I've enjoyed you coming working on my roof." I said, "Well," I said. I don't. I said I'm not doing it for love. Like she said, well, you need to be doing it for love, really. If you if you if you want to do a really good job, I'm like, nah. <laughs> I'm doing it because I can do it, but I'm not doing it for love. <laughs> love doesn't come into it. Love doesn't pay the bills, right? Yeah, exactly. No love. What, what did I sell here? What did I sell? Yeah, it would be lovely to see someone else work on your roof, eh? Yeah, I mean, I don't know how comfortable I'd feel with someone else on the roof, but I reckon, yeah, I could, um, I could probably cope, I think. Yeah, hopefully you don't have to work uh, ever again, really, with the uh, nodes and all that. Well, I'm not really funny, right? If we look at the nodes, right? I've, 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 like, so far now, I've got them two ELNs, and then two yeah. ELNs are hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. Is that at fifty cents? No, 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 no. No, that was a. Sorry, I, I, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm giving them value. I'm giving them real oh. value. Oh yeah, if if you were to actually part with them. Yeah, yeah. No, no, that, no. I'm sorry. I'm I'm giving them a value of like ten dollars an L one X. So, oh yeah, got a bit excited. Yeah, I'm not giving them a value now. So like, like, well, like. So now I've this is what I've got too. I mean, you're laughing, you dude. You've got you've got two and three. You're gonna be. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be coming polishing your shoes. I'm gonna be. Do, I'm gonna be coming doing your roof. <laughs> I don't think we'll be doing the roof. <laughs> Yeah, well, I like, even I think, uh, I think we'll be taking. I think we'll be taking the roof off. Yeah, it'd be like roofless and no bridges. Well, I mean, if L one X is five dollars and I've got two event listener nodes, that's going to give me seventy two thousand dollars a year. That's US dollars, so that's like hundred thousand Australian or whatever. So at, what? at five dollars. Yeah, five dollars two ELNs is like seventy two k a year. Well, so that, that's that, basically the wage. At $5. That's, ba that, that's basically the wedge. So if I can get three event listener nodes, I'm kind of laughing because that's yeah, 110k. You, you might have three, eh? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I know I've got, I know I've got three. I've, um, I've bought two, and I know I've got another. I know I've got another one. Yeah. Um. So I've definitely got They're three. Nice. So no, if that's, I get, if, that, that's a goodie. Yeah. So if I, if I buy actually, if I buy two more, um. So I can actually buy two more anyway, and that would give me $180,000 a year. That's all right, eh? It's not bad, is it? That's what, not um, that, That's US as well. That's what makes me happy. I love it. I love it because I always, in crypto, I only work in US. I don't, yeah. I don't think, I don't think in Aussie dollars because it just confuses things because nothing's in Aussie dollars, is it? Yeah, you might have to, yeah, when, when you, pull your passive income out you'll see it in aussie dollars well the way i look at it right i look at it as i think of it in usd um but then i think of that usd if you think about it convert that into australian dollars as it is so just say if it's if it's hundred thousand us well just think of it as hundred thousand australian because the yeah, difference, the tax the di on, yeah yeah the difference is just paying the tax man isn't it yeah What's it? How much is it at two and three at five dollars? Um, 
you, you've got three three lens, haven't you? Yeah. So you got to make. Um, what's happened? Yeah, sometimes the calculator glitches up a little bit. Yeah, the calculator's glitched. It's a, it's too the numbers get too serious. Yeah, it's bra brain overload. So what does it say there? It's a little bit. Can you zoom in a bit? Oh, no. I've just got. I've just had to refresh it because it wasn't. Yeah, it has a little calculate, glitch. Calculator had stopped working. So, so three three ELNs at five dollars. Um, that, that's hundred and hundred and hundred and nine k, and then two FVNs at five dollars. That's two hundred and four k. So. 350 315,000 between between them yeah and, um that's not too bad eh? that's not too shabby and, and that's, the thing uh, is i've got got a little bit spare too for uh for the old launch pad situations and all those type of things yeah you've got res you've got reserves yeah, you, you need reserves in case uh, projects come along, like the old whales and things. Like the Book of Whales. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like that too. I put 10K. Uh, no, I put everything into Platinum actually by accident. But yeah, we'll get a whitelist, guaranteed whitelist. So that's good. Yeah, that's what I like. I cause you... about, that, about the launch pad, actually. You might be able to make all your money back with... Um launch pads and being whitelisted and all that type of stuff well, yeah, not money not money back but you know the money equaled yeah be nice to get into the ground floor and don't have to uh you know beat all these sniper bots and all this other stuff yeah well that's what the platinum's about really isn't it yeah honestly honestly right the the, the launch pads are so so lucrative like because the thing is getting into when you get into like these proper degenerate ones like um oh do you know like there's a lot of these launch pads that are dodgy as hell like you i can't think what they call them pink is it pink cell like yeah like dodgy, i wouldn't trust all random there's, ones there's proper proper dodgy launch pads where they, they they're basically just shit coins but yeah but it's, with, well, it's not a random one mate it's it's they have massive volume mate pink cell yeah yeah but the half the time they're scams you don't make a lot of time you don't make yeah. any money on them they, they well, just the, scam the, the rug, the rug really, pulling and stuff yeah there's yeah, no they're, they're really i mean uh you do a kyc i seen kycs on pink cell mate it's just some random homeless guy doing a video in front of a mcdonald's you know you yeah. cannot believe that that passes for a kyc it's unbelievable yeah, so when you go to the more legitimate launch pads, like like paired network, for instance, like if you want to launch on paired network, you got to have you got to have like an interview. You've got to you've got to show a pitch deck. You've got to convince them that your project is worthy of launching on their launch pad, and it's not it's not an easy process. Like, that, you know, that's what it, Layer, that's what Layer One X is doing, really, isn't it? It's obviously going to make sure it's. Um... Yeah, there's really going to be some project. there's going to be some scrutiny behind it because at the end of the day, like if you have a legitimate launch pad, you you, you want to have credibility. Like Pink yeah, Cell doesn't have any good. credibility at all. We no, definitely not. And uh, it's not even Pink Cell themselves. You know, they just they just let it happen. You know, we went yeah. on uh, on Soulpad, and uh, yeah, like you said, had to do the interview, had to give my uh, ID everything like that had to show the wallets and all this other stuff you know the contract everything was safu and kyc then everything like that but a real kyc not not the one from pink cell but it yeah, is yeah. big mate it has massive volume if you do a pre-sale on pink cell it's not hard yeah. to uh, raise a lot of money yeah i mean in the in the, the in the bull run i mean it's gonna make a lot of money but then yeah, yeah. The, the the one on um because the thing is layer one x layer one x is launch pad 
it's not Layer One X doing the launch pad. It's a third party working with Layer One X because like Layer One X doesn't want doesn't want to be responsible for because end of the day Layer One X is the blockchain, isn't it? It's not it's not here to provide all the the, the utility and all the projects. It's just the, it's just what it sits on top of. So I know there's a company that are going to be doing the launch pad um, for Layer One X. And I think it's one that's probably already kind of got some traction out already. I don't, I don't know if it's a lot. I don't know if it's an existing launch pad, or they're just coming over and integrating into Layer One X, or it's something that's brand new that's being developed. But FA, FA will have something to do with it because FA is like the mastermind behind Omchain, uh, Deagle Labs. He, he he made all the connections to um, bring them bring them on board. So I reckon, yeah, the I reckon the launch pad is going to be, yeah, pretty decent. I reckon it'll already have, it'll already have projects lining up to launch on it when it even once it gets started. I hope so. Uh, I would just trade. I would just swing trade in a project, and I started talking, and some sales come in. I were going to buy, and I start. I lost my. I lost my train of thought, and then they've had th- three big buys come in, which has just priced me out. <laughs> I hate it when that happens. Yeah, well, that that um, that might not happen now. We're whitelisted on the platinum and stuff. We'll we'll be the uh, yeah. First I mean, I, I'll be interesting to see um, what the what the amount is as well. Like because platinum's guaranteed guaranteed allocation. But typically, then, no, normally you'll have different. You'll have a different tier. Like if you start looking at launch pads, like they'll have like your tiers, which is lotteried and then guaranteed. But then you'll have another set of tiers, which is guaranteed. But how many? You, like what's your what's your limit? What can you buy? So I like, say like ten thousand L one X to let you buy one thousand L one X worth of uh, tokens, or. Fifty thousand. I know, mean, like the the more the more L one X you've got, the more you can buy into the project. I don't know if they're doing that or not, or is it just basically your platinum? You've got a max cap of what each person can buy, and that's it. Oh, has he has he got a? Give away Twitter um, sharing bit page. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry, bro. You, your audio went off then. Oh, it's all. It's all now. I can hear. I can hear. You know, it just went off. Yeah. Have you shared a? Um, you, you had one of the, the day one giveaway. Um, have we have we written up a day two? Um, not this second. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it now. I'm gonna stop being a DJ. <laughs> and then. <it, laughs> LMFG's been he's he's live commenting. LMFG, LMFG, we need you, we need you in the chat, brother. You always, yeah, you always we, we, dude. In fact, in fact, LMFG, go get your get, get go get your uh, your guitar and let's yeah. and, and dude, bring your friend in, your your buddy who used to be a drummer uh, for Bon Jovi, uh, uh, a drummer for Bon Jovi, and we'll get an L1X band going. And I, I've got the banjo. I'll go get that. Holy crap! Hey, crypto, how, how much was that? So you had uh, two ELNs on five dollars. How much was that yearly? Um, so the, the sorry, um, so, so two two ELNs at five dollars is hundred and five k a year. Hundred and five, so hundred k. Yeah, that's for that's for two ELNs. And then the FVNs, like for one FVN at five dollars, that's two hundred k. That that's the thing, though. What I want to get, I want to get some clarity on because if you look at if you look at the calculator, it it makes more sense to have ELNs than full validator nodes. Yeah, I should have just got like twenty five ELNs. Yeah, cause because like you, you look have, at, yeah, then you need twenty five uh, laptops or computers, whatever. Yeah, no, I won't be running anything. <laughs> I'll be you uh, get my room set up, you know, one one sauna room, make it really hot. No, 
Nah, someone else can have that. I'll be um, I'll be on some beach somewhere. Yeah, you'll be. I, you know, I can imagine you. I can imagine you, Walker, like literally buying a, a souped-up Breaking Bad kind of trailer and just yeah. to, touring, touring Australia with your, 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 I don't know, your, your teacher and everything. No, look, I don't really like long drives because my I had the cancer and the lymph nodes removed out of my legs, so that the leg doesn't really like holding the accelerator for long times. So oh, yeah. I, I just I'll just hop on the plane and be like, right, where's me lunch? Where am I going? Where are we going today, guys? Where are we going on day? the Lao? We, we just have to hop on the Lao One X plane or the Lao One X ship. Yeah, where are we going? Where are we going, mate? Where are we going? Where are we going? Yeah, like, yeah we'll, we'll be able we'll be able to like uh, get a private jet down to uh, Albany just for just for the afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fish go, and to, chips. Um, go to go uh, to Bell's Rapids. Uh, no, what's it called? Um, Elephant Elephant Rocks or whatever. Elephant it is. Rocks, and, yeah. yeah. And um, eat eat some mark flies and go fishing. Yeah, I like it down there, like Denmark and Albany. It's beautiful yeah. down there, isn't it? Yeah, it's nice. It's really camp, nice. Might, might be able to, we might be able to um, definitely have a holiday home there. That's for sure. Yeah, I went camping down there, down to Denmark, and um, what's that other? What's that other place near near the Elephant Rocks? The um, that that where you can go out on that ramp over all the the water. It's got like a platform out. I can't think what it's called. Uh, it's beautiful not, down there. Yeah, there's all all nice down there. It's yeah, it's well, really well, nice. Uh, a, a really nice retirement area, I think. And then if you get if you get um, bored of it, you can always um, have another retirement place up in the hills, yeah. down in the beach, in the desert. Yeah. Yeah. Harry, thanks for the shout out, mate. No worries. <laughs> he's uh, he's trying, he's putting he's putting uh, something in the private chat. He's thinking it's coming up on the you know on the live uh, feed down here on the right. Oh, so he's I in the private him. chat. Yeah, yeah and now, now I gave him the YouTube link. I said when you when you put the the message there, but my message ain't coming up. How's that? You so don't you don't need to go to you don't need to go to YouTube. You just go you just go to the chat. Yeah, it, it only took me fifteen hours to realize that. Oh, you see the can you not see the chat? Uh, yeah, I can see the chat, but I uh, how do you put the message in? You just. To press it and it brings up the chat bar. In fact, I'll uh, I'll make it overlay. So if you look now, I'll change the screen. Because so, sometimes now. if you, sometimes if you do a comment, you just comment on the thing, not actually chatting. I still cannot see it. I mean, I don't yeah. see a box for it to put a message in. See, see that pop up on screen now. Yeah, um, I see you, but, but where do you put any? It on Twitter. You have to go to Twitter. It only took me fifteen hours to do, figure this out. Yeah, I figured it out on on YouTube, but YouTube is not coming through. I'm not ah, sure on okay. YouTube, but I did Twitter. Oh, he's yeah, I'm YouTube. seeing I'm seeing he's... comments. I'm seeing comments <laughs> from um, I'm seeing comments from Ari on I'm seeing comments from Ari on YouTube. And crypto, crypto preneur is messaging on Twitter. So Twitter's coming through as well. We're getting YouTube comments and Twitter comments. How you going, Skippy mate? How you going, <laughs> Skippy mate? I'm looking for a Sheila. Hey, Crypto Walker, you got a Sheila for me? What do you uh, think about the chat? Mate? What do you think about uh, the chat being on screen? Now, did it make it look a little bit more engaging seeing it on screen? Yeah, he's on yeah. crypto. He's on your YouTube channel, and his messages are coming in, and mine are not. Yeah, yeah. I'll start with that. Yeah, try LMFG. Twitter. LMFG. has got his guitar. He's ready to go. He's he's just. Oh. He's just put his Ho order. Hopefully, he's got um some background music. He's got to jump well. off one sec. One sec. One sec.
No, I see. I'm, I'm on the wrong one. I think I'm on the... I'm on the... Um, you must be just commenting on something. It's not the live one. Yeah, this is the live one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Let's try this. So, where are the comments, man? Comments are turned off here for me. Huh? Yeah. That's strange. Yes. Did you turn off the comments on uh, YouTube? Uh, no, I don't think you would have. Mr. Zach Forward, don't you have the Twitter? Don't need it, bud. Can you hear us, Zach? <laughs> you get an echo. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, well, fuck it. So, um, oh, so, hey, she got, I got to wake the missus up. She's got to go to work. Do you, do you oh, I gotta, I'm going to drop out. Someone's got to go. Out. Someone's got to go to work, eh? Huh? Yeah, not me. <laughs> Why I could see two, two screens here? None of us. All right. You guys have, have some fun. Catch you later. See you, bud. See you, mate. Be good, Skippy. I hey, I could see two. On there. We'll wait till um, we'll wait till Crypto Sideho comes back, and we can get a little uh, shout out to the Mister Zach. Link was in, no, it was in OG and Apex channel. Oh, now I'm there. And you guys don't hear me? Oh, yeah, there he is. Can. Where's your background music? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I turned it down. <laughs> and oh, now you hear me. Music. Okay, now I, I that was weird. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I've got two, cha two chats up. <laughs> And skip yeah, the there, there, there were two there. chats. Why was there two chats? Huh? You had a minus the chat thing. Can you see two charts there, LMFG? Yeah, I'm getting pretty um, excited, getting closer to closer to Tuesday, eh? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Wonder what it's going to decide. Who knows? I'm, I'm just wondering if ELN is uh, ELN rewards are too high. What about the full validator now? Yeah, uh, no, so, the rewards are too high. So LMFG, I think because you've come in right, and because you're going to get your guitar right, I think we've got we've yeah. got a special we've got a special person waiting to come in. No, no. To your play. Yeah, we've got I, someone I, special I, to come in. I don't play the guitar. Yeah. We've got Dude. we've got more. My mate Zach Forwards uh, listening. Hey, my um, Give him a little yeah. shout out, Psycho. I'm just, gonna I'm just gonna turn off these uh, comments. One sec. Oh, I see. Oh. I see. Hey, hey Matthew, how are you doing? With Joe. <laughs> oh, Matthew. Matthew is in the house. Hey, man. I, I, turn, I turned the comments off because it weren't it weren't showing all the screen. Good to yeah, you. Good for, nice. Yeah, good for you to jump in, Machi. Nice to have you here. There he is. Right. We could have him in. The, he can be I in the duck right now. Oh, I think your audio. I think your audio might be off, Machi. Um, I'll, I'll turn oh, you on. How about now? Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yep. we've got you loud. Yeah, yeah. Oh, perfect, perfect. Happy Easter, everybody. How, I hope everyone's enjoying the um the couple of days and and um bit of time with family. We've been um. We've been busy. I've been I've been uh, kind of going from family to work, family to work, family to work, as you can imagine, right? With uh, with uh, with the pending uh, pending launch, um, but it's great. I, I think you know having the, uh, the the community AMA. I know it was something you were passionate about, um, crypto psycho. So I think this is brilliant. Um, I'll, I'm I'm in now. I've, I've I'm, I'm 
probably only in for about 10, 15 minutes, but I'm going to try and come back in again to, um, to later on this afternoon tonight and then also tomorrow. I'll give a pop in my head and, and, and catching up with everybody. So how's it all going? It's going it's good. Big family. Yeah, it's, it's going, it's going good, right? good. Yeah, we're, we're, we're trying to get we're trying to get some uh, music going. So like, LMFG is good on good on the guitar. Uh, no, walk is good. no. Walk, you keep walk saying that. Banjo. No, dude, I'm not. I'm not. look. Hey, hey, that's a ten key span. I used to play the piano, but uh, the that's piano. years ago, dude. I'm I, I reckon years ago with Bon Jovi. I, I reckon you could whip out the harmonica. Yeah, have you got any musical I, I, I instruments, Matthew? Have you got any? Ta- have you got any musical talents? I used to play with the harmonica. Um, yeah, you know, I, I can drum. I actually got a set of bongos in the corner, <laughs> and I was trying to practice. And guess what? I called my buddy James and said, "No way in hell! I can tap with my little pick on on, on the bench and my hands, and I could probably be an orchestra." You know, an orchestrator with with yeah. <laughs> stuff. That's my well, music. That's it. I I don't play instruments. It sucks. I was really stupid. I never got into it. You know, it was, and then I got married and had kids. It was like, there was no way. I was buying my kids instruments and got them into the pianos. My kids both can play the piano. The, my son got into the horns for a while, and they both gave it up. Yeah, nice the horns, yeah. like a Viking. They're like oh. Viking, eh? <laughs> so you, 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 you don't play any. You don't play any instruments, Matty. Yeah, no, I've no. dabbled a bit I, with a guitar. Um, I was in a band in my early twenties, and we actually released an EP um, that we of original songs, just something local. Um, you know, nothing, nothing published or anything like that. But we did did, did a bit of that. I was I was singing in it. Uh, um, and I'm average at guitar. And I'm average at singing. So we sold about a hundred of the EPs, and that was it. But um, that was my stint. <laughs> is that is that in the uh, is that in the public domain? Is there? Can hell you do, no. can... I'm not going to give you any more information. <laughs> <laughs> That's in I'll the probably... that. That's going to be on Google. If we research Matthew oh. Rudolph, musician, you've got to come up somewhere, surely. <laughs> yeah, no, no. But I think, um, and like you were saying, LMFG, like your kids have tried it, and maybe they stay with it, maybe they don't. But I think having a little bit of music at some stage in your life, I think it's really good. I think, it, you know, for the creativity, mm. for your own expression. Mm. Crypto Walker, I think I saw you with a guitar before, earlier when I uh, kind of was a, a banjo, yeah. yeah. Banjo, there you go. You need the, the banjo up in the hills, yeah. Yeah, there you go, mate. There you go. Bit of deliver, bit of deliverance. Well, we got you on the banjo. We got Ali on on the um, on the piano, and then uh, oh, we did, um, yeah, yeah, and then Matthew, we we've got we've got we all we already know you can sing, so we've got you on the vocals. Where, oh. where, where, where um, well, I, I'm more of a backup. I reckon I'm I'm not that good. So maybe Ronak, what's your singing voice like, mate? What have you got, Crypto Psycho? You got a triangle or a recorder or? Uh, he's got yeah, a ditch. Yeah. He's got a didgeridoo. Crypto cycles on the oh, ditch. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the G's on the piano. I have got a guitar. Got a guitar. I, just can't, I just can't play it very well. I'm it's literally the L1, learning, L1 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 learning cards. Yeah. Learning cards. We we're, we're having a bit of we we're having a bit of fun yesterday. Joey Ento was like in the chat, and he's he's created a Telegram group for Layer One X's first meme coin. So he's already Joey yeah. Ento's already on it. It's called it's called the Interoperable Beard. <laughs> yeah, with hey, a hat. I just, I just I just posted a link, and that's called the mothers and uh, uh, mother mother fathers. Uh, my buddy started a school about twenty five years ago. This is. If you look and scroll down there, uh, it, my best friend is my brother, uh, Jim McGrath, James McGrath. Uh, he's the original drummer from Bon Jovi. We used to hang out in his mother's garage in Sayerville, where they wow. would practice and everything. And we would go hang out at the clubs and all. So I was always around the music, you know what I mean? And around all this, everybody just always playing. And it was it was pretty cool, man, to, to be in that, you know? And, then, and then as soon as the, they cut their first album, they cut James because James wouldn't put on makeup and wear leather pants. James was like me, you know, hey, you got a leather jacket or 
a, a flannel on. That's it. You know what I mean? The beard. They ain't putting no yeah. makeup on. If James had the stars again, what are you doing? We would just be hanging out in Bon Jovi and the guys. It would be on like a Tuesday night and we're just hanging out in the garage or something and they got their makeup on and stuff. And I'm like, what the hell? They get, they get, they get in it. They get in into all over there. They get in into. Like, <laughs> they Sorry, get it in into. They get in into character. That's oh, what they're doing. You've you've not seen you've not seen a uh, Machu Mike and uh, Machu in um, in the offices trying on the Power Ranger outfits. What they've yeah. been delivered. <laughs> Chief, is a, Chief is a good singer, eh? Well, I, I don't know. It depends. I mean, maybe if you ask him, but maybe we'll. <laughs> We, we might we'll be the judge of that, eh? We'll let him, yeah. we'll let him tell us. We'll yeah, decide. Yeah. yeah, exactly. He might be. Any like, alpha? Be, that'd be Any weird alpha? See, see him play the horn. Uh, Ronax Ronax doing Joey Anto's job. He's asking for alpha match. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I well, did. To be well. honest, to be honest, to be honest, I did the same with Cody yesterday. So Cody will like sharing some um, of the um, the UI UX kind of things for the different projects what are, they're going to be using so we got something out of him <laughs> yeah i can i can give you a, look i can give you a little bit of alpha in terms of um Ooh. what we've also um starting to look at and starting to to talk with as well we, we're looking to um I, I think like and and i think most people know but for those who don't um the interoperability will allow you to issue tokens on any chain and you can have your liquidity source anywhere. So you could have your liquidity on Poly Polygon and now you're issuing tokens on BNB and, on, and, and, and you're capturing users on, on any chain we're connected to. So what we're actually doing um, now is we're actually in talks with partnerships with DEXs as well on other chains. And so what we want to create is a situation where you can trade our next on LNX, on centralized exchanges, on BNB, on Ethereum, on AVAX. And, and it's actually what it is, is let's say for B, BNB, the BEP20, it's the BEP20 uh, version of LNX. It's the ERC20 uh, version of LNX on ETH. And so what it is, is that it's actually native LNX on these chains, but the value of that LNX is stored in a, the liquidity on LNX. So um, I think for, for us to, to do that with L1X is a great use case to show everyone else that this is what you can do. Now you can actually issue a token on AVAX, purchase it with AVAX, and keep your L1X token on AVAX. If you want to then go ahead and transfer that L1X to another chain, what the, what the, um, the, the tech will do, it will burn and then mint the AVAX on another chain. So there's no kind of, there's no need to go into, because we have so many, the, the, the flexibility with the interoperability is insane. Are we talking to projects that oh, I want to burn and mint, I want to exchange, I want to verify, you can do any of those. Um, but with uh, what we're going to set up with L1X now is that you move it anywhere, you can buy it anywhere with any token on any chain and it's native to that chain. And so we now started to, uh, in talks with quite a few different um, DeFi projects to now start to spread our one X out on these multiple chains. So I think probably the perfect example is Weath, right? Wrapped ETH, that's it's yeah. pretty much everywhere. But the the restriction on that, uh, where you start to get this wrapped ETH uh, starts to become uh, limited is that it's it, it's also bound by the liquidity uh, on the native chain where the wrapped ETH is, right? And then when you start to try and, try and uh, update the value of that, that's when it becomes extremely expensive. With us, um it's it's e very easy to continue to um update the value of l1x across those chains because we have the single liquidity source or it doesn't have to be single but we have the single liquidity source and our smart contracts can continually talk to each other to update the value of, of the l1x um and also we have the opportunity now to have it on solana and any other chain we connect to so it really um and what that what how does that benefit community has it how does that benefit adoption how, how does that benefit lnx holders it means that when we go into a dex so for example there's you know you could have tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands uh hundreds of thousands of monthly active users on each dex um and now by providing a liquidity pair on that dex now we get exposure to those users right and so it's a perfect example of what projects can do by using lnx as the use case first because any project can do this hey 
Calvin and, and, Mattel, uh, quick. This is with, with a single contract address. So what? Yeah. So what it is is that you have the the, uh -huh. the native contract addresses. So you have a native Alwinex contract address on BNB. You have a native Alwinex contract address on AVAX. So you have these contract addresses for Alwinex, but those contract addresses communicate to the asset registry, which basically then sends out and and, and uh -huh. communicates uh -huh. and coordinates these, these 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 tokens. Right? Coordinates their value. Coordinates their movement. Um, coordinates the utility and so right. yeah it, it's 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 the first use case and i think it's ideal that we show up with lnx it's the first use case of a multi-chain token that can be managed through a, a a one asset registry and that's exactly what red curry is building as well uh, and that's what got them so excited yeah freaking beautiful yeah. brother Beautiful. Yeah, long, I long, see long. a question there. Yeah. I, I see yeah. a question from Cryptic V. Have you guys seen the new L1 Dex update and news? Can might you comment on this uh, new info on L1 Dex decision yeah. to launch with their own emissions emissions token as opposed to using the native L1 X token? Yeah, look, I can give you an update. So we've been talking with the L1 Dex guys. We're still talking with them. We're still working with them. Um, so basically, for us, they want. It was big for them to be able to have the code open source before they started building, right? And we respect that. But for us, we we are not going to open source the code before we launch. It's it's um, imagine if you had something that no one else had, and you had it locked in the cupboard, right? No one else had it, and you wanted to release it, and um, and Could there was a release. Fried chicken. <laughs> yeah. It's the secret recipe, right? But but the release date, um, and then but then you were open. You would basically <laughs> then allow people into that cupboard to see, copy, uh, you know, analyze that thing awesome. before you released it. It's it's just the risk. We've all we've all been here. We've all been on the journey for a long time. The last thing we want to do is have that code out before it's launched, so someone else forks it. You know, it's it's just too. It's too risky. So while we respect that and they respect our, uh, us, of course, that's fine. And so that's why we move with, uh, that's why they've decided to do that and they've decided to go with their own token. Look, um, I think you know, nothing changes between the fact that we, we, we believe in those guys. We believe in that they're a, that they're a, they're a great team. Um, so what we'll be doing though, with that in mind, we'll, we'll be basically um, having an initial um, deck structure where you will there, there'll be liquidity pools which will be incentivized by our one x coin there'll be um you know there'll be the, the the swaps which the liquidity pools will feed into that and so it's very much i don't know for those of you who have been around for a few years when the lunar ecosystem um and i, I know i use them for a couple of examples and and obviously sometimes it's not a great example because they end up crashing but what they did extremely well they did actually set that ecosystem up with so many really strong components. It's the algorithm and the pegging to, to the Luna UST token that became their downfall. But yeah. what they do is they started with, they work with um, like a- Anchor, a, a Anchor, team. Anchor, Anchor Protocol, didn't they were, they were working with as well? Yeah, and TerraSwap. So TerraSwap was um, their first kind of initial liquidity uh, sort of DEX provider, right? TerraSwap, and they went out with that. And then after that, other decks have started launching astroport launched with now they moved to the cosmos sdk because of what happened to luna so basically we'll we'll, we'll provide that at the start and then the l1 decks team will start to develop their um their decks uh after that once they have the code and once you know they've they've got me to look on the code but look i think it's just the case that we respect their decision they respect our decision um and we they they can understand why you don't want to open source a code so someone else can copy it before you actually launch it. This is a really important, right? And when we look at first mover advantage, it's it can often be understated, right? Um, and so we we have to make sure we capitalize on that first. Yeah, no, it makes per makes, makes perfect sense. Like you like you, you need that you need that bit of network effect to kick in, don't you? So you've got that adoption yeah. off the get go. But if I can, so um, if I look at the the the, the first month of launch um, in terms of access to L1X coin, you're going to get it from multiple different places. So you will have the CEXs, 
We're also talking to much larger CEXs as well. Once we launch, we've already started giving them the Explorer traction and all that kind of stuff. So you start to expand your access to our next coin across multiple different CEXs as we add more on. You're now going to get access from our next coin on the native chain, right through the swap mechanism, um, which will be buying it on the L1 X chain, but also as we grow the partnerships with these def uh, these these DEXs and DeFi protocols on other chains, you're now going to start to be able to buy it on any other chain as well. So access to L1 X coin will be on multiple chains and on multiple DEXs, um, which I think that's a, for that's, us no. makes sense, right? Yeah, that's a, it's a game changer, that, isn't it? Because like in the not too distant future, like L1X will be on DEXs of, of uh, DEXs on different chains, what people are already using. So they... Well, yeah, and, and I think, you know, this is how, and there's multiple ways it could work, but potentially it could also work like where we, <clears throat> we provide liquidity on the DEXs, we build that relationship up, we open up the cross-chain swaps, we open up um, the, the DEX, our one dex builds their dex they can see this is all happening and then you can almost put this in reverse where now the dexes provide liquidity to us right so where you've got liquidity on dexes some of it's capital efficient some of it's not some of it's in a pair some of it's locked some of it's in single staking well if we can provide an opportunity for to uh, make their liquidity even more capital efficient so that and we've built that relationship because we're already providing liquidity to them then it starts to become we start to build these partnerships up with them providing liquidity for the cross chain swaps as well, and so it, it's a it's a two way partnership where we we provide liquidity and they provide liquidity to to the cross chain, and that's how we want to kind of build these partnerships up with with, with the dexes, because yeah. that once you have liquidity, like once you've got uh, you know enough liquidity on the cross chain swaps, um, like now you have fast cheap. Um, and you've got plenty of liquidity on there and, and we'll continue to add chains. I think the cross-chain swap is probably one of the most obvious use cases we can start to highlight and really build out because it's it's the thing that most people do. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited about it. I'm excited about the the opportunity initially within DeFi, the opportunity in gaming. Um, we're, we're still keeping an extremely good relationship with OmChain. I uh, know we've got the AMA with them. Um, and OmChain we're expanding beyond and starting now to talk to other partners in the digital identity space outside of of of, of turkey yeah. um and we're working with them to expand that and so <clears throat> i think you know you've got all you've got all these different mindsets within crypto you've got the the short term the medium term and the long term mindset um i think with with l1x and when i look at the short term the mid term and the long term uh, in terms of the adoption of the tech, there's opportunity in, in, in all three of those. Uh, but I think once you add the short term, the medium term and the long term stakes starts to take hold. And I'm talking when I'm talking long term, I'm thinking of things like, um, you know, digital identity across um, blockchains that are owned by nations that need interconnectivity. Uh, I'm thinking, you know, institutional institutions that require a fast, cheap, safe access to assets and users um whether it be bitcoin or whether it be multiple different users that they want to to access for their uh for whatever their products are and so yeah i'm i'm, I'm really excited about it and and I've, I've i suppose what gives everyone confidence in the internal team which can can translate to confidence in the community the tech is there we have the tech the tech is indisputably unique. It's it's better on so many levels. Um, and then now the next phase when um, with us opening up and getting out into the wild, let's show this what this tech can do with applications built on built on top of it. Yeah, and, and do you know what's exciting there? Like you, you're talking like it's a blockchain, it's Web three, but what you're getting excited about there is like web to integration real world applications outside of what's traditionally in this web3 bubble we're in it's like proper web2 connectivity with real companies real institutions governments countries it's yeah that's on you know, level, isn't it? I've got a question for you guys and the listeners as well as well um i was i was and i was thinking about this the other night just because obviously i've got nothing else to do but 
But I was thinking about this the other night and I was thinking of there is this, we've now created this ecosystem of interconnected blockchains, right? So we've got Ethereum, Solana, BNB, Apex, Polygon, Matic, um, Phantom, Arbitrum, was that Optimism. It? Optimism and um, and we're adding the Bitcoin network, right? So what what should we call that ecosystem, right? And we've got our layer one X because you know is is that the is that the the web 3x ecosystem like because like what is the name of those because those chains now are part of an ecosystem where information can flow for flow freely right assets value smart well, I, I'd, I'd, um... you could call it you could call it you decide <laughs> just stick with <laughs> on the X. no you I, decide. I mean if you, you think decide. Well, and that's actually, think, that's actually yeah, my business name, and I'll, right. I'll, I'll hand it to you because I won't need it. Yeah, I mean, if you think about Polkadot, right? Polkadot has got parachains, and if you think Layer One X is like Polkadot, and the parachains are like every blockchain that comes on board, so I just call it I just call it X Chain. You got parachain because yeah. X X is the theme, isn't it? Or cross. I mean, it's weird, isn't it? Because you've got cross chain, which it is cross chain, but it's like X chain is like bringing in the layer, the X of layer one X, and kind of basically when people understand what a parachain is with polka dot, layer one X is polka dot, and every blockchain have a par have the parachain. Uh, in the yeah, well, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking to down the track, right? When, it, when, when, because this has the potential to become the new internet, right? Interconnected chains, which have, which are borderless, right? So I'm thinking to, to that point, mass adoption, mass, mass adoption. What is this technology and what is this interconnected? Yeah, yeah. So, oh, like right. the new, so you're like thinking of that, the new internet. Is it, is it Interchain Web3? What is this ecosystem that, that, that if, how I can see it, what is this ecosystem that every blockchain will want to be, be knocking down the door to get into, right? Because it's now an interconnected web of blockchains where you can fly we, we, we can flow information and value anywhere. Um, and it's starting with these chains, but it only continue to grow. Yeah, well, um, I don't know. You got like web, what, so what are we in now? We're in like web three, so I don't know. Yeah, see, a a Andrew, Andrew Signals is web X, right? Um, yeah. yeah, it could be web X, it could be web three X, it could be, you know, what, whatever that is. But what is, you know, I was just pondering this the other night because I kind of almost thought that's, yeah this exclusive sort of not exclusive but this really highly efficient ecosystem of blockchains that we continue to grow what is that yeah mm. yeah it's a funny one isn't it because it's like the thing is web3 was was coined by a community weren't it i think i don't know who i don't know who it was who coined web3 from web2 but like it is a this new internet is it's going to be called something on it someone's going to name it someone's going to give it that next because i know they got web3 and web4 but like if you can coin it yourself, WebEx is pretty cool. What about uh, Cell 3? Cell is in C E double L or? Yeah, it sounds like we're in prison now. <laughs> cell Block 3. <laughs> cell Block 3. Uh, yeah, no, maybe not that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I, I was only thinking about that because. Um, because it's you know it, it, it is like as you say mark it's like a it's it's like a parachain ecosystem but it's not restricted to chains that have to become a parachain they have to integrate into this parachain network it's, it's chains remaining and staying as themselves but but we're basically now connecting them all up into this ecosystem i see that ecosystem as well almost well like i said before it has the potential now to become the 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 new sort of internet right because one thing between blockchain and internet at the moment is that the siloed nature of blockchains limits that you can't really call you know this this, this fragmented one give me one second guys this might be my call Gentlemen, I'm going to have to leave you with that, but I'm going to pop back in. I'll pop back in later on um, my time this this afternoon, this evening. But I think you're doing an awesome thing. I think you know, um, looking forward to to launch. Um, yeah. You know, I think it's going to be exciting. Mark, uh, great job in putting this all together. Yeah, Fair, so, uh, Ronan, thanks for coming on board. Yeah. 
No, I'll pop in again, guys. Take care of yourselves and we'll talk soon. Thanks, everybody. Right. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, man. Bye. Bye, Machi. Thank Cheers, you. And that, well, that, was, get, um, that was awesome. That was a pretty decent little insight there, isn't it? Like, having I wonder the, if we, having, we'll get Kevin for the, it one minute. wonder if Kevin has one minute. Yeah. yeah. Having the uh, LP on them diff, on the different uh, DEXs. Yeah, a lot of, um, I, I say everything needs, I don't care, web this, web that. No, just L1X, period. My yeah, thing just is, L1X, L1X just, yeah. That's it. My thing is, I'm looking at this as an operating system almost. We're not going to need our computer you anymore. Know, goodbye, goodbye, Microsoft, and goodbye, Apple, because of blockchain technology from what I have been reading into. That's what I'm seeing coming. So you yeah, just you don't really want to... Linux. You, you you load up Linux and you're gonna put on a L1X web page and that's it. That's your wallet and that's all your medical information. And you, you'll have yeah, all you... these space cards, right? This is what I'm saying. And, and here's my medical, here's my banking, here's my social media, here's my whatever, right? My videos. That, this is what I'm seeing. This is tremendous. And this is, I I don't care about this EMP and L1X bumping heads saying, no, we don't like this. But they're being nice, and that's cool. Don't don't FUD. Do not FUD over this. Uh, this is I not see a worker, Rocky. Smart. Huh? Yeah. I see Kito uh, Walker rocking with sound. Music. Yeah, he's, getting, he's, getting in, he's getting the vibe on. He's getting the vibe on. Yeah. I think there's a lot to um, there's a lot to unpack there, isn't there? I think you could listen, probably re re listen to what he said a few times to kind of digest what he just said, because there's a lot there was a lot there mentioned that um, probably is real alpha that no one knew about. Which car yeah. is dead, LMFG? Excuse me. Which car is dead behind you? Is that a car? Oh. Mrs. Mrs. Yeah. Good's car. That's Patricia's. <laughs> my truck's outside. It doesn't get in the garage. Yeah. Oh, this is this this is my uh, man cave. It's a uh, airport. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were in like yeah. an underground underground bunker or something. <laughs> oh, I, I, yeah. no, this oh, thing yeah, yeah. 160 mile an hour winds, man. I I, yeah. I bought the house and then I spent 20 grand in the backyard putting this thing up i cleared out a bunch of land and i put this thing up it uh it was my son my nephew and two of my buddies it took us a weekend one weekend it's a 25 by 30 building you know it's got a huge door you know it's yeah. you know and and then and then once my buddies left and everybody left me and my son did all the electrical I got another network out here, of course. It's called the Garage Network. How many network. cars do you have? How many cars do you have? Uh, only two. Only two. The, my wife's yeah. car, and then I have a, a 2005 pickup truck. Yeah, no, it's a lot like uh, like Wolf Creek, eh? Huh? Like, like Wolf Creek. Wolf Creek. Wolf Craig. Craig. Wolf Creek, like the beer, like the F trucks. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's F one fifty, but it, it's yeah, a no. heavy, duty, it's a heavy duty one, so it has like yeah. uh, ten thousand pounds towing capacity. It's real fast. It's cool. <laughs> oh, I need my new house needs a ten car garage. You got too many cars. Wow, uh, yeah. I just want to get a seventy one four forty two in here and rip it apart. And yeah. rebuild it. Oh, I've That's got an old garage. It's got, a tiny airport. I think it's across. I'm gonna I've get got, one. I got the old. Uh, I got a little Cortina with a three, four, seven Windsor in it. Okay. And that that, that, that's a, that goes all right. <laughs> yeah. No. And this this is a good this is a good car right here. This is this is a Nissan Murano, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I want, I want pay, the pay attention to this. 
the motor in What's this the car, horsepower? It's like 260 horsepower and about this and a little bit or the same in torque, but I'm getting 28 miles a gallon. It's all wheel drive and it is has everything. You it has sonar on it. Not only does it have it has can radar. You can go underwater. Sonar. Huh? You can go underwater. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no I, I, no you, you got you maybe a couple inches. My truck would be good for about 10 inches of water. <laughs> yeah. Thing. It, would, it would be dead you know and and everybody in with these electric cars whatever you do do not buy an electric car and if you did already p p use your head really dive into this and get rid yeah. of it um, go back to the right, carbon in the united states right now there it's horrible what the insurance companies i worked for an insurance company for about 12 years so i follow that stuff still now they are going after like 300 percent increases on auto insurance if you have an electric car because of the five once you get just a little dent in a, one of these electric cars it, it, right now they're coming up with all these laws and i believe over in europe and uh, argentina uh they're already coming up with laws that you can't put an electric car into one of their parking decks because if one of these things go on fire they burn it like 4500 degrees and you can't put it out water doesn't put it out what you, you there's there's a place in California they have big dumpsters and a crane. So they'll pull up and they'll take your car that's on fire and they'll put it into the dumpster of water. Yeah. That's a business. And, and <laughs> someone someone says you, you, if you get a flat tire, you, you, you don't have a spare. Um, you gotta call you gotta call Elon Musk and he, he brings one out. Yep. Get better because you can't handle that weight. Yeah. That weight, that weight kills the uh, range. Yeah. Well, I'm just gonna sh I'm just gonna show uh I'm just gonna show this um <laughs> the someone wants someone wants to see the calculator. I think it was con. I think it was con. Yeah, dog, we can get but the, I'm not sure. Get I, the calculator out again. I was gonna I was gonna reply to someone, but I I went to reply and it actually deleted them. <laughs> it deleted the message, which is a bit of a bummer um so are you if you if you pop back in the chat and you just post again unless i've banned you i added to the blacklist of the stream i hope not i don't know how to get that back up either which is a bit of a pain in pain in the butt um where are we i'm just going to go to the restream a second and see if i can um uh, re check out the blacklist is so right the l1x app uh, go into the reward calculator. If you've got not, if you've got different nodes, like if you've got um, a full validator node, um, so what I, I mean, it doesn't make any difference to the calculation. But like, does it says here, there's eighty in circulation. But if you're at the very end where there's eight hundred, doesn't change anything. But just just so you can see it, it doesn't uh, change just, the numbers, eh? Yeah, it doesn't. Could doesn't you change. Zoom the screen, please. What? Sorry. Can you please yeah, zoom the screen? Can you um, go a bit bigger? Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Hang on. I need spectacles. Is that better? I, I, zoom, I zoomed in. Hang on. I'll get the telescope out. Well, hang on. I'll tell, you what, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just go full screen. So. Yeah, yeah. It's better. Oh, that's better. Whoa, that's yeah. big. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So... So like if you've got if you've got one full validator node and just just so you can see like if I go down to day one like if I go down to April and then you do one full validator node and then you put in yeah. you put in um, a five dollar L you put in a five dollar L one X then that's going to give you a hundred and ninety thousand dollars rewards which is thirty eight thousand L one X over At the course of 12, yeah over the course of twelve months. That's at five dollars, and just so. Oh, what what are you that... getting? You're getting a what is it? Uh, what do you get a day? You get what's it say there? In a, 
in one day. Five hundred and twenty-two dollars a day. That's all right. Seven days a week, five hundred and twenty-two dollars. So you're, you're, you're getting like a hundred L1X a day. Yeah. Mm. What happens if you had five event listener nodes? Uh, well, I'm, I'm gonna. I just want to drop this. So, if you go back to March 2025, so you, you then you've got all 800. Like if you see here, yeah. nothing, nothing. Well, yeah, calculate, that, cal calculate again. Yeah, that's that's good. Like nothing, nothing actually Imagine if changes. That went down to ten dollars. Yeah. <laughs> so no, that, go to, that's good. So go to event listener nodes. So just, yeah, if you just had to... five of them. And this is what I need clarity on. I was going to ask Mark Matthew about it, but because he had to dart you... off. So if you had five five event listener nodes at the same same everything else, I'm not I've not put the hosting in because that's hundred dollars no, no. a month. But five dollars an L one X with five event listener nodes. So that that would give you one hundred and six thousand dollars. So twenty one thousand L one X over a year. And yeah. That's still um, uh, three hundred bucks a day. Yeah, three hundred dollars a day yeah. by having five five event listener nodes, and that is that is like three hundred dollars a day. That's a, that's including like weekends too. So, like if you earn three hundred dollars a day, you have Saturday and Sunday off, and obviously if you if you're ill, you don't get paid. If you're going over yeah. there, you don't get paid. This thing yeah. is a machine. This thing this thing just gets you paid. Yeah, doesn't matter if you're sick. Doesn't matter if you you want a holiday. <laughs> you're still getting you're still getting three hundred dollars a day, seven days a week, twenty four hours twenty four hours a day, seven days a week, three six five. Yeah. Um, so yeah, pretty darn impressive. And if you think about a five dollar L one X, this is basically being as conservative as you can be. Because if you think about it, right. L1X at $5 is a 10X. So that's just saying, like, Layer1X, the most innovative blockchain that exists, is only, go, is, on, is only going to go to a $220 million market cap. That's it. Is that what so, it would be at that market cap? Yeah, well, $5. It's only yeah. it's a 10X, a 10X in it. I mean, even if it launched at a $25 million $25 market million. cap, that's $250, $250 million. My thing is, I believe I believe in the next three four years, I think we're going to see L one X at, at two hundred and fifty to five hundred dollars. And here's the thing: if not, then L one X is history and they failed. One or the other. Uh, it, 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 it's a layer one. That's it. And within five years, any layer one that survives, they're all going to. They're going to calm down and it's just going to level out at about $250 to $500. That's my prediction. I, I'm, from everything that I know and read, this is how I feel 100%, guys. And I've dived into this shit like there's no tomorrow, you know? And you got to real, realize what I can Digital electronic engineering back in the 70s. I went to that school, get construction. I was just seeing where the background noise were coming from. <laughs> uh, sorry, your audio has gone really funny, um, LMFG. I don't know what's happened. All right. I, had I, had, I had music, and then the music went, and then you went quiet, and then now you've come back. Yeah, I'm there. Yeah, yeah. All right, what should, yeah. we, uh, what should we tag? What, what sort of... Um... Things should we do, Crypto Psycho, to help share it? <clears throat> yeah. So give me a give me a sec. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go off camera a sec. I'm just gonna put a put a post out. Get cam get Canva, um, get a new piece of artwork put out for day two, and then gonna yeah. push that out and get it reshared. So I'll be I'll be two ticks. Uh no worries. So you you haven't watched uh, Wolf Creek, Ellen? FG. Nah, I'm not one for TV. Yeah, I suppose that. Um, you, I'm in a garage. Probably, I don't have. I got no TV out here. You, you'd probably like it with the with the truck in it. <laughs> I 
Uh, we spent it was good, I tell you. Uh, wonder what it's going to uh, do on launch day. What, do we have a time of the actual launch for the on the day? They did, yeah. They said uh, nine o'clock or. Uh, uh, I think they posted a UTC time. I'm not positive, bro. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of AMA at, at nine o'clock or something. I don't, right. I don't know the actual launch, but um, nine, nine a.m. Perth time, launch day live AMA. There you go. I don't know if that's like the launch, the yeah. launch starts then, or is it in the day, or? I think it'll be. And actually, that's very, if it is, another first. I've been into a lot of these projects at the beginning. Right? Yeah. You, don't launch, you don't see nobody. <laughs> There's no AMAs. <laughs> yeah, really, um, really good to, to actually see, you know, a bit more um, belief for these other uh, people that don't really believe or follow. Right. The transparency is huge, man. It's huge. And, and, and everything that I... Fingers crossed. Electric car. I, I don't think it's a fingers crossed thing here, guy. For one, it's yeah. just the technology. Technology, period. And the monies yeah. that are going to come into this over the next year. What's looking at what? Trillion, two and a half trillion? I guarantee you, it's going to be ten million dollars by the end of this year to early twenty twenty-five. As a whole, one. So no matter what, there's projects out there that I'm seeing that I bought into years ago. It was garbage. It's, yeah, it's people bought into. They set up robots to buy into it and sell it. Yeah. and because they're make the robots are automatic and they're bringing them up. It's, it's that crazy. And if this thing snowballs, any project that's still floating this time next year, yeah, I say all the big boys that have been hanging out, that, you know, go to Dot, Tesos, Cardano, Phantom, any of those, look at their all time highs. And all of those are going to be 200, 300% higher once Bitcoin hits 125 grand. And I yeah. just see. And hitting 125 grand easily by this time next year. I'd be yeah, shocked. It, if that's my conservative. It, it would have got would have been good to get Bitcoin at 10 cents, eh? Oh Jesus! I was screaming, everybody, 16 grand, and my buddy's got money. I don't have any, and I actually don't have no Bitcoin. I always no. went into stuff with that. XRP and Cardano. I'm just, when, when it was free or it was 10 cents or a dollar or they were giving it away. How about the, the 5,000 Bitcoin pizza or something? Yeah. 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 yeah really extremely overpriced pizza. What kind of toppings are on that? Yeah. Uh, 2,000 ton of cheese. <laughs> That's funny. You would be into a Oh, I wonder what that dude, that, that person will be thinking now. Excuse me? I wonder what that, that, that person would be thinking now. Right, now, today, yeah. He would be in trauma, for sure. He'd be in a, yeah, in a coma. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> 10,000 BTC, oh, it was 10,000 BTC, oh my God. Yeah. There's another guy that uh, I read about, and he actually finally got a permit, and he made robots. He's got robots digging into a landfill because he threw his hard drive away. And they figured out it was in this area, and he's got robots going through the garbage, digging through that area. It took him like three or four years to get the permit because they kept, kept telling him no. Did he find it? Excuse me? Did he find it? No, he didn't find it yet. He's still it's still working. The thing's in the in the working. It's oh. worth 
hundreds of millions of dollars that I Oh, hey, Gary, there. Yeah, at least five million Bitcoin are gone out of the he 21 million. Five million are lost. So that that bit that uh that pizza would have been worth one billion dollars. Yeah, right. Think about that. Black Black Rock is Black Black Rock is completely gonna uh, control the volatility of the Bitcoin. Yeah, all, uh, all the pizza. What about? It got one percent supply of the BTC in one month itself, and uh, MicroStrategy took four years. Ah. Ah. Giant. That's crazy. They just keep buying it right now, and I'm telling you, they're gonna dump it. I'm telling you, before this happening, they're gonna get it where there's gonna be a it's point, it. and boom, it's. And whenever it, it, it comes, and I go down as low as sixty grand here, fifty-five grand. But the second it uh, does, it's off to the races, big time. If they try proof of stake, then they will be the king of them. If they appeal for the change to its uh, proof of stake. They will be the king, obviously. Yeah. They will control everything. Yeah, yeah it's kind of... Yeah, it's... Uh, we need L1X. That's why, uh, yeah, yeah, Bitcoin's for the, Bitcoin's for the money. Bitcoin's here for the money, and Layer one x is for the data. Right. For the people. For the people. Man, for, the, saying, for the people, by the people. This is it, yeah. man. Yeah, it is. This it is for the people, yeah. It's a whole nother world here. I'm telling you. Uh, and, and everybody's outside of the United States. That's what it's about. I hope V591 would not do the same mistake. Don't pay 10,000 L1X for two pizza. Right. We'll see, man. It's, it's going to take time. And, and like everybody was all about rock and roll. We're going to make all this money. Relax. It's, it's going to take a few yeah. years. And my God, it, it's, it's a whole nother world. I, I just can't wait for it. I, I really can't. I'm just going to go click, click. Guys, I've, I've, I'm having problems with my back. I'm going into all these different things. What a nightmare. Every time I go to the doctor, I, it's never going to be a nightmare again. So click, click. Okay, you can see this. You can see that. This is my data. I have all my stuff in one spot. This is, it's, it's, it's I guess everybody wants to say Web3. Uh, I don't know what to say. I say L1X. That's it. That's what we're going to call it. L1X, period. Oh, you're on L1X? Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's that impressive. The roadmap, everything it's, I'm writing to it. Yeah. Our take is quite futuristic. I'm not quite very futuristic. This going to be something that everyone has to get used to. It's a different interface. Once you get used to this, I see this being our our dex is the our dex have a very different kind of ui the designs are next level you know right whenever i open the app it grabs me to do some sweat <laughs> Very satisfying, man. Well, I, have you ever I'm dropped the electric car? Huh? LMFG. Have you ever dropped the electric car? No, I haven't. 
I haven't even bothered driving to rent one because I was going to do it. I was going to go dr- try to rent one of those uh, Teslas. And I never did it. For one, for one thing, I, I, I pretty much can't get into a car. It's too low. The car, the car seats are too low for me. You know, and and I understand the power that it would have. You know, yeah. I always, when I was a kid, I was always playing with the the four forty twos and the Chevelles. You know, so driving the cars with the five hundred pounds of torque. Yeah, granted, they could do zero to sixty in about six seconds, and the Tesla can do it in three. <laughs> I can only imagine, you know. But I, I've driven enough cars, hot rod powerful enough. So yeah, it's all good. I don't like them because, for one, lithium is the most poisonous chemical on the earth. The problem is we are using lithium for everything on your, from your laptop to your cell phone to the speakers to all your blowers and all that. This stuff is going to get into the waterways. When it does, it's going to kill the fish. So you're talking to, and now you want to make these batteries a hundred times bigger. You know, uh, it's, it's not going to be good. And, and they're uh-huh. saying they're going to recycle them. Never happened. Just like they recycled the plastic bottles. The water bottles. Yeah, they're going to recycle them. Where is it? It's all in the waterway. It's going to be horrible. And then right now, with the fire problem, what the end is horrible, man. Yeah. First thing. Yeah. These three-cylinder diesel cars that get 85 miles a gallon that put out practically zero emissions. Have a nice day. The car can't do more than 70 miles an hour. Have a nice day. You can't get a Hellcat. Hellcats are illegal. Have a nice day. That's simple. Yeah. Hey, guys. How are you? Uh, I, I I can see that uh, Crypto Psycho have just now shared the link. Yeah, for the competition, I think, yeah. It's for the competition. Please engage with the ad hoc tweet fam. Let us get as many eyes on this as possible. I think there is a reward for these two. Absolutely. 100 L1X coin, $300 in the pocket. Who won yesterday? Did you guys know? Yeah, Lucius. Well, nice. Lucius the species. Congrats, man. If you are watching the video. Crypto Psycho just jumped off like for a bit or what's your have you got your breakfast for um I'm um, I'm actually fasting so I haven't had anything I'll have it later oh oh, oh I'm sorry I'm sorry uh, I really uh, forgot about that no nah, don't, don't be sorry mate as uh, so good so yeah, I'm, I'm just cruising through yeah. the day and then I um, look forward to obviously breaking my fast. Um, yeah. how's, how's everyone doing? Doing good. Yeah, getting, getting excited. Great here, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. LMFG, welcome back. How's it going, man? Good, good. Oh. What's the what's the um, I guess story behind LMFG? If you can tell us. <laughs> yeah. I, w- I was 13 years old. Uh, I-, I moved into a new neighborhood, 
and it was like a weekend before I had to go to school, right? So we got there on Friday. My mother took me to the school, got me all there. So we got moved into the house on Saturday. I go, I go down the street, and uh, a bunch of kids are hanging out. So I'm hanging out with them. Within within a couple of minutes, what? what well, that is that sound for me? Um, no, it's coming from someone else. Could be it was either really Ronak or Walker to Walker. It went down. But but anyway, so there's like five or my six my my age, right? And uh, they're all hanging out, and then all of a sudden, they're like, "Oh, let's go, let's let's get out of here!" And it was, and I'm like, "What?" And we, so they started running. I ran with them, and they were running towards my new house. And behind it, we had a little bit of patch of woods. I'm like, "Go in my backyard." We all run in there, and I'm like, "Why are we running?" Oh, Wayne was coming. And I'm like, what? Like, oh, Wayne, yeah, he's a bully. He just kicks everybody's ass. He's horrible. And I'm like, there's 60 years. Kick his ass. Right? And that's all I said. And then I hung out on the weekend. So Monday morning, uh, I go to the bus stop. Wayne Kineska, I guess one of those people told Wayne that, I said that, so he came up and said, "Oh, you're gonna kick my ass," and half of these guys were there, and I said, "No, I didn't say that. If you're picking on everybody, they should kick your ass," and that's what I said. You should kick your ass. Boom! This guy fucking hit me, knocked me down on the ground. Guess what I did? I get up. I'm the tallest, skinny. I'm as tall as him, but he's he got left back a couple years, and he's a big Polish guy, real big, burly dude, 15 years old. I'm 13, skinny and real long. I'm six foot six at one time, right? I get up, boom, boom, boom. I try to hit him, boom, he knocks me down again. I got up. I just went on for 15, 20 minutes, guys. And I got smart because he's a lefty, a southpaw. I just kept hitting him in his eye. I hit him in his eye probably only about four times. He busted my nose, uh, cracked two of my ribs, but I just went at it. So the next day, I that day, I, I went home. The school bus came. Everybody gets on there. He went home. He had a friggin' shiner. Nobody ever hit this kid in this neighborhood, ever, the bully. Right. So I go home. I clean up. I jumped on my bicycle and it was like the school was five miles away. And everybody's like, you rode your bicycle here? I'm like, yeah. You know, I came from the city when I moved in into the uh, this this neighborhood. LMFG. <laughs> I said, fucking LMFG. Because <laughs> I kicked the shit out of freaking Wayne. I didn't kick the shit out. He kicked the shit out of me. But I stood up to him. And guess what? But he he stayed out of school for three or four days, guys. He came to school Friday. He had friggin' makeup on his face, and I I went up to him and I said, "What? You, oh, mommy put some makeup on your face?" He grabbed me, picked me up, and put me into a stairwell, and fucking put me up on a wall. He goes, "Dude, you say one word, I'll fucking kill you." And I just went as hard as I could. And I mean, I smashed him so hard in his chest, fucked him up, hit his head on the stairs. And I said, but don't ever touch me or any of my friends. Meaning Bruce, Irv, Zambauer, all the guys that I had met. And that was it. He never fucked with anybody else again. And everybody always called me LMFG. There you have it. <laughs> well, there you go. That's quite the story. Nothing crypto related, but still, still very nope. exciting to. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. yeah, my first name is Lance, it's and my last okay. name is it's Good. On. And I'm not kidding you. That's really my name. I don't give a shit to tell everybody. I don't care. I'm Doc. So. Uh, oh, well, <laughs> you know? I guess most of us are are Docs, right? Ronex, just Ronex. So. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 doxxed. I did do you know what right? I didn't even I wasn't even too sure about being doxxed. So like Crypto Psycho was like what I was known as. But I mean you can do due diligence and jump on my disc uh, uh LinkedIn and you can find me through there. But then 
I was speaking to Kevin and it's like, Kevin's like, well, I think it'd be better if it was your full name. I'm like, ah, do you know? Do you know? And I thought, well, I'd sooner just have my first name. And then I was chatting to him and he's like, he's, he's giving me all these um, positives of uh, using my full name. And I thought, well, I'm already on LinkedIn anyway, so why not stuff it? So let's get up there. So yeah, photo ID, um, full name, LinkedIn profile. Yeah. You put, if you if you put your LinkedIn profile on, you're pretty much doxed, aren't you? Because typically your yeah. LinkedIn profile is your professional profile. I used to have one. I think I deleted it years ago. To be honest, I, I never I never used to use it. I didn't really I didn't really get it. But I think as you start, um, if you if you're just like I don't know into into construction and you're working, you've got a manual job. LinkedIn probably isn't that important, is it? But if you've got anything that involves like building relationships and networking linkedin is like 100 percent essential yeah that's what that's why i had it i had it for like 10 years way back when it first started out uh when i was working you know I'm yeah, yeah. Think, some time now i think you might um crypto saga you might have to change the uh you, you put april the 6th on on twitter hey have i oh damn april the 6th we can't, we can't have April the 6th, though. Give me a second. No, no. My internet is gone. Can't be, you can't be tricking David. <laughs> oh, on David's tweet. Ah, oh, damn. Damn, damn, damn. Let me get into yeah. it. Uh, where is that one? Yeah. I thought I better, I better um, cor- auto-correct for you. Dude, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I'm just going to find the damn tweet now. Where did I put it? It's, it's, the, it's the latest one. Yeah, I've pinned many. I've pinned many tweets. So, thank God. It was seven minutes ago. Yeah, my internet connection is so bad at the minute. Do you know what? It's a good thought. It's one of the perks of having Twitter Blue. You can edit tweets. Yeah. You can't. You can't do that typically. I don't think without Twitter Blue, I don't think you can edit a tweet, can you? Once you've posted no, it, that's no. it. Yeah. No, you can't. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't. Call uh, yeah. 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 It's up. It's updated now, so it should be good. Um. Yeah. Well, you missed. You missed it. For we had. We had the uh, the OG and we had Mike. Uh, we had the uh, Matthew in earlier on, so they were they were yeah. good to come in for like ten minutes or something. Yeah, as I heard Matthew a little bit. Uh, just when he was he was going off, but yeah. How how was it? What what insights did you guys get? Yeah, we're good. He gave us like um, Ronak cast for some alpha, and he, he he gave us some alpha, like talking about like um, work like L one X. He's they're going to be providing LP. Uh, they're going to be like putting layer one X a bit like a wrapped token onto different chains. So like if you're I don't know if you're on, it didn't. This is only through certain dexes. So the dexes that are connected to on certain chains. Um, they're going to have like a basically a rap version of L1X, bit 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 like uh, John Rap Teeth, um, mm. something similar to that, where you can just buy it natively on on them chains from the mm. from yeah that that was pretty pretty good alpha. So because at the minute you you're thinking well you've got to go to like L1X app or you've got to swap through the L1X or you've got to go through one of these centralized exchanges. But now if if this is the case and they can just go to a dex on uh bsc or on i don't know avax or ethereum and they can just swap into l1x there that's brilliant isn't it because that just allows so many more people to buy it straight away yeah yeah that's fantastic like and can you use that wrap desert with x swap as well i'm not sure if that will be in the x swap app itself i don't know because uh, he, he was talking about it but he, he said he said that much even when I was listening to him, I'm like, it's one of them where I've got to go back and you know, like re-listen to it. I think I might. What I might do is chop it up. So go back to the video when it's finished, and then take a snippet of it, and then post it back out there again because I think it'd be good for people. You know, like, you know like sometimes you get told something, but there was that much information. There was that much information. It was kind of too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, we, you also we, have we to talk about. Your, your yeah, there you go. Sorry. Sorry, Eva. No, go first. No, no. 
No, no, no. I was just gonna say you you might also have to chop chop off, you know, LMFG story as well behind his name. That was very exciting to hear. It was very hardcore, but yeah. Oh yeah, I didn't even I didn't hear that. Um Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> come on, that, come on, that wasn't hardcore. I only look I only look like a raccoon for about two weeks. <laughs> L- LMFG, yeah, you you're, you're hardcore. <laughs> I, yeah. No, we're going no, to think no we're not going to... at all, guys. That's the one thing. I was always, after I became 18, 19 years old, I was always the biggest guys, and people would try to pick out the big guy at the bar you to start the fight with or something. I was the one to stop the fight and break it up. And it ne- never, I was never a fighter. I was just. If anybody ever tried fighting me, I would just push them on their head, you know. And if they hit me, I would then push them on the ground and just walk away. Do you know, I've like, I've never I've never actually had a fight in real life. I, I do I do uh, when I was at um, when I was younger. Um, I used to do like what I was not twenty tw- up until between twenty and twenty five. I uh, did Brazilian jiu jitsu, well jiu jitsu, and then that turned into brazilian jiu-jitsu towards the end i love it but like even then like it's 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 such good exercise isn't it when you when you do that you oh my god like it's like crossfit but on steroids like you think crossfit's hard work you start you want to start warming up for uh, martial art classes they really take it out here i did that for five years and i stopped doing it because i was getting too many injuries and i couldn't i couldn't sustain it anymore do you do you do did you say you do jiu-jitsu for no, not at all. Not me. No, no. Um, for, I thought I, I, I know. No, um, no I, know I, do the, I do the CrossFit. Yeah, because I know Kevin. Kevin does jujitsu. Kevin, Joe, and Inna, three of them. Ah, oh, Inna does jujitsu as well. Yeah, and she's pretty good too. So. And LMFJ. <laughs> Yeah, he doesn't do it. Now it's good. It's yeah. good fun, actually. I enjoy. No, I enjoy it. No, not me at all. <laughs> um, I think uh, just going on this. I know we've we've been on this chat so many times, but I, one thing to get clarity on. I, I, I was supposed to be asking. Supposed supposed to be asking asking Matthew, but he, he had to jump off because I think he got a call coming in. But um, on this calculator, fur, do you know? How accurate the event listener node calculator is, because I know the I know the full validator node is accurate because Kevin's already said like the amount the amount you have um, for an FBM is going to be fixed. At, um, uh, where is it? Yeah. So the the, the the actual amount for an FBM is going to be a fixed amount per month. He's already said he's already kind of said that. But the, the event listener node, it's it seems like. It's 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 more lucrative to have an event listener node than it is to have a full validator node. Mm, Kevin, I mean, I don't have an exact answer for this, but I I do recall Kevin saying something along the lines that ELNs would be would be equally lucrative as well, and so they all have their own benefits. So I do remember Kevin saying that, but I don't know the exact context. Yeah, yeah, and that's all good. Because like, uh, like if you think, if you look at like this chart, like, like you know, just keeping keeping L one X at the same cost, fifty cents. Like a full validator node, if you've got one, this I mean, this doesn't change anything when you put it up to eight hundred. But you've got you've got one. Um. Oh, sorry, it it, it doesn't change the L one X amount. It it changes the amount that you're going to get over a twelve month period. So like, hang on, one, not five. So like one full validator node is going to give you like a hundred and ninety thousand um, dollars. That five dollars. Oh, hang on, that's five dollars. So one, yeah, one full validator node is going to give you like nineteen thousand um, dollars. That's that's when they've all been kind of minted out, just having one fifty cents. But then when you go and 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 that's twenty five thousand L one X coins. So yep. when you go to like one ELN. And you keep everything else the same. That's giving you like nine thousand eight hundred dollars. 
So nine nine thousand eight hundred opposed to nineteen thousand. Nineteen thousand. So it's like an, an event listing node is five thousand L one X. A full validator node is twenty five thousand L one X. So you can literally get five event listener nodes for one full validator node, but looking at the calculations you get in like you only need two event listener nodes and you you're matching what you get with a full validator node. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I so mean, I'm, like, yeah, I'm looking I can I'm looking yeah, sorry. No, I was just gonna say that yeah, I'll get some clarity on that from Matu and probably like on day three I might be able to give you more information. That's it. Yeah, be because if that's the case for her, I'm gonna be aping into event listener nodes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yep. I just don't know. Like, um, yeah, I don't know if it's gonna be like fixed for ELN and ELNs as well. Yeah. I, yeah, I reckon not because ELNs obviously would depend on like obviously, like one of the things is obviously it's gonna be used with swaps and everything, right? Too. So, I'll have to check. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, see, that's the thing. That's the thing with Kevin's whiteboard, right? Like, there's so much info. Like, even us as a team has so many different interpretations of it. So Kevin's definitely gonna need to do like round threes, because these these were his round twos with all the information. He will definitely need to do that at some point. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. sure. I'm, I'm sure we will. Um, it's just a, yeah. like you said. There's too. Sometimes there's too much information, isn't there? for everybody to kind of consume <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah we'll go I'll be, earlier on i were kind of running i were running through the team as well so we're like on the i uh, on the um about us section and just going through some of the team members um because not everyone not everyone's familiar with everybody i mean i don't know if i don't know for you fur but are you um oh, where's the team now like I obviously I know Kevin, Josh, uh, Matthew, Mike, um, FA, Corey, and I know Pony Clark. She's like the advisor, but and Niraj has been in some spaces with uh, L one with uh, Kevin recently. Uh, but I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. Um, are you? Are you familiar with Norman and um, Ashi, uh, Ashinta? I, no. I can't. Yeah, I'm not. I've not got any. I didn't. I couldn't have any. I, I don't think I've ever spoken to either of them, so I wasn't sure that we were all. I, I, won't, I didn't know if you did. No, no. The first thing I obviously my natural thing is if I want to know about someone, I check if they are on LinkedIn to see what yeah, their yeah. history might be. Yeah, I presume. They, I presume they're going to be on LinkedIn. Um, yeah, yeah I was just running. Be. Yeah, I was just running through the about us uh, partnerships. Um, and again, I mean, if anyone, if anyone's actually listening to, like, if you've got um, a project and you're like, you're looking at potentially uh, building on Layer One X, or you want to know more about Layer One X, they have got a um, program. So they've got like a twenty million dollar initiative where, uh, if you've got any like innovative ideas, what is going to kind of push the boundaries of Layer One X and bring innovation to Layer One X. I did love to like get in touch and yeah, you can, you can join through the dev portal there. So you can submit like your proposals and what have you and yeah, get in touch. And I think anything to do with like um, gaming and DeFi and uh, anything that's innovative, I think they'd be yeah pretty interested because it's all about pushing the boundaries and getting L one X tech behind as many protocols as possible. So always a good thing to and, and given there's a grant as well, it's always nice, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we we were we went kind of down the grant route as well, but um, our our um, game was a little bit too early. Right, like, layer layer one X was early at the time, but our like hot knife was a little bit early to mm -hmm. kind of showcase the tech on on layer one X itself. So, which is a shame, but never, no, it, it, layer one, to be honest, once layer one X has gone full men that live, uh, there's going to be a lot more opportunity anyway, like getting in, getting in at the beginning. The problem is at the beginning, 
the resources are really stretched, aren't they? So they've got to kind of choose wisely where they where they put their resources. But after after mainnet launch, I think those resources are going to be they're going to have a lot more um, availability and to to tell to help out and bring on more developers. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And obviously, like it'll be easier for anyone if they're building on L one X um, in terms of resources that will be available. There'll be plenty more. Uh, once obviously it's on mainnet as well, so it'd be yeah. exciting. Um, we've we've got a very very special guest as well. Like I was talking before about bringing Machu on, um, but we've got a very special guest indeed. This is the queen of Layer One X, and she goes by the name of Alba. <laughs> Thank the you for the, the intro. <laughs> the queen. <laughs> Hello, guys. Queen of L1X, how are you doing, Alba? Oh my god, I look like my I, I, I'm dressed, don't worry. Oh, my I'm fault. <laughs> but it's like <laughs> the, the camera is so too high. Okay. The camera's, per Finally. Finally. camera's perfect. <laughs> I thought, I, and I thought she put a picture up there of her daughter. What? <laughs> Your, your profile. I thought that was a picture of your daughter, not you. No, it was me when That's I was 20. When I was in my class. It's very beautiful, honey. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Listen, I, I, have been, yeah. uh, I have been listening to you since yesterday. Now I am just busy doing stuff and listening to you guys and everything that you have say. Yeah, hey, who is that? A new guy. Queen. A new guy. Yeah. Who's Queen. <laughs> yes, and um, this morning, um, I suddenly wake up at 3 a.m. And then I say, oh, let's see, you know, how's the streaming going? And then I saw the crypto cycle. You were like, just delusional, as you say. And you just finished the streaming at 3 a.m. Yeah. Know, like, well, it has been... Yeah, sleazy it has been a, a lot for you, but yeah, you got yeah. the support of your family. It's, it's yeah, hard. now sleazy slimy was um, in the chat, but I think he was. Uh, I think it was a little bit too much because it had gone. It had kind of gone a little bit quiet, and I think he was panicking at the fact that he was being left on his own. <laughs> so yeah, understandable. And yeah, it's not wife... easy to be, sorry, it's not easy to be on camera for a long, long time. Like you know, like you have been. Uh, there. Yeah, like... yeah. I was literally sat here for eight, eighteen hours, which is, yeah. And I, in, in the end, I, I thought I've got to, I've got to just sleep. So I had like five hours sleep and then come back again. But uh, my wife, yeah, my yeah. wife were like, my wife's like, I'm not happy. She's, like, I've just went, I went down and I, I, I quickly snuck off before and went down. And she's like, I'm not your friend. She said, I'm not your friend. <laughs> and she said, and don't, <laughs> she said, and don't, don't come crawling back when this live stream finished. I still won't be your friend. <laughs> You're a man, crypto psycho. You're a man. Yeah, might, yeah. Might, might might be your friend when when it launches. Yeah, well, when you get yeah. the house when you get the house for her in uh, UK. <laughs> yeah, when I get a when she I get a really house. Yeah, uh, she 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 kind of believes me to a point, but I, I I think I still think she she doesn't. I think there's been I think being an entrepreneur all your life and never having never hit never hitting it big. I think uh, people kind of get disheartened after a bit, but this is different, isn't it? Layer One X is different. Yes, it is. Hundred percent, it's different. It's crazy. Patricia keeps telling me she's like, oh, "You keep talking about it, and this is all I'm doing. I'm diving in here. This is why I'm in a garage." And, and she's like, "You keep talking about it." It's like, "But where are we at?" And I, I only put so many thousands of dollars into this and I'm three times that right now and what i'm telling her within the next year or so this is gonna be crazy to get to a project like l1x at the beginning i mean i can resell and now i can into more on the public sale beautiful yeah i've been um i've not been accumulating as much as i wanted to uh but yeah, it's gonna do big things. It's gonna do big things. Hey, Joe, how are you doing? Crypto muscle. Oh, good, in the house. Sorry, I was late. I had a pop in here, guys. 
make it a party. Yeah. Joe's, yeah. Joe's, Joe's in California. He's um he's gonna keep hopefully keep the keep things going throughout the night. Eventually, when I when I pass out, when I pass out, it looks right. like he's the night rider. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh. yeah. You've got the a... you, you, you've got oh, the light okay. behind you. In, you got the light behind you instead of in front of you. Yeah, the night rider. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I like, I'm like a shadow, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're good. Did you catch it? I got a, go. a, a, a crypt to be in the chat. You want to come? Let me fix the light. Crypto B. Yeah, crypto B. Ga yeah, Gary, Gary as well. Gary, you've got to get up on chat. Gary! Yeah, yeah and I no. Gary. I'm going to even drop out so more people go up. Okay, I'm gonna drop <laughs> out. I'm not no, even gonna to drop off. Gary, Smart. I want to start with you. you can have, there could be ten people up here, so, so Gary, you've got, to, you've got to get into the um, chat. Gary, you know, Gary came. Gary came to the Australian crypto convention with me and Alba, so we had a we had a blast when we were down there, didn't we? Yeah, I I had the opportunity to meet um, Gary there. Very yeah. Nice. Yeah. What's up? Um, is this Gary? Um, is this Gary? Sorry. Gary's not. Gary's um, a community member, but he's not. He's. He's not in the chat. He's in the chat, but he's not up. He's not up. It's nice when. Uh, when do you know when you get like um, Matthew coming up? It's good when he you get you get the uh, little bit of alpha in it talking about what's coming. <laughs> Bit of, bit, of, bit of reassurance as well. Exciting. Yeah, I want to learn about being a validator. I, I plan to be one. And, uh, you only need, listen, be, being a validator now is a lot easier because like before, you, it was like te you needed 10,000 uh, L1X for an event listener. You needed 50,000 for a full validator. But now you, you only need five for an, an event listener and 25 so for a full. Said, for a full. Yeah, that one, right? You what, sorry? He says five for he says five thousand for a node, and he said it was twenty five thousand. It was really fifty thousand for a validator, then twenty five thousand, and now it is. And before it was ten thousand for a node, now it's five thousand, correct? Yeah, yeah. It's just back. it's just half, and I think that was that was down to the community as well. I think was it V? I think a few people were like asking the question: Could it could it be cheaper to let people in? So. And then with yeah, the nodes, it. what is the, uh, the, there's one node that's called an influencer node, right? How does that work? You, you've got, well, you've got an event listener node, which is like a, that's like an Oracle, pretty much. Does the same as what an Oracle does. So that'll, that potentially might go out onto different blockchains. Um, one for, maybe one for each blockchain, I don't know. And then you've got like the full validator nodes. Um, and they the full validator nodes. The, they're the more expensive ones so whichever one you want to go for i don't know all right but can you make can you be a validator and have no same time with the same token and double, dude double you your, can, uh, yeah you can you can have both you can live okay. you can live i mean listen crypt, crypto walker has got about five of each i think okay. alba's got five of each i think fur's got five of each crypto walker is awesome. You're the king <laughs> That's right, yeah. bro. <laughs> guys, yeah, got... sorry, guys, sorry, guys, interrupt, but I have to go. Um, yeah, probably nice. we'll join in a couple of hours. No, it's yeah. all good, Alba. Nice to have you here. Nice to have you. Great, gracious presence. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, yes, I will join me later in the evening. Yeah, yes. no worries. Catch you later. Catch you later. You're welcome. Yeah, see you later. later. Bye, poor bye. Bye, bye. Yes, bye. yeah. So you can have, you can have as many you you, you, you you well you can't have as many as you want. But I think what is what is the limit for? Is it five? Is it five of each? Uh, so I think, I think the limit was two of each. Two. No, I think it was it two. Was, he, uh, he was saying. Was depending on which depending on which stream you go with, the limit changes, right? So for if you're buying with crypto directly, it's two two per wallet oh yeah and and then if you're claiming them it's five so oh jesus yeah 
And CryptoCycle, that's a good question, but I think it's a five overall limit because I don't know if it's spread out between FVN or ELNs, but I'm, yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll, but if I'll anyone's ask. claimed five each, just say in the chat as well. So we'll know. Nah, I don't, I don't have five of each. <laughs> nah, uh, I know. Yeah. I've got a couple of each. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's probably. I think they've done that to keep it more fair, haven't they? Because if yeah, you can you know, buy, if you, you can just come in and, buy, yeah, if you, can, if you can just come in and buy two, but you're not even vested or anything, you're not even like part of the community. You're just coming in buying them, it'd be a bit yeah, unfair, you, wouldn't it? If you could just come in and buy five, you don't want to come in and buy all of them. Yeah, I mean they're in, they're in short supply as it is, aren't they? Let's be honest, there isn't that many of them. Eight hundred of each, eh? Yeah, yeah. He's, not, uh, he's answering questions right here. Yeah. yeah well, yeah. Fur, you, you, you were talking earlier. Oh, sorry. Joe, your audio is so bad. Can't even hear anything. That, can't even really hear anything that, that you're saying. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was saying that. Not to shut the questions. Ah, okay. Kevin did say he didn't want people stacking so many nodes. Yeah, he wanted it to be spread across as many as possible. Yeah. Yeah, to make it fair. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the whole point of being like decentralized, isn't it? You you don't want too many people holding them. And you can't really afford ten, twenty of them, really. Uh but it's, di it's different if you've got like um, if you've got, I don't know. Not if you've got ninety million tokens, it's alright. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just be a node yourself. Yeah. I am. I am the node. Yeah, that that'd just be like that'd just be like Solana, wouldn't it? Kevin is the node. <laughs> like Solana, I think Solana is probably the one of the most decentralized, uh, one of the most centralized blockchains. They can literally switch it on and off as they please, can't they? Um, yeah. So yeah, you, you were asking something. Sorry, CryptoCycle. Yeah, yeah, no, you would. Yeah, you before you dropped off before. Um, you was talking about. Um, was it on the news article or something on the, on the um, L one X app? Like going through some different topics or news news feeds. I think you were talking about. Yeah, so if you go to the L one X blog, um, I don't know if you can access from here. I can see your tab there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it opens, but otherwise. Yeah. yeah, so if you scroll down, keep scrolling down, you'll see a sum up category. So keep going. It should be after announcements, I suppose. Yeah, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was saying that we should probably, you know, deep dive ourselves into um, into like each of them. So peeling like again, one layer at a time. Let's try and understand. Yeah. Shall I go back from like the first one then? Like do it in from... Like deep dive the state of the blockchain interoperability past present and future or... yeah so go show more they might be all uh, show more um they might be older ones more yeah. older ones there too yeah no that's the one yeah so yeah just go just go from that go from oldest to new latest what i'll do i'll go i'll actually make it go full screen because i think it's it's hard to see so i'll make it if i, if I expand it it's probably a little bit better isn't it it would be, yeah. Uh... There we go. Oh, hang on. Yeah, I like it. They've got the little validator node, high reward on the right hand side, just to click clickbait to get you in. state of the blockchain intro is this so is this, these are are these like taken from notes from the actual ama that kevin did that's right yeah these are summaries of the actual amas um that kevin did like the youtube yeah yeah and yeah, yeah and i mean i don't know how if you can broadcast the audio of a video too but i mean if we need to play any sections on youtube we could probably do that as well yeah, uh, yeah. but I, well yeah yeah um wait. no but it's legit second second of april can, people can you hear that oh. one month yeah. to go yeah. shall i just right. shall i just play and this then or do you think we've got 
um, liquidity I mean, trap going through. We can probably go to, through through the sections because each April, section at the end of each section you have like make the coins time stamp though. as well. So if we find and, something interesting, we can just click on that and navigate yeah. to that. So if yeah, I'm seeing the timestamps are actually there in the video. Um, oh, well. No, no, oh, no video, you, you, oh, you can click. Yeah, you can click watch yeah. this section as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So section one, talking about like introducing it. So Kevin's talking about importance of interoperability in the context of L1X and Web3 Tech, highlighting the virtual machines audit by Hashlock. And that audit was pretty good, by the way, wasn't it? Like the, the if you watch the Hashlock video, they were they were super impressed with like the audit and I think L1X itself. Um, Kevin yeah. teases upcoming alpha drops and dives into the infrastructure crosstalk, comparing it to a smartphone in terms of functionality. Yeah. Yeah. What's best to do? This is read through it or play it or. Yeah, just read through it. I mean, if we find something interesting where you know we can't really understand, we can probably uh, listen to that section as well. Yeah. Yeah. So Kevin plans to delve into the history of interoperability, explain the flaw of crosstalk infrastructure, address security aspects, and provide a non-technical overview of the code. Now, I, I don't know if he did that or not. <laughs> uh, does, Kevin, do, do, does Kevin do non-technical? I do not know. I don't know, to be honest. Um, it's I'm just gonna... it's like it's virtually impossible. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. How, how do you talk yeah. about how do you talk about blockchain nodes, virtual machines without being technical? <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, part two was the evolution of interoperability from Bitcoin to smart contract platforms. So <clears throat> discussion about the evolution of interoperability in blockchain tech. In the early phase, interoperability was limited to side chains and issuing assets on the Bitcoin blockchain due to Bitcoin's limitations in throughput, scalability, and usability. And I remember that because at the time, Bitcoin, um, they brought out, uh, what was it called now, this side, the um, the Bitcoin side chain, because um, a lot of people kicking up a fuss about it, weren't they? Because you can do like Bitcoin transactions kind of off, off chain. Um, yeah, it'll, it'll come to me. So this led to the development of phase two where smart contract platforms like Ethereum introduced bridges for transferring data between different blockchains. The bridges accommodate the transfer of tokens between chains based on what, how, and when. However, when were limitations in terms, in terms of conditions and determinism. Concept, some of this even just goes over my head when I'm reading it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, concept we may need like, to watch this section here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Concept like layer zero, XLR networks aim to simplify bridge tr contracts and integrate oracles for better interoperability. Yeah, I think probably watch this one. Yeah. Um, if you click on it, it should take you to a website. I don't know if app has that capability. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't play within it, so I'll probably have to just um, jump to it. So give me a sec. Yeah. Um, Ethereum and I like to call that phase or I think it's widely accepted as well is silver to bitcoins gold and there were two main reasons why at that point in time we had side chains that you know you have Litecoin for example as a side chain to bitcoin and you also had something like blockstream elements where you would issue certain assets um, on the basis of bitcoin for example now there were two main limitations that we see you know that bitcoin had number one is the throughput the transaction throughput limited amount of transactions a second scalability and the second one is the usability so i couldn't program um, assets that uh, were not Bitcoin onto the blockchain. Now, what has this actually done for us, right? This phase actually brought in that showed us that the way to have faster transactions and tap into the security of uh, Bitcoin. And also it showed us that there's a way to issue out assets on the chain, right? And you can always peg it to your main chain. 
but what were the limitations right why did we go to phase 2 which i will go to um when smart contract platforms like ethereum um uh, launched the smart contract data transfer and also the ability to send a message to a contract from another contract that was missing so that's why we had stage 2 of interoperability which is bridges right so today as you see the bridges out there these are still technologies from 2015 2016 the same technology that you see now why did the bridges come in as we know the bridges came in to accommodate the what of the transfer so there are three important pieces of information here the what are you trying to transfer how are you trying to transfer and when are you trying to transfer now the what how or why and the when bridges accommodate the what so if you want to send one token from one chain to the other the bridges can do that right and i'll try to look at it from this analogy over here where at least they got us started with the concept of smart contract interoperability and the focus of that was minting and burning of tokens as we see today right now what came out of this we had ecosystems such as polkadot cosmos ibc that came out of it but these products um, or infrastructures are pretty self contained they don't care about what's out there i think they are trying to be the apple of web3 but it's pretty hard because um you know if you don't open source the ability to connect where the user wants to connect and you're trying to limit the user's freedom then i think the adoption of it will suffer and that's why you know the market has responded accordingly as well but the second important thing that came out of it was the bridge contract templates so we'll get into that but you know there are like heaps of contracts that you got to have now what is the limitation the limitation of this is the how or the why and when is missing so there is no way to actually tell that if i am about the age of 30 then you got to give me x tablets you know bridges will tell you give me the tablets but what about the conditions life is based on conditions and so is technology right so bringing determinism to the what why and when is very important and of course the infamous bridge hacks right we all know the limitations moving to stage 2.1 concepts like layer 0 uh you know xlr network i like to call them the bridge max pro right <laughs> um you got the iphone 14 pro but then you got the iphone 14 max pro right and what the iphone 14 max pro did was it allowed you to view things at a better uh position things you know the screen got bigger you can view things easily um and that's what even if you look at how omni chain networks like layer 0 work um you know they have positioned themselves over there which is the how was complex because the bridge contracts that were produced they are huge in numbers and we'll get to that and you had to integrate oracles right so how is this information for a price of a coin going to fit into the contract upon which the smart contract can mint and burn how do you let that swap complete right so you had to integrate the how and oracles and this is what layer 0 has done so the layer 0 has taken the bridge contracts made it more simple for you to be able to deploy and they have given you a pre built way of integrating an oracle system right it's like the indian curry you know you eat chicken tikka masala you eat, you eat you know chicken kolapuri it's a little different with but the fundamentals are the same right i'm sure jo um, you can relate to that uh, okay the what layer 0 were there and then we had something called as endpoint templates which is instead of a bridge saying that you send me this point or this this information and i will try to tell you what to do with this information layer 0 said why don't you send it to this endpoint template that we have hosted for you and we will send it to where you want to send right so that's that's like 
taking you know taking a plane and kind of thinking that i'll give you the ticket at the at the at, when you check into the plane right um i don't know if your plane is going to go there or not but i'll give you the ticket don't worry about it i'll handle that for you because it's very complicated for you to get a ticket over there go through immigration why don't you just skip all those things and just come to the check in counter straight away but then if these two things were solved right what are the limitations again the how and the when or the why is missing right how why when these three are missing the what is still completed and i like to call zero technologies as cross chain technologies they are not multi chain technologies right and we'll get to what is the difference what's the difference between cross chain and multi chain right now moving on to stage 3 we have x talk right and x talk is the smartphone or the smart chain of interoperability why why build x talk the ability of having the what is already there but how when and why is what x talk brings to the table without restricting you how you want to move assets when you want to move assets and why you want to move assets across this journey an open source ecosystem so instead of you know having polka dots close loop ecosystem our fundamentals were embedded in open source meaning regardless of which chain you want to build upon you should still be able to use cross chain interoperability and that is why we have solana and very soon bitcoin and the very reason these endpoints on layer 0 or the bridges are hard coded they can't interoperate across solana or bitcoin so our infrastructure allows that flexibility uh, you know to be there um if you look at the stages that how we have come here the success of interoperability protocols boils down to every year whatever protocol has launched and they, if there was a success associated to it they have reduced the number of smart contracts involved so if you track out you will see that the smart contracts have come down right and at the same time you can take a bullock cart and all the way from india you can go to spain but why wouldn't you do that because it's not economical it doesn't make sense and that's where interoperability is present today which is even if there are ways on you going multi chain it doesn't make sense to do it because it's costly or expensive it's slow and it's not secure right now let's actually have a look at how does x talk even work right and what have we changed in x talk so much that allows us to go multi chain i'll come to the use cases of it as well we'll do a you know a hardcore version between bridges layer 0 and x talk on the same feature and we will see how different they are from each other while building it and using it but before we go there let's look at the x talk flow and probably i'll invite mohammed to explain this to you okay thank you thank you kevin i'll just share my screen and i'll just walk you through all of it and i will just try to make it so clear so basically just to start with the diagram so basically x talk infrastructure breaks all of the limitations between any network and other so basically you can just freely go from any network to another network through all of this system so now we can just treat all of the local chain networks as one and basically we can just go from anywhere to anywhere and this we could just finalize all of it through this flow so first we have just the listener module so the listener module is nothing but a module which can just listen to any events emitted to any supported local chain so it's it's like i can just listen to anything happens on arbitrum ethereum solana 
so we will just be integrating with bitcoin and all of that so for the listener node or the listener module just listen to whatever smart contracts were just registering in a source registry so for this source registry we are just telling our listener node okay we want to listen to this particular smart contract for this particular event and method that so or even we can we have just extended this features to be able to listen to web to web to uh, uh, website so that we can just have our oracles running we can just do all of this with the listener module itself so we could just register whatever smart contract we are interested in all of our criteria we're just fetching this data from this particular one and now we're just listening okay now we could listen to some particular event now we're just introducing all of this to our daemon now we have first of all we have our network which is basically peer-to-peer -peer network all of this all of these listeners are just connected through one network all of them are there all of them there is intercommunication between all of them which will just introduce the decentralized way of handling everything What's the issue? Hello? Okay, so each each and all of them could listen to the same exact event and method on whatever smart contract we're just interested in. Each one of them will just sign the event and the pro propagate the event signature to the network, which will just basically gossip and distribute and propagate this data to each and to each listener inside the network. After this, we're just storing this piece of code into our database so that we can just okay. We have we have we could listen to this one and it's there. Now by just propagating all of this to all of other peers, so now each peer has a copy of the signature of all of other peers. So one of them will just, all of them will just validate this signature. Okay, is this signature correct? Is this the event correct? And all of this. So by validating all of this, they will just, each one of them will just check if he is a leader or not. Basically, there is a rule which is a leader. Let's just assume we're just 100 people inside the room. It's nonsense that all of us We'll just be doing the same exact thing and we are all of us will just go to the destination chain only one of us will just be elected randomly and this one will just be responsible to carry on all All of the signature of peers and send
to the destination chain. But can we trust this one? No, we will not be trusting it. He is backed randomly, he is carrying on all of our signatures, but he might be malicious. He might just edit anything. So this is where we're just creating this piece of code. You could, all of us could listen, all of us could just sign it. We have propagated everything to, to all of us. Leader could, could get it, and he now should propagate this node, this event to the full node to fulfill this uh, saving or to continue the journey. But we will just check after some period. Okay, is this data safe? Did the leader do his job? Could he finalize all of it? If it's not, okay, we will just literally elect a new leader and we will just reprocess all of this because basically now you are malicious. We have just sent you all of our signatures with all of the data, but you didn't fulfill it. You, you just failed to fulfill whatever you should do. So we will just elect a new one and we will just do all of the process again. About the leader selection, this leader selection is you are being elected randomly and it just keeps changing. We are 100 guys and one of us will just be the leader and this changing will just be time, time based. So basically you will just be leader for just five minutes or just for one event. So each one event you will just, a new one will just be elected or you are just offline. So if you are offline, we will just elect a new one. And how can we know that specific beer is offline? Because basically, all of us are just bringing each other to that, make sure that, okay, we are all here, and the leader is here. There is someone who is responsible to fulfill the transaction, and he is here. And of course, we still don't trust him. So we now have the security. So the security means that, okay, there's no trust. We don't trust each other. We'll just keep checking if you are just doing your work in the right way now we could get the event sorry um, yeah. yeah sorry Mohammed. um no um, i think that's great and i just have a you know i just wanted to bring up one thing while you were explaining about the leader right and um i think one of the situation uh, that we faced right was that when the listener node was connected to external endpoints that connection usually drops like you're trying to listen to you know transactions happening on the chain on the other chains that information drops and Mohammed's ingenious idea was to put a database straight away in the listener node and so that the other chains the, also the reason other interoperability protocols may take time is because they have to go and scan this whole block right again to fetch the details if they if the connection drops but with us we know exactly when to start so that you know this database can serve as that source of truth now maybe Mohammed, if you can tell us like um, you know uh, on the on the on the database side of things like i understand that one of the objective was to store these events but as this stock infrastructure you know gets decentralized what advantages do you think this database can bring to us Okay, so basically, this database can just bring the reliability here, and, and we will just we will not miss anything because basically, if if one of the provider is down, anything has happened, we know exactly where we stopped, when and when we just this provider will just come back, and basically we will we don't even have just only one provider, we just have more than one provider, and if everyone fails, we'll just go to another one, and then we'll just check exactly where did we stop because basically we know now we come online again we know now we stopped at this particular place we'll just check it and we'll just fulfill the transaction from this point and we will not miss anything because of this source of truth which we will just go go to each time we're just having this kind of situations so nothing will just be missed everything will just be fulfilled no event will just be missing out because of this source of truth which we will just be always relying on yep and uh, maybe if you can also tell us a little bit on the importance of the global transaction id because you're getting the data from the global transaction id so i know that it 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 allows us to be more scalable and more secure with the global transaction id 
but if yeah so can you just tell us a little bit more about that okay so basically the global transaction ID, it's nothing but identifier for this whole process which will just allow us to track everything regarding this one so for this global transaction ID, it's just basically um it's like a hash if you're just familiar all of us all of you i believe it's you are familiar with this hash so uh, we're just literally have some identifier for this particular data and and using it we can just track for this particular global transaction where it went to and where we can just recover all of this information regarding us using it we will just be able okay for this global transaction id which basically can just be registering some hero in a game or basically it can just be make a swap between uh, some chain and other or any other things but basically with this one we can just know okay for this particular one we have just for fed we can just track it we have all of the information regarding it at any point we can just fetch any data regarding it and and basically this is this is how we can just maintain and track and fulfill anything for this particular swap or for for this global trans transaction ID and the reason why we're just calling it global transaction ID because basically it's just not single transaction because basically this can just be more than one transaction we can just fulfill so many things with this global transaction ID and this basically will just reflect to the global and the full process for some specific action which can just be more than one transaction inside and basically all of them are just more than one transaction inside and all of this are just labeled under one big global transaction id mm -hmm. yeah thanks for that great great okay good so if 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 you summarize it like it would be the listener node can handle web2 data coming in it can schedule and store it in case of failure and it exactly knows where to send it across so the whole oracle relayer and scheduler component is in itself handled by the xstock infrastructure which is a node yeah. by itself but then delegates the execution to the l1x core uh, i believe yeah exactly 100 yes yeah. so right just after all of this we're just executing and we're just we are just now with the signer module which is basically which will just fulfill whatever we need to do with this particular transaction we could listen to it okay what should we do with it so let's assume that we're just going from l1x to any other thing so we're just literally listening to any events emitted through l1x and we're just signing and executing on any other chain we just assume that uh, L1X, Ethereum, Optimism, Solana, and anything. And each one of them just have its own criteria and its own way of handling this. And all of this is just agnostic. So for this module, we don't, literally, we don't update anything at all. We can just host anything. And this code will just be run smoothly without editing anything. So for example, for... For Ethereum, if we're just talking about Ethereum, we don't use API and we can just introduce the smart contract uh, API file and function names and all of this. No, we're just using the function selector and data types, data, data bytes through it. So, okay, I don't even need to introduce the smart contract, which will just, I go to, no, I will just rely on, okay, the bytes, how can the selected smart contracts understand all of my transactions okay it's just pretty agnostic we can just do this piece of code for anything i can just go with this uh, way and now okay i can fulfill it i don't need to update my code if i want to be able to execute some transaction on any other smart contract in solidity no everything now equal because basically the solidity itself just along the same way of executing the transaction everything is the same and i will just use the, the under the low level way of just going for the fun function selectors and pipes and all of this and we are just doing all of this with all of the 
supported networks. So basically, to support anything, I will not edit any of my X stock node. Basically, I will just do one thing. What do you want to listen? Where do you want to fulfill? What is your over overall? Register all of this to the source registry and let the magic happen. Everything will just be finalized yeah. without doing anything here. Yeah. And I think one of the interesting part about this is that in, you know, um, I was trying to build, I went through layer zero docs as well. And I like to refer it back so that the version 2.1 and version three, the difference, right? I think the community needs to know that, which is in layer zero, what Mohammed just showed us, which is the ability to understand that you uh, can, you know, um, convert any type of information for a specific network, you have to rely on smart contracts that are deployed by layer zero. So in bridges, you would deploy your own contracts and that increases the number of contracts. So in layer zero, your endpoint contract is deployed by them. But it also means that if there is a point of failure in that contract of theirs, your funds are at loss, right? And having the ability to uh, segregate the contract upgrade, uh, upgrading and the ability to understand what you want to do with that contract allows us to scale, allows us to reduce the cost if you want to update the systems. And we all know, you know, our systems are always updated to make sure that it's bug free, introduce new features and also understand what the community actually wants and move it in that direction. Yes. Okay. Great. 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 Okay, good. Thanks for thanks for that, Mohammed. Uh, very helpful. Very helpful. Uh, thank you. Okay, um, I'll share my screen again. All right. Now, before we before we move on to the next one, right on the security side, I just wanted to give you a brief over here, which is I've been speaking to um, you know a few projects over the last um, ten days, and it's very interesting on how they have come back with, you know, a fundamental set of requirements when we talk about, um, you know, interoperability. And we'll see in the use case as well what they have asked for, but it's pretty similar. And, but one question that everyone asked me in the projects that I was speaking to um, was about security, right? And I think, not only the security of the L1X consensus, but the security of XTOC in itself, because it's such an important module. Um, you know, the leader of L1X is XTOC. And that's why I decided that it's better to go through the whole documentation. I won't take more than 15 minutes, I promise. But it's important to understand how are we even going to protect all this information, right? Uh, because we have seen bridge hacks and the only reason like we have been out there for the last few months already and there have been attempts at brute forcing our network but we are still there we're still not broken um and why have we still not broken i think the reason behind that is 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 important okay so bear with me here can you see my document well yes awesome Okay, so we'll make this document available, right? And just going through this document a bit over here, what we have actually done is the XTOC score, right? I would actually move it to the next part. I think that was, yeah. The XTOC score is divided into two different parts. And the first part being your stake score, right? Your stake stake balance, stake age, and locking period. Two, two things to this. The first one is your event listener um, NFT is what is going to let you actually run an XTOC node, right? And at this particular moment, we have, of course, lim limited that to, uh, you know, your node NFTs. But very soon, when people and community members can go and stake their L1X coin into the XTOC node that will also contribute to the stake balance, stake age, and the locking period. 
right the future or the vision over there is to unlock staking of ethereum avalanche bnb all these native coins on the extock infrastructure so that we can have dedicated extock nodes for various networks right but at this stage it's l1x on the other side you have the event scoring models now these algos automatically understand what's important and they will adjust it out but what is included in the event scoring model we have the uptime so how long your nodes have actually been you know um, on we have the event accuracy which is when you are passing the information right have you modified anything in there so if you have modified something in there right even a bit of it that is the event accuracy meaning price of the coin for example when 10 listener nodes are listening to this information and the price of usdc let's say is 0.9999 and the extock node comes back with 0.97 that accuracy is is pretty wide off that's not not acceptable so based on the event accuracy you, you are also measured the processing time what is included in the processing time the moment you receive the information you put it into the mempool and your database and you pass it to the l1x node this three steps are involved in the processing time now how can it differ node to node right two areas one is if you have interfered with the data coming in then we know this processing time is also going to hamper right and the other part is what is the quality of your node so people who have got proper hardware and are using those hardwares for listener nodes we should be rewarded higher and the fourth one is the integration efficiency now when i say integration efficiency this does not mean third parties integrating with extock but this means peer to peer integration of extock and the way this score is set up is even if your your hardware is not proper you have tried to manipulate the event and your run time is low the ability to sync across across the different nodes is also going to hamper and this is where your integration efficiency also will de- decrease so it's a fuzzy model the mathematical model that we will see will go through it pretty quickly because it's similar to um, you know uh, the stake score and event score but the fuzzy model rates you between 0 and 1 on all these variables and, and when you add up these variables is when we have your x stock score so let's go through it okay now i'm not going to start a mathematical class over here please don't uh, worry about that right um <laughs> but um stake balance so in the stake score right you have your balance you have your age now the fuzzy model introduces the concept of a max maximum right and based on the
variables that we provide like what constituents maximum and minimum and average is decided for you and this average is not holistic is comparative so if joe your processing time on the node is one second versus my processing time was 0.7 seconds then these two comparisons form the basis of what should be the best processing time right and that is how we can even understand on how the models can improvise so as you see over here the sb the stake balance is less than equal to the sb Hey, hey, what? Hey, um, what? It also uses the fuzzy, fuzzy model for that and the locking period. So there is no discrepancy in terms of how these scores are calculated. And we wanted to keep it that way for two specific reasons. Number one, we need to collect enough data to understand Um, yeah, I, I guess CryptoCycle's internet's playing up and I, I can't Take see him score. on the call anymore. So, yeah. And the fuzzy yeah. model, he had a holistic scoring model out of it. It is, if your X stock node, let's say is not a part of, you know, the over or yeah, I think he's fully gone offline, but. I mean, yeah, I, I couldn't see him. Yeah, yeah. So, but I guess, yeah, the, from what I've seen from the video so far, I guess, yeah, a couple of things obviously there. I guess we'll wait for CryptoCycle to come back before we can discuss them. But, yeah. but it's clearly evident, like, obviously, one of the things is like layer one X is not restricted by any, any sort of, you know, infrastructure or anything it can basically talk to any blockchains whether it's private it's public um and the event listeners node um as you know muhammad who was the head of x talk he was explaining how the event listener node basically you know at like executes yeah. that like it can listen to any event it can listen to any event and that's hence the name event listener node right so it, it can basically listen to any event it can execute um and it can execute that event um and it doesn't really need you know structures like you know other technologies where they are like layer zero um or things like that where you know when i'm talking like in very basic layman terms as well like obviously I'm not a tech tech guy but yeah it, it doesn't really need the endpoints the endpoints um that uh kevin was mentioning like doesn't really need an endpoint which basically gathers all the information because that could be a point of failure and that's the main thing right like you want to have secure fast efficient transfer which layer one x does it and it all and it's the only technology right now that's able to do so and with with how it's built out but i guess yeah we'll just see when crypto cycle jumps around but it's good that i'm on the call otherwise the stream would have ended because we nearly have like 350 people on on this live stream would have been a shame. Um, uh, you have the admin right, no? I do. Yeah. So I'm I'm the co-host. Um, and yeah, just waiting for the cycle to jump back. We have proposed a weightage model, right? But we are not using that right now. Okay. Um, maybe through governance vote 
once we have the governance set up at L1X, maybe we can vote I'll on that and move forward according to the nodes. But what is the process? Like when you join a node, and this is important because uh, you know, week of March, people will be able to host their full validator nodes. But after that, very soon, your event listener nodes will also come. Now, what is that process? So first of all, let's say, you know, a node comes through. The first thing that we check is, do you have the minimum stake required? Now, the minimum stake required is your node NFT, right? If it is yes, of course, you go ahead. If it is no, you discard it. If you go ahead, these three variables that you see, right? The stake score, event score, and the total X stock score, they are put in a buffer. Meaning, after a certain number of transactions, your score calculation will start. But what that also means is that you cannot be a leader. So only if your X stock score is above a certain threshold and that threshold is also weighted according to the number of active nodes available, you will be selected as a leader for that specific transaction. So as Mohammed went through the whole infrastructure and the leader is randomly selected after a certain uh, epoch or a block time or a block size, at that point in time, the X stock score is put into a buffer once the node joins. Once you pass a certain block time and the other listener nodes look at your score and vote you in, meaning there is a dual process again, which is if your X stock score allows you to go by above a certain threshold you are in, but if the nodes get together, they can change the threshold. But at the same time, they cannot change the threshold by themselves voting. They have to prove themselves to hard that this to be higher. So in this way, if people get together and buy 100 nodes and decide, no, I'm not going to let anyone in, it's not going to work because your proving is based on your capabilities as a listener node. So that is where we see um, decentralization, security, and the ability to scale this because initially you can reduce the time it takes to act as a leader and time. so this movement this algorithm allows us to accommodate those requirements good um i think that was mouthful so um yeah joe what do you think what what uh what's your, what's your view it's just very simple mathematics. I think um, I should be able to comprehend that any moment now. No, right. no, no, it's... Uh, right. Have you won I, that? Yeah, that, no, I think it's really good. And like I said, um, I think before we jump on, for everybody to be able to see from from your perspective as well, and from Muhammad's perspective, from your perspective, how things look from the back end to the front end, you know, it gives a lot of uh, clarity of, you know, it's not just a putting one and two together. There's a lot of stuff that goes into how it operates and what it looks like and, and how the growth needs to happen in order for just just simple things from the front end to work in the back end. So, um, no, as as a really good um, overview of what it what is the uh, structure and process for everything to work and how how does the layering on top of that work? Oh, I think it's excellent. I think you're muted. You're muted, Kevin. I'm happy that you know. Um all this work that we've been doing, right? And the whole reason why we came into this, we can go through that and it strengthens the validation, the community so much needs, right? The Ashlock audit, it can be, it, it can be the behind the scenes of the technology, right? And how each and every, you know, component has been thought of. Um, I think, I think it's important for the community to know. Right. Okay. Hmm. All right, uh, moving on. I think Mohammed is going to show you the code and break it down for you. But um, Mohammed, please make it as less technical as possible. I know you know we are technical guys, but we need to make it as technical, less technical as possible. And you'll see how even the smart contract structure has been thought of from modularity perspective to accommodate upgrades, to accommodate optimizations, and to accommodate the requirement we have today for interoperability. Please, Mohammed. Yeah. On screen. Yeah. 
Okay, so PES is a, a smart contract for the cross-chain swap, which is used by L1X. So it's it's like anyone wants to join L1X and use L1X as infrastructure to fulfill any global transaction. This is a smart contract you will need to, to implement. So it's like user experience from this. So we have this event, which is a swap initiated. This is whatever event you are registering yourself to listen or not to be able to listen to. We have moved all of this customized work from the listener node itself to the smart contract. So now the, the listener node, anything to the listener node is identical. All of the customization, it's in your port for implementing your smart contract. And now here you are just introducing, okay, this is the smart contract I'm interested in. And here you have the same exact smart contract, but with the, because basically this is Ethereum smart contract. This, you are just listening to Ethereum event. So this is how you are just implementing the from trade so that inside the L1X we can just convert and understand whatever you are just sending and be able to work with it. So this is how you are just implementing it. And we're just implementing the from trade so that, okay, I can understand whatever is emitted through uh, Ethereum itself. So now we just go for save event data. So basically for this save event data, it is the function where we are just storing whatever event you are just emitting in your source chain into our smart contract. So for this, for this function, it will always be the same for any smart contract. And because basically it just take vector of bytes. So any event will just be accepted by this one. And this is a global transaction ID associated with your particular transaction. Of course, this, this function can just be called by only one parameter, which is the bridge smart contract. The bridge smart contract, it's nothing but the gateway of, of So what I mean by gateway, we have all of these signatures we collected. We have everything there. So whenever the leader will just collect all of the signatures and then you will just send everything to L1X. There's a smart contract which is responsible for validating two things. Okay, is you are the real le leader or not? Because basically, any node inside our peer to peer network can just propagate, but we will just check if you are the leader or not. This is number one. The number two, it will just check does all of these signatures are valid or not? Not all, of course. It just we have some threshold we'll just check did we met the threshold or not if yes okay let's just go and decode your event we're just decoding your event and we're just map it to one of the events you are just specifying your smart contract will be interacting with so for our swap we have two different events we're just interesting in which is swap initiated and swap fulfilled so we are just getting it and then we're just validating your data because of the security so from the swap perspective if you are just now user want to swap from usdc to uh, any other network and you have agreed on some conversion rate now here is the integration between the oracles which you are having and our code which is the listener for web3 we have our oracle running we're just fetching all of the conversion rates in a decentralized manner, we're just getting the most accurate conversion rate. We have everything stored in our smart contract. This is where we are just fetching the conversion rate to show you as a user. Okay, this is a conversion rate for, for your swap. Do you agree with it? Whenever you confirm, your confirmation is associated with UUID or ID for this conversion rate. And we are just checking, okay. Whenever we are having this event, we're just checking, okay, if this is the source amount and this is the destination amount, is the destination amount is valid or not? And how we can do this? By just making the same exact process. We'll just go for this particular UUID and the checking. If this is the ID for the conversion rate, which is the user agreed on, using this one, we will just get the same exact destination amount or not. If yes, we will just proceed. If not, this means this will just mean that some malicious guy just updated the destination amount to make it 
higher or more or lesser than whatever you sh- you have agreed on by just confirming the swap from your end. When we can just do this, we will just store your event into our event X. And now, by doing this, literally, it's like we have emitted another event from L1X itself. Now the whole process will just go over again from the listener, which will just be listening now to L1X for this particular event, which is emitted from your smart contract. The event has been saved. What should I do now? You should do now fulfill whatever it is by just calling get payload. So for just calling get payload, we're just okay. This is your payload. This is the entry point, which will just be identical to whatever I have just to the node smart contract, which is the gateway. There is another gateway on the other on the other end, which will just collect all of the signatures and the check if all of the signature is valid or not. Then we will just go to the smart contract, which is presented in the source registry to fulfill whatever it is. And how we can just make everything abstracted, agnostic. Literally, we are just building your payload and building your payload. It's nothing but getting the byte code of of the transaction, so that we can just directly go and call the solid smart contract without any API, without anything, but just with okay, who is the sender, who is the recipient, what is the provider, and what is the byte code. You will just provide the bytecode, which will just have everything from the signatures, which will just use to validate and verify everything happened in a decentralized manner. Everything is validated and secure. No one just manipulated anything through all of this. And when this happened, the function call will just be executed on the destination chain, which will just be anything, which will just be registered in your source registry. Once we do so, your global transaction will just be marked with success. Now you could just make the end-to-end flow from the source chain to L1X and from L1X to whatever you want. With this, we can just link between any EVM chains with each other. We can just link Solana. We can just do whatever we want by only implementing this smart contract which will just have the customized need you as a user will just require to finalize everything. Yep. Um, just just so that I summarize this as well. Um, thanks for that moment. It was pretty comprehensive. Um, yeah. So just so I summarize this, right? So initially, think about it this way. You get the event. We went through the whole you know system where the events are actually fetched into the core. Now, what happens over here is the language that L1X understands and what Ethereum understands are two different languages. So there is interoperability happening even there, right? Now, we have to convert this into the language of where we need to go, right? So first we need to understand what is, you know, the first chain trying to tell us. So we do the conversion there. Once we do the conversion, we save that information. So when we save that information at that point in time, we know where we need to go because we have first converted into what L1X understands. Then we convert it and save it where uh, we need to go. At that point in time, what can happen is this. Let's say we are trying to do a swap. And one of the biggest challenges also in swap is verifying the price of the coin. If I receive the price of the coin and the listener nodes, let's say they say, oh, this is great. This is correct. Right. But what happens if the listener or the leader is compromised? So what we have done is in the L1X core, there is a function called decode and check price. So it goes and checks the price of the coin again. Has it moved or not? So if at this point in time, it finds that, okay, the price of the coin that I have received is like, you know, uh, it's not even close to what it should be. It drops the transaction. So there is a check again on that data, whether I should be able to process this or not. Right. After that is done, we know now where this information should go. So we 
sign that in terms of the signer the person who is responsible to for this contract understands okay everything is great now i need to go and send this data to the other chain to evm for example or solana it doesn't matter what mohammed showed initially the conversion of that particular data happens again so when that conversion happens and sends it across the destination chain sends us back a response saying that the transaction has been completed which is the event that event is sent back to the listener node it's sent back to the l1x core and then it is finalized saying that even the destination has received that coin so this whole flow as we did in the swap comparison is one third of the time or even like one fifth of the time compared to bridges right is also because and more security so there are two angles to this if it's faster then does it mean it's less secure no it's even more secure and much faster and the reason is because the whole infrastructure is built from that perspective as well and <laughs> there's a joke behind the bridge contract naming because when we started building the devs had the habit of putting bridge word everywhere Uh, and i was explaining to them i was explaining to them why you need to change this to xstock and don't use bridges but and then i said okay let's use bridges everywhere so that you understand what you are trying to build and once they got into the groove of xstock they wanted to change it back but i didn't let them change it back because now they got to stick with that word throughout their development life that they are trying to replace the bridge but they're still tagging the bridge with uh it's they're still tagging it with uh, with a with a bridge but but that was great moment thanks for that thank you man thank you thank you thanks for that okay i'll just share my screen and let's move on all right now now is the time of the battleground like let's do a battleground testing right let's see you know what it takes to build an application so as i mentioned previously right um when you are trying to do trade between two different countries right and both of the country needs to agree on a specific language now the countries don't agree on a specific language because they speak the language they agree because there is a wider recognition of that language right um even in aviation for example and that is what brings us to this open source world of saying when you have the ability to mix and match this technology with something what would that product look like and we are building this product for one of our client right for the xstock uh, you know uh, l1x client so the product is this what bridges did for hacks right what bridges did for hacks xstock is going to do that for performance and multi chain what i mean by that is even though we've got various hacks going on um in the bridging world we still haven't reached the place where what is a true interoperability product like what does that even mean right and i believe that a true interoperability product is regardless of the network i am on regardless of the rewards or the process i am doing i want to be able to decide where i take my output what that means is if i go and interact with binance and i want my rewards on l1x or ethereum i should be able to do that that is a truly interoperable product even according to the dictionary and where xstock is positioning itself is in a multi chain token environment have your one project token across all the networks but you can still manage the asset peg of that token from one single place one single decentralized place that has not happened before so that's one area where projects can launch their tokens on all the chains peg it with a single asset on any of the chain and manage that from a decentralized network brings in imagine when you build an application like iOS or Android you build both because you don't want to miss out on those users similarly even over here we are having the same problem right 
maybe the guardrails are not that high but there are guardrails which is if i've got an app on ios i'm completely missing out on android users and there is a battle between ios and android guys that in until today i haven't understood why um but what xtalk is doing is it's providing you a tool that if you pass your product through this tool you can go on ios and android at the same time and manage ios and android from here so this is that tano that xtalk is providing so what does a product like having multiple tokens on multiple chains and based on who holds how many tokens We're experiencing some technical issues again, so bear with us. Do you know what it do you know what it is i think it's because we're not using um a layer one x bridge i think that's i think that's the problem we we're trying to we're trying to broadcast um using existing technology and existing technology isn't good enough can you hear me ronak <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. My my network is not good enough. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, we're using we're using existing tech. The 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 quicker yeah. we can get the quicker we can get the quicker that we can get um the layer one X new internet on board, I think the better because yeah, frustrating as hell. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, I agree. Walker, I thought you had a band I thought yeah, I thought you had a bandana on your head then, dude. The dude. Um, no, no, Layer One X doesn't have a bridge, so um, we didn't use that. Yeah, we didn't use. We're not using. That's the thing. We're doing all this tech, and we're not using Layer One X tech. So we're doing all this yeah, clever um, stuff for the stream. All, layer these Twitter, all the Twitter and stuff are having a glitch. They're like, oh, so no one can talk this long. Yeah, well, I've got um, the thing is right. I've got. I'm on Wi-Fi. I'm on. I'm on fiber optic. The the router is in the same room as the computer. Like the router is actually in this room, and it's fiber yeah. optic, and it drops out. So then, problem is when it drops out, I've got to I've got to then connect to mobile, 
But then you get that lag in between where nothing happens. And like now, the YouTube is stopped, has actually stopped playing. You might have oh. to um, see if Elon can drop you a Sky, Sky Link. Yeah, I feel like, um, I feel like, um, oh, God, who's. It's my my mate uses, uh, uses Starlink and he, he gets good reception in a, in a shitty area. Yeah, well, Grover, Grover has Starlink, um, but Grover is dropped out all the time. Oh. Like, the amount of time Grover's dropped out, because we'll, be we'll be in team meetings and stuff and his internet connection will just drop. Mm. Dude, I love your hat. That hat is really good. Is that embroidered? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, to the web two world. That's pro. That's embroidered, yeah. Oh, or is it wow. a sticker? No, there's no stickers. That's nice. How much you get? How much for that? Um, can't remember. Not too much. Have you printed that? Have you printed that? Dog. Yeah. Sorry, you're some... Hey, could you did you catch that? I don't know if it's my internet connection or Ronax internet connection. I couldn't hear anything he said. <laughs> yeah, I think I think between, between Ronak, me, um I think I think uh Fer needs to like take master control of the stream and everything. Fer needs to... Mine's been pretty good too. Yeah. Honestly, yeah, I mean, I mean you're in you, your internet over in um over east must be way better than western australian internet it's absolutely shocking over here and up in the hills is yeah. all right yeah, yeah i can I've, I've i literally... can run the video and share the screen if you want me to yeah well, it might be an idea it might be an idea because i've got your internet has been online 24 your internet doesn't drop out no you have to, luckily you might have, well you might have to haven't it now yeah, do, do you never drop out on your internet? Have you got like a hardwired, hardwired connection as well, or? It's uh, it's fiber to the premises, so um, um, like I've got an NBN hundred. I mean, it's not too much, but it's good enough. Yeah, well, yeah, ours is the same. So our internet is fiber to the fiber to the home, so fiber optic goes straight into the garage, yeah. and then I've got a wired connection going to this room, and I've got a router in this room from the wired connection direct well it's not it's not fiber to though it's it's a cat five cable from the garage to to this room and then yeah does my head in no matter what i do i mean i'm in the best room in the house for the wi-fi and yeah so so now i've got to jump across to the um i've got to jump across to my mobile but then mo mobiles aren't always reliable either because i don't i don't have 5g it's not 5g it's only 4g yeah 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 get it yeah, I mean, if you want to jump to that video, it's actually it's at um, it's at a minute, a minute and three second, a minute, one minute in three. I think that's where it that's yeah, where it was up one, to. One hour and three minutes. Yeah. I'll yeah. Sorry, on one it. hour and three. It's opening it right now. Yeah, I mean, I've not even got anywhere. I don't, I've not even left the room because I don't trust. I don't trust it going off. But then I will because I'm listening to the problem is because I'm listening to the stream and when you. Sorry, I'm listening to the YouTube video and it's coming through the stream, but YouTube just buffers. Like it, it, you, you have a certain buffer, don't you? So you don't. Re I didn't realize it had gone off until it started buffering. I'm like, damn. Yeah, yeah. How do you how do you share audio? Like, does it give you an option to share audio of the thing as well? Um, it's it's actually set up. It should be set up to just share audio. I think. Yeah. It's, it's only like internal audio so it should it should just share i think there's an option somewhere when you actually go to share and it might ask you if you want to share audio or not yeah um just trying to match the time with you yeah one hour three minutes yeah i got it yeah i'll tell you when it plays anyway and because you just oh, need yeah. to share the add the source i think also share the, tab audio yeah i got it yeah does this does this like um work any different to Streamyard? is it or is it pretty much identical no no i think it's pretty pretty similar like they're all, they're both competitors um i don't see many differences there but i do think 
like maybe in terms of overlays, you know how you're doing overlays and stuff. I think Streamlabs yeah. Uh, yeah, probably has more options. But I mean, I haven't played around with this because it's a live live stream as well. Yeah. But, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You can't really but, you can't really play about too much, can you? No, no, I can't. Yeah. But but I think Streamlabs probably has more overlays and those kind of options. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know as well. Like when I when because this there was a free version, but you can't you you can't do much with a free version. You're limited. So I bought I bought the um, the basic pack. And it's one of them though. The more you pay, the more the more they give you. So you they kind of they don't they give you enough to get by, but then they don't give you enough. Like you can have more than one admin on the other one. You can you can add a lot of extra features to it. Yeah. How many uh, hours have we knocked off now, Crypto Soccer? Um, quite a few. Not counting. So is this you now, far? Yeah, that's me. Let's see. Which is thirty plus hours. If I've got an app on iOS, I'm completely okay. missing out on Android users. And there is a battle between iOS. Can you guys hear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Perfect. And Android guys, that. What yeah, Xtalk yeah. is doing is it's providing you a tool that if you pass your product through this tool, you can go on iOS and Android at the same time and manage iOS and Android from here. So this is that tunnel that Xtalk is providing. So what does a product like having multiple tokens on multiple chains and based on who holds how many tokens, let's reward them with an NFT look like, right? So if we compare it to bridges, if you can see my screen, right? It doesn't even fit into my screen. Okay. Uh, if you compare the bridges, the number of contracts you require, I'm not even exaggerating. Like this is the minimal contracts you will require. And if you have more than this, good luck. Um, these are the number of contracts you require on every chain to do what I just said. And I was trying to build the flow of it and I got fed up. I just couldn't keep up. Right. So, and we'll go through it because you'll see the same contracts on layer zero and you'll see minimal contracts on L1X. So whatever you learn over here, it's going to soft onboard you onto the other uh, you know, uh, technologies as well. Chain link contract. So the chain link contract will allow you to fetch the price. Now, of course, you don't need to host your own contract, but well, I mean, if you want the ability of your own information to be sent to the chain, you have to host your own chain link node or your own chain link contract to do that. And that's expensive. It's not cheap. Your adapter contract. What Mohammed showed you, the conversion of L1X to EVM conversion that was happening in the extra contract. This is the contract that does just that. It only does that conversion. A relayer contract. After the conversion, now what to do, right? This is what the relayer does. So the get payload to sign, that is what the relayer does over there. The logic. We have the business logic entry point into the same contract, right? And based on that, this logic contract needs to understand how much do I need to mint? How much do I need to burn? Right now, while this process happens, these are cross contract calls, multi hopping one another fungible token contract. So, okay, now let's go and mint the fungible token contract in the fungible token uh, function. If the fungible token contract owner has X number, you go back and then you come back and mint the NFT contract saying that, okay, this person has that many contracts because if you integrate the fungible token and non fungible token together, you are not segregating your business logic and that can be very dangerous. And these are one of the reasons that bridges hack have happened because when people have tried to optimize the bridge, they have put one code with other. And that is where hacks have taken place. Now, what is this registry contract? If I have the same token on multiple different networks, then each and every network needs to know the supply of this token. 
right how do i know that if i hold 10 on avalanche 10 on l1x 10 on ethereum i own 30 now if 30 was the threshold to give me an, an nft everyone needs to know this right so this is that contract the nft token registry contract if i have minted an nft for you i should not do it again how do i know that business logic that is in the nft registry contract and then the signer contract who is going to sign this like who is going to actually issue out or change things uh you know in the infrastructure right who is the administrator of these contracts so these are the number of contracts that you would have to build on each and every chain so if you do one transaction each and every network has to update itself with the registry and the and the signer basically being able to sign on any of these networks so the havoc that is created here they have pushed the boundary of the bridge but we are not breaking that because of the complexity level and how costly it would get i'm not even joking one transaction would cost you 100 dollars if ethereum is involved you know if you have to go through all the networks so it's not economical now let's compare it with layer 0 so what has layer 0 done right so you saw the oracle chainlink contract the adapter and relayer contract layer 0 has bundled them up into one contract and they have this one contract deployed on each and every chain right and what they have said is let's use a shared resource why are you deploying your own contracts right let's let's share it together and you trust me that my node that relayer is going to be is going to send the right information to this contract that i own right is amazing uh so they have eradicated three contracts by creating centralization right so there is a point of centralization here there is a point of one contract failure if this one contract fails that's it there is no entry point of course the logic contract fungible token contract nft contract the other contracts all remain the same so what they have effectively done is they have reduced the number of contracts integrated what ccip does and given you two bridge templates right i went through the layer zero documentation they have done a great job at their documentation it's 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 done very well and i think that is one of the reasons of adoption of layer zero and we are upgrading our documentation with xstock so we we have learned one thing where our limitation is the complexity we are getting rid of each and every different uh you know documents in there and we are going to have a simpler documentation doing only two things multi chain token minting multi chain asset management with xstock and l1x so if you want your project to have multiple areas of tokens and you want to manage that you can do it with l1x of course the cross chain that is the target of the documentation in the focus at the background we'll have all these complex documents if anybody wants to go and you know build their own contracts they can still do it right but what we are going to do is we are going to use this strategy as the anchor because when i was on a call with projects each and every one of them asked me one single thing which is can i take my token and put it multi chain i want to access liquidity and users from there and it got me thinking why are we not doing this you know so we are upgrading the documentation to focus on that and the anchor we are going to hit hard with that one single use case now what does that look like on layer 1x with xstock right we saw the number of contracts over here and again you'll have to deploy all these contracts again on all these chains right it's still expensive that's why it's never been done before using layer 0 but how does that look like on l1x that is what it looks like on l1x you only and only need to have your token contract on the other chains that's it so you don't need signer contract you don't need your registry contracts on all the chains you don't need your you know oracle contract you don't need your relayer contract you don't need adapter contracts um so when we reduce the number of contracts to asset contract token contract registry contract 
what's going to happen here is the area for this is what x talk and l1x provides and when you go and mint any token on any of these chains automatically our registry contract understands that so as a player for example let's take the deagle apps use case as a player i can be on binance network and i can connect to the binance network and know how many tokens i have right or or ethereum network play the game and then decide where do i want my nft i want it on ethereum no problem you go and mint the nft on ethereum the moment that happens the xstock registry updates itself how can the xstock registry update itself why hasn't anyone else done this you need a vm you need a consensus to do this so if you have your own vm and your own consensus your job becomes to onboard projects for you our job is to onboard projects on web3 extend the functionality of projects on web3 that is where we are focused upon so maybe people could do it but it has not happened and that's where xstock is positioning itself to go multi chain asset issuance and management from one single place and the cost we have seen in the previous ams is next to nothing like 1 cent you know 1 tenth of a cent for a for a transaction that would cost you of course you pay 3 dollars 10 dollars whatever there you know 50 cents here 50 cents plus let's say you know 1 cent 51 cents you would still end up paying 25 30 dollars here and you don't even know what you need to change are we here i wouldn't even advise to go and fill this flow right um so that's where we stand at this particular stage so to summarize the asset contract on traditional bridges yes it has to be on all the chains layer 0 yes it has to be on all the chains with x stock again if you have an nft and let's say the user just wants to understand like i want my nft on ethereum but i don't want you to mint it for me yet i just want you to recognize that i own this nft so you can mint that nft on l1x and on demand take that nft there only if you want to sell it right why just keep minting nfts for the sake of it you can still tap into l1x and understand you still have your nft relayer yes on all the chains they also have relayers on all the chains we don't need a relayer contract we don't have such thing adapter or bridge contract yes you don't need it on layer 0 we also do not need it and the reason you don't need an adapter or bridge contract is because they have this one endpoint contract and their networking infrastructure that allows you to do that the logic contract yes bridges on all the chains layer 0 yes you need it on all the chains with layer 1x only on one chain if you do it with layer 1x great right registry contract the ability to keep a track on who owns my assets across all the networks of course on bridges all of them layer 0 all of them with l1x or x stock only on one chain so you can select l1x for that signer contract yeah of course on all the chains all the chains only on one chain which basically if you select l1x it reduces the complexity of building and it's a seamless way of you know this ecosystem that we have around x stock and Um, you know uh, the L1X infrastructure. Are we going to open up XTalk for other protocols? Maybe, maybe in the future, right? Like if Layer One X was not involved at all, and XTalk was just to be used as an independent module, maybe we may open it up, right? But at this stage, our focus is multi-chain asset issuance and management with XTalk. and l1x yes i think it's time to take some questions yes yeah, so if you do have questions guys throw them in the in the comments so we can see them come through um i i realize there's a a lot to digest there as well um, but i think that it's excellent from yeah once again front end to be able to see um from from almost a layman's point of view like Okay, what are the differences between one, between two, between three? 
Like how does this work specifically in the back end? How does this work in the back end? What are the differences and what are some of the nuances that go with it? So like just I think from the front end perspective, you know, we just look at it and go, oh, you know, coin goes here. Somehow, hopefully it ends up over there. That's it. And you don't think much about the rest of it. It's sort of like put it in, pray it turns up. Sometimes it turns up, sometimes it doesn't. Um, so to, to see the difference in how that works, I think is um, is excellent as well. Yeah, yeah. And again, you know, um, I, I'm of the believer that the, fr- the front end person who is the actual user of the technology doesn't need to know how the technology works. But as a community member, and we are at the infancy of interoperability even today, like we are still trying to clarify what is an interoperable application, right? And this excites me because once this adoption kicks in terms of how this can be leveraged with, for example, one use case of this is you have, let's say your stable coins or crypto scattered across, right? Based on your crypto scattered across, you can get a credit score on the chain on which you can get a loan. How, how are you going to do that? How is the credit score going to keep up with all these contracts? Asset issuance and management. The management of it is the credit scoring, right? So I could go on and on about the use cases, but as a community member, I think because it's such a, you know, early stage of interoperability and no one knows where this is going to go. The adoption of it is crazy based on the last 10 calls like I've had with, you know, and I see the actual use case. It makes me happy that we have, like what I thought of initially, the problems, and I see today, that's pro- those problems still exist. And we are now we have a technology to actually solve it. 100%, yeah, massive. And like I said, every time you get on a call, it's sort of like seeing seeing use case connect. I mean, that's that's the real magic. Uh, we do have some questions. Um, so uh, just one, and these are going to be a bit all over the place, up and down, but that's okay, we'll just roll with it. Uh, when will we be able to host nodes? Next month. I mean, sorry, uh, end of this month. Yeah. Excellent. So yeah, we are in March now. So just oh well, is that is everybody time Post zone March. in March already, or is there some still living in February? Right. Should be should be mostly March. Anyway, so, so end, end, end of, of March. March. End of March. Uh, next one. When can we try making a token contract and using multi-chain minting? You know, um, what is very interesting is. Even if you try to do it right now through the Git book, you can do it, but we are going to make it much more simpler for you. We are building an FT NFT builder in l1xapp.com where you go and put in the name token, select the networks and mint. The first version of it is going to have only on L1X, but later on you can select the networks and deploy and manage it using a front end. Um, that's what we are doing. But for the developers wanting to integrate in their application, I think Mohammed and I are pushing the documentation. Last night we were awake the whole night uh, building that out because the moment I realized this uh, was day before yesterday. Yesterday and today we are only upgrading the documentation for this purpose. So probably next 10 days. I think every DGEN skin have a little bit of a prickle there knowing that. I, yeah, yeah. So that, that's very cool. Um, traditional loan on chain question mark. I'm, I'm not sure what the context of like is there more to that um question i i guess do do you have any further information about the traditional loans on chain that we can Um, maybe share there i i think i think the question revolves around like maybe credit score that currently applies or the traditional way of getting a loan um you know uh, but i i don't know i mean uh you know we've got some great protocols like Aave, uh, you know, doing lending and borrowing, uh, you know, and the ability of integrating your assets and borrowing, because they have to understand that you even own these assets across the other chains, right? And then lend you back, uh, you know, let you let you borrow. I think those are some great use cases, but I don't know exactly how the loan algorithm would be defined. And we don't want to do that. Maybe a third party who wants to leverage this can, if Aave is listening to this, um, you know, I'll provide free consulting. Um, happy to work together on something like this. That's it. So if anybody knows anybody from Arve, get the call out. Um, 
I, I know this is a big question around as well. Uh, can we get a third party to host our node um, for us? Um, you know, I I didn't want to drop it in. Um, I wanted to keep it in for the next AMA, but the APRs on the nodes that we currently have are like ridiculously high initially because I want to secure the network. Like last time when I was demonstrating, I couldn't transfer the token because our network was jammed. And I went back and I reworked the tokenomics on that reward. We are pumping up the rewards on the nodes in a way that if I had to remove coins from my personal portfolio and do it, I'm doing that. Uh, but I want more nodes. So only if it kind of doesn't go by, then we can have it. But um, there are people who will be interested to host our own nodes. You know, it can be providers, it can be someone else, but we'll make it seamless for you to host your node. Fantastic. Uh, I, I, um, I enjoy Esquire's comments, which is just straight to the point. Can we have more alpha, please? Uh, well, let's go through the questions first. Let's keep it at the end. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one from Chaos. Uh, is there more marketing happening in the community doesn't know about? Um, so things oh. in the back end, obviously things that are coming up. I think, you know, I am super proud of our operations and marketing team. Like I couldn't be more proud because um, you have to understand one component, which is you're taking the most complex tech, one of the most complex tech in the world and Web3 dumping it down and making it consumable for our amazing community members and for the other people on a ongoing basis. So every day as developers, we learn something about new about it. It's like, wow, I didn't even know about this feature. Right. And they are doing a great job. The KOLs, the, um, I won't give out something. There is something that is going on behind the scenes. I think, uh, Matthew FA, Cody um, and Sandra, uh, you know, probably would be great to say that, but, uh, but wait for it. Like they are pushing it through. Yeah. Things, things coming guys, hold tight. Um, I think that that's most of the questions I can see unless anybody can sneak a few in, um, in the short term, but that's, uh, that brings us to the next bit, I guess. What's what, what what's the, uh, what's the good bit? <laughs> Uh, well, I, I think I think Joe, uh, you're more uh, curious than the community on the app. Oh, oh no! It's, hang on, hang on, hang on! Can't jump to the party yet. Uh, will there not be a Will there not be a conflict with the CEX parties if we start hosting nodes until the end of the month? One of the reasons TG was delayed was because of two little nodes. Okay, so uh, if a game. Okay, so that's if a game, will there be a conflict with CX parties if we start hosting nodes until one, one of the reasons? Yeah, uh, no, no, no. Because, um, yes, the idea was that, you know, uh, you have to have X number of nodes, but by, by the time we get to the third week and we start hosting these nodes, the number of nodes are based on the NFT subscribed for it and the traffic incoming. So as long as we can prove that our network can hold up is the, is what, what we are after. And we will be able to prove that. Excellent. I'm just going to read this next one um, verbatim. If a game built on Polygon issues an NFT on BSC, can I keep my wallet MetaMask on BSC chain where my NFT is and still enter the game on Polygon? Meaning whatever network the NFT is issued on, I can stay on that network and enter the game even if the game is not built on that chain. Yeah, you can play from any network, take your rewards to any network and based on the rewards, be issued out assets such as NFTs on any network. So you don't have to switch your endpoint in order to do that. Multi-chain, yeah. Uh, <laughs> this comment may be like just heavy breathing. That's yeah, anyway. Um, what are, what are the physical requirements for hosting a node? Um, I think we have already mentioned this. Um, it's it's close to, I can't get the numbers off my head, but you know, 512 gigs or one terabyte. I think Ethereum is only like what, one terabyte or something like that at the max or, or less than that. I think few hundred GBs. Um, you know, as long as you have a terabyte, um, you've got, let's say, 
a processor clocked at at least 2.7 gigahertz um you know equivalent to let's say seven cores or eight cores um you should be fine like we are running the nodes on our local systems as well uh and will off chain be implemented at mainnet Will off chain be implemented and mean it? What is off chain? I don't, I don't understand. Yeah, PK, if we get clarity on that, um, we'll skip to the next one. With the testing on the V2, once you use the username and connect it to your data, you can't disconnect and sell it later on. Question mark. Okay, with the testing on V2, once you use the username and connect it to your data, you can't, you can't, you disconnect it and sell it later on. Well, of course, um, if you uninstall the application, you can disconnect it, but you still own, own that data and you can sell that data later on. But at this particular stage, we only have like profile um, information uh, out there. Later on, there will be like pictures and you know so forth with other applications coming. That technology is in beta stage. Uh, you know, we have kept it over there because our focus right now is on the X talk infrastructure and for DeFi and gaming. Yeah, I think for just for clarity on that one, I think people are uh, were wondering if for the testing, if you attach your username to that profile and testing, would you be able to then sell that username, or is it fixed to you permanently? No, then, no. Um, if you if you if you connect your username, it's connected to you. Um, you won't be able to sell your username because then that data comes along with the name. But anyways, but as I say that, we do. Uh, have a feature in progress where you can migrate your data to another username. So if, when that happens, you'll be able to detach the single username and sell it across. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Um, I, I understand PK's question from before. Um, not, not asking off chain implementation on ramp and off ramp is, is what the question is. Will on ramp off ramp be uh, implemented at mainnet? Um, Mike is working on that right now. And I had a discussion with him today. Um, we were on a, a client meeting today morning, early morning. So he did mention that he's discussing with a few, uh, you know, uh, guys to bring them on. He's in the final stages. That's what he said. I'll probably when he comes on next time, it would be good to ask him. Perfect. Uh, and of course the last question needs to be something spectacular. When can we see the team in the Power Ranger suits? Did somebody actually the say moment, that in the office? Are they actually there? Um, the the moment we hit um, a market cap of ten billion dollars, <laughs> we will all wear Power Ranger suit and dance in front of the office. And I hope it happens soon. I might ask you to fly to Perth. Is there another one? Surely there's another one. Fantastic. Uh, Mike hasn't taken it off since he got it. That's fair. Yeah, I, I believe that. I think Mike is permanently living in his. Um, <laughs> yeah, excellent. I think that's that's mostly the questions that I can see. There's none from the scroll up. Um, that that must mean okay. it must be it must be time for Alpha. It must be. All right. So let's stop taking in any questions now. We'll keep it for the next. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, the next Alpha. So we've been discussing internally and we looked at all the arrangements we had to make um, and a release date has been set for TGE. Um, and this time we are very confident where we are already at a stage in a way with the current things in progress. They will finish much before the TGE happens. So we confident that the TG is coming and I was thinking that probably pause it there because I mean it's towards the end we all, all know about the alpha anyway so uh, you're on mute Mark you did a yeah. material there yeah no should be good now yeah um uh, yeah, I'm just changing the layout. Yeah, there you go. You're even more handsome in full screen, Far. <laughs> I'm, uh, loving, I'm, yeah. I'm, lo I'm loving that chiseled beard as well. Like, you it, can, te can tell there's a lot of grooming going there, going on there. 
<laughs> tried my best this morning. I was like, you know, I'm going on camera, so probably should do that. But <laughs> <laughs> cheers, mate. Yeah. That's all good. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess a couple of things, right? Picked picked up. And we'll probably go through them one by one, but I guess the main the main highlights were obviously the what Kevin covered and did it in a lot of depth was around interoperability. Obviously, how is it different to he gave examples of Polkadot mainly and layer zero? Yeah. Uh, there's also the security and scalability, which is which is the major thing, right? Like it's not just about interoperability because the bridges are somewhat doing that, but it's also like where L1X like really shines through. And then node scoring, obviously, how basically the nodes are scored based on different factors. And there was one point that we probably like delve into much deeper is like around obviously he mentioned around ELNs, right? Like how even what this like the hardware you're running on also can determine obviously based on different factors, like what your rewards will be. Um, and then the fifth one was the multi-chain asset issuance. So all very, all very um, unique points. But I guess let's just come back to the first one, which is the interoperability. And I guess from what I understood on that, and and it's a free discussion, right? Like we're just trying to decode Kevin's complex Kevin board or his his mind algorithms into something and trying to simplify it. And we may not be correct, but we're trying to get like more context, like for ourselves, also for whoever is listening. Um, so Polka dot example, like you know, where here Kevin mentioned a good thing, like they they are already offering interoperability, but I guess the main difference lies is where they only support chains that that fall like within the realm of you know Polka ch chains infrastructure. So it's. I guess if we take uh, the immediate example I can think of from real world is, you know, that um, in terms of countries, because Kevin was using that analogy all the way through as well, where you have the EU zone, you have the Commonwealth, and you have, you know, all different sorts of um, federations or territories or groups uh, that you can put countries within. But I mean, EU obviously functions in itself, but if someone who is not who is known EU comes in, there are different rules for that. Um, and they treat them differently. So I guess that would be a good example to bring over here where if um, like we're talking about L1X, you know, um, can talk to EVM, known EVM. For L1X, like everything's agnostic, it's chain agnostic, right? Like it can speak to anyone. Um, but would that be a correct way to put it? Yeah, I mean, you were talking about we um, were talking about cross chain money and then multi chain and actually distinguishing the difference between the two because like interoperability, as you said, it's it's there's a fine line. Like, what is interoperability? Because like you were talking, it was, I mean, in in, a rea it, it, in reality, like layer zero, XLR using bridges, it's interoperable. It's just not the best way of doing it. And when you were talking about like cross chain. And then multi-chain and distinguishing that layer one X is multi-chain and cross-chain is kind of maybe using bridges, maybe using XLR. Um, yeah, I do think I don't know. Like, it's hard because a lot of people don't understand the tech behind any of it, so they don't really they don't really grasp how significant what it is layer one X is doing. It's trying to trying to get that point across try, to get people to understand what layer one X actually is and what are the benefits. I think to a layman person doesn't always make sense does it you, you're basically talking mm. above the pay grade and it's it's dumb it's dumbing it down to a point where um like using countries for example it's the analogy is what people can kind of grasp and oh ah, yeah i know what you mean now because you i think you've got to bring it down to a completely basic level so you can you can give real world examples that are nothing to do with crypto nothing to do with blockchain just real world examples that then they can think, oh yeah i understand what you mean i don't understand the tech but they understand the analogy, and I think that's the that's the key point in it. You've got to dumb it down and just give them really simple simple analogies, and then from there, then they can then they can grasp it without without even having to go through any of the technical jargon. 
Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, that's a that's a very good point that you brought up about multi-chain and cross-chain. And and I, I I guess one of the things, obviously, um, another thing that Kevin touched on was the event listener module, right? Like, like you were just saying, how how does it actually do it? Um, and and I guess it's event listener, like obviously the name speaks for itself, right? Like it's listening to events, essentially. Yeah. But what it essentially does it it can listen to any type of event. So Muhammad there in there said that it's event agnostic, right? Like it doesn't matter if the event is coming from like Ethereum, if it's coming from Solana, or even if it's coming from Bitcoin, right? Like we mentioned, like Layer One X is soon gonna add um, like support for Bitcoin as well. I mean, the all the entire thing is is that like since it's not relaying on, I guess multiple contracts like they also talked about multiple contracts like like there's a lot of translations happening within bridges bridges like they're trying to translate too many things so it's like i think kevin gave the example of you know one country who wants to speak to country c but they're trying to speak through country b is like where you know the problem happens and if that chain of command br breaks that's where you know the efficiency obviously would drop and even the reliability as well um of of the communication so i guess that's where you know having that single source of truth which is the event listener module that can store all the information um and even if there's a downtime would still mean that the destination would still receive when obviously it comes back up the destination will still receive the right amount that it was supposed to receive yeah yeah yeah, I think the um, I think the event listener nodes when you when you start realizing that they're going to be that them uh, I think in, in the beginning like the the full validator nodes were being pushed as like this like platinum kind of node and then the event listener node was something down here that wasn't really that significant and maybe it wasn't explained too well or the significance wasn't there wasn't there like a few months ago but I think now when you start looking at the the event listener nodes they're they're a key role in everything because they're they're the ones that are going to be going out pulling data from all these connected chains and the thing is the more the more the more chains layer one x connect to the more work these event listener nodes have got to do so i think uh, opportunity wise i think i think people are going to be looking at these event listener nodes and be like yeah these are maybe i need more of these or maybe i want to get get more of these because i think as it as the network gets busier these event listener nodes are going to be doing more and more and Kevin, Kevin actually said, though, an interesting point that he said, um, there's 800 ELNs and there's 800 FVNs, but he, he can't imagine the 800 ELNs ever needing any more. But he said the, the FVNs, they could be possibly increased in the future, depending on the like the, the network. So he was kind of saying that the eight ELNs, might, there's probably no need to increase them. Um, so that's that's bullish because if you've got an eln and there's only ever going to be 800 and more chains keep getting added and more the network effect happens and all these transactions are happening just think how busy the elns are going to be they're going to be they're going to be doing so many transactions and going to be listening to so many different events yeah yeah um you you made, you made a really good point there because i mean with ELNs, like uh cody is here as well hey cody how are you Hey, Corey. hey guys can you hear me okay can hear you perfect sweet sweet have you, a, Welcome. have you got a new hat on is that just one of many oh uh, it's one of the newer ones yeah for sure so nice. that logo kind of looks familiar for yeah, sure yeah. Right? Ah, i hey. like it my friend <laughs> that's awesome a bit nice. of a hat going on maybe it's a one x with a hat i like it I like it. Let me see if I can grab my other one. This is another one of my favorite ones. Hold on. We've just we've just been listening to um, one of Kevin's uh, deep dives, Corey. Um, you're right on the whiteboard and you're talking talking to Mohammed. That's one of your your other apps. Yeah, this one's like actually one of my favorite ones. So I'm kind of holding on to that one, but. Yeah, women women collect shoes Cody Cody collects hats no I I got my l1x shoes too you ready 
nowhere. <laughs> I'm, there's some alpha for you guys. What, we're, uh, getting L, we're, get, we're getting L1X sneakers. <laughs> well, I've got L1X sneakers of, uh, you know, a couple of, uh, I've got a couple of friends that are uh, artists, so I'm going to have them do a whole L1X shoe thing. Who knows? Nice. It might be a giveaway. It might go on my shelf. Who knows? Yeah, like like the uh, first edition Air Jordans, they'll be invaluable. They'll just be up there. Yep, yep. So when they make the uh, the Netflix uh, documentary thing, hopefully that'll make it into it, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're, we're already Definitely. getting requests in the chat now. I think you're already getting what? Said he's like getting requests for for the sneakers. <laughs> oh geez do you know i was you know hoping what? everybody was do you asleep. know what though <laughs> well, no, no. i mean I, i'm part of like there's a an nf well there's loads of nft communities but one of them is called a akcb and they did the the, the, the uh, digital obviously the nfts but then they wanted to give pete give something back to the to the holders so anyone that hold, held an nft um they they give you uh, the opportunity to get a, phys a physical good and they had they had like hats not they didn't have snickers but they had hats and t-shirts and hoodies and they've got like the nfc do you know the, the the actual chips in the so you can verify them on the blockchain so when you when you get it you get the you get the digital good so you get the you get the nft of it but you also get the physical asset with it as well so you can verify it on the blockchain so i think that's probably going to be the future of authenticity to, to be honest i reckon all clothing brands will be going down that route so you can't fake anything 100 percent, 100 percent. um yeah i uh i used to work for a uh major e-commerce company i won't drop names but uh i think you can pretty much <laughs> you can probably narrow it down to three um but uh yeah fake items were a big thing for us that's for sure always trying yeah. to combat that so yeah i might i might know somebody that was once selling christian louboutins on ebay and they weren't actually christian louboutins <laughs> i don't know who that person was but yeah uh, it didn't last for long e ebay ebay kind of got on top of it pretty quickly yeah yeah they're pretty good at stuff like that that's for sure yeah yeah but yeah, yeah. No, i was showing something was it a shirt with the hashtag on. Who was showing it? Uh, Crypto Walker. Crypto Walker. It was all over it. Yeah. yeah, he's he's his name fits him. He's walking all over. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, I, I went back this little shirt for the. Um, if it goes good, I've got to wear it around the misses. We've got the uh, the thing on it. Oh yeah. yeah. Walker then, is is basically his own little merchandise store. <laughs> I love it. I told, you, I told you so. Yeah. His own little much so. No, that's awesome. That's way cool. But um I, I stuffed up a little bit. I bought I bought the shirts from America, so so their large is like four thousand times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Like it, it fits me like a dress and this hat could nearly go over my ears, over my nose, over my mouth. Uh, yeah, you know, everything's bigger over here. Yeah, so I am um, I stuffed up there. Oh, that's awesome. I'll, I'll keep my ears tucked in. That's how I do. That's the only way to roll. That way your ears, top of your ears never get burnt while you're out in the yeah. sun. So, yeah, yeah, I stopped, yeah, I stopped wearing, I stopped wearing them. Um, cause that's what I always used to wear, like baseball caps. But over here in Perth, the heat is so extreme. My my ears, the top of my ears, just burning. So now now I wear these. I wear these stupid hats. What you can't get away with anywhere else in the in the world. Like your big wide brim hats, and you just look like a you like a numpty. Right. You get away. Mind. You get away with it, here, though. <laughs> and then you got the little the little school the school uh, flap at the back. Yeah, uh, the little flap at the back. You know. Well, maybe. Maybe someday I'll show you a picture of me in a 10 gallon hat. That's what I used to wear all the time. It's a nice little Stetson hat growing up, roaming the range, riding a horse, all that kind of stuff. So, dude, do you ride, you ride horses? 
Yeah, I used to. I was a cowboy, my friend. You was a cowboy? I was. Grew up on a cattle ranch. Yep. Wow. Didn't know that. So you can can you do the old lasso and things like that? Uh <laughs> used to. Not anymore. Uh yeah, every fall we would we would um uh rally up a whole bunch of the neighbors and we'd uh get on our horses and go up into the highlands and basically grab all the cattle and bring them down for the winter time and and then uh so you definitely need to know how to lasso up there and and uh during the uh spring time we'd also uh be uh getting all the little calves getting them ready for brandon so yeah I've always wanted to go on a horse, but um, I went on a, I went on a, um, there's a place in the UK called Blackpool, Blackpool, Blackpool Beach, and it's famous for donkeys. So I went on, I went on a donkey once and I got on it and then um, my brother was at the other end. He probably walked for about, a well, no, probably, I don't know, 100 meters or 200 meters or something. And I got on the donkey, on the donkey and my dad smacked his bum. And it je it je it jetted off, and then it it bloody went on its back legs and shot me off, and I was I was I was traumatized. Like it, this little tiny pony, but like it were gal it were galloping as fast as it could, and I'm about eight years old, and then it shot me it shot me off the back of it. Luckily, I had a hat on, one of, like some kind of protective hat. But oh my god, and I thought the that's uh. a pony, that's a pony. Can you imagine that happening on a horse? <laughs> oh geez yeah yeah totally it, that's happened to me lots of times uh you know bees coming out from underneath like a log or something and uh or a snake jumping out nipping at its feet oh yeah you gotta hold on for dear life at that point so but yeah it's it, it was a fun upbringing i think i spent more time on the back of a horse and a tractor than i did in a <laughs> at the uh sitting on the couch growing up so there was never time to sit around and watch tv or anything so we were always going from sun up to sundown so. yeah i can bet I'm, I'm turning i'm turning that off because i'm looking at looking at me or looking at fur i think looking at someone in full screen it's never a good it's never a good look is it you don't you don't you don't want to be you don't want to be um full screen in uh, hd definitely not not looking at this nope. anyway no. And I would, me and Fer, me and Fer, well, we we put a video on just to kind of make it a bit more informative, like when we were doing the stream, rather than just having it us just bantering on nonsense. Uh, we had a we had a live stream. We had a stream on from uh, when Kevin was talking with Mohammed, and they were talking about like the oh, the, the nodes and yeah yeah. yeah. Yeah, they were talking about the nods and we were just getting down right and dirty and getting into conversation about it. So I don't know if you wanted to carry on with that for uh, where you where you was because well, I think we were talking about like the EL, the ELNs, weren't we? Yeah, yeah, we were. And I guess the point that you made just before Cody jumped on was the around the novelty, you know, of holding an ELN, um, and that was on the back of like there may potentially be more FUNs. As Kevin said, in the future, depending on obviously where the state of the network and obviously those who are holding FVNs, what they vote on for the future of the network. But ELNs can, may potentially be restricted to 800. And I don't know if Cody has any insights on that too, but it does make the prospect of holding an ELN. If you look at it from that angle, potentially, yeah, I mean, it makes it obviously more exciting, more attracting in a way um did you guys get to the point where he kind of broke down how the full validator nodes the EL, elns and uh potentially once the mobile validation rolls out how they all kind of get grouped into almost groups and they kind of uh speed up the computation uh uh computation uh speed i guess you could say for validation did he talk about that at all? I can't remember if he did. He so Kevin did did deep dive into it, like he was talking about, you know, the the X score and the North scores. Um, but yeah, we haven't just gotten to it, like to discussing it in here. But I mean, yeah. Um, 
Cody, if you want to probably, you know, elaborate more on that would be. Would yeah. Be too. Um, I'll, I'll try to keep it pretty light because I know he likes to go pretty technical. So, um, you know, from the way the way the um, consensus is built up uh, with the whole node infrastructure of things, it's really interesting because um, of the three different levels that we have, we're only playing around with two right now. And so there hasn't been much talk about it, but uh, mobile validation is also going to be a huge component to the L1X network. And uh, as we know, the more nodes that we have on the network, the better, the faster it is, the more secure it is, you know, things like that. And so, um, you know, we'll obviously have way more node investors uh, or excuse me, uh, mobile and uh, mobile validators than we do like full validators and uh event listener nodes so kind of think of it as kind of like a tiered structure um and uh all together it's it's a i don't know it's it's in my mind it's kind of beautiful the way that he's kind of set it up uh, is, so that they seamlessly work together to speed up the computation power and speed of of uh solving these mathematical equations to you know uh how the blocks get formed onto the blockchain of things and so uh yeah i i think it's definitely going to set us apart when it comes to it uh as many of you have seen if you've done the swap uh x swap you know that uh it's pretty fast it's pretty cheap and uh that's just the very 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 tip of the iceberg of what it can do so you know, when we start getting more heavier games, things like that on the network, like, uh, you know, uh, Elder Rune, as soon as that comes on and uh, gets launched, it's going to start taking and, and, and there's going to be more bandwidth on that. And so, uh, you know, our goal is, is uh, I think we're at, what, 100,000 uh, transaction per second right now. Um, Kevin's informed me that it can go all the way up to at least 500,000 uh, with with a little bit of effort on his part. So that's promising as well, but it's all because of how they've structured the importance of the different nodes, right? So, you know, uh, if you guys are trying to calculate and try to, you know, figure out strategy wise, which ones are the best, which ones aren't the uh, best ones to get over nodes versus validators, you know, that kind of thing. You know, the biggest thing that we need to be focusing on is getting uh, more transactions happening on the on the blockchain, which requires us to bring on more projects, things like that, because, um, you know, that's where the real money starts getting made um, in terms of if you're going to ho host a node, right? And you're looking for that passive income play coming in. So, um, you know, that's why I'm always championing for people to kind of keep opening their mouth to everybody that they talk to about the capabilities of layer one X, the capabilities of blockchain in general. But uh, but yeah, that's going to be the real success to uh, getting payout on both the validator and also the um, event Nistler nodes. That's great insight. And there's a question in the chat, Cody, for you, but I don't know if if you be answer uh, you'd be able to answer that question. But it's I'm just gonna read it out. It's from Master Chef. So Master Chef is asking, Cody, can you touch on how our vested coins will work with staking on our nodes to make them active nodes? Will the FVN be active from day one without the full staked amount of 25k L1X? Uh, that's more of a Machu question. He's been kind of handling that. Unfortunately, um, I've been heads down on other projects, so I haven't been too involved with that. Uh, but from my understanding is I believe it is going to be uh, deployable day one. I, I think that's what their uh, master chef's asking. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's definitely a question for Machu. Sorry, man. Uh, I wish I had more, more insight on that one, but uh, unfortunately, I've been out of the loop. No, no, that's um, 
that's all understandable. So yeah, Mustaf will get get back to you. We'll try and get that information from Matthew for you. Maybe Matthew can jump in another time as well. We can try get him tomorrow again. It was great to have him earlier. Cody, I don't know if you saw that, but Matthew actually jumped in before. I missed him. Just missed him as well. Oh shoot. Yeah, it's yeah. always fun yeah, listening think, to him talk, isn't it? Yeah, it, to be honest, he dropped. He, dro he did drop quite a bit of alpha as well because he was he was talking. We were talking about like, um, like L, well mentioned L one Dex, but then it also went into talking about uh, potential for connecting with different Dexes on different chains, and then having like basically like a wrapped like a like a wrapped version of L one X which was very interesting because that means you've got immediate access to L1X on connected chains. Like you don't even need to stress about going to a sex or going to even like L1 Dex. You can just back drop it, go to your go to whatever Dex it's on and then swap yep. it and you've got a you've got a wrapped L1X in your wallet which is yeah, pretty insane. Yeah, it's it's definitely massive. We've uh we've connected with a really good uh partner um that's a kind of a BD kind of a business development partnership and uh, well known in the industry. Um, very, very deep uh, relationships with a lot of different people. And so, you know, it's uh, they've really kind of opened the doors uh, for us to get past kind of like the gatekeepers, I guess you could say of these companies, like these exchanges and things like that. And the conversations we're having once they kind of have that aha moment of what we can do the real conversation starts and that's where it gets really fun and i know uh, i've been on a couple of those calls with machu and it's been fun talking to him about like changing up a few of the standardized models of how things go about um just because of the x talk capabilities uh we're able to have that conversation with them to do that to make it more simple and more accessible and things like that so yeah yeah i mean the the thing the thing is with that though like when you you're dealing with someone that's got like all this kind of weight in the space where they can like allow all this stuff to happen when when that text released people are going to then take notice of it as well, aren't they? So that's that in itself is going to cause like a network effect between other similar protocols because they'll be looking at it and think, oh my God, how are they doing this? Yeah, yeah, 100%. So for the last two, two three weeks, I've been pushing pretty hard on uh, doing AMAs. I've been averaging about five to six AMAs a day. And uh, yeah it's been interesting going into these other communities and listening to the projects that they're doing um and trying to drop some good alpha on them of these problems that's facing them we've we've pretty much just solved them um and uh i probably have no joke maybe two or three uh projects reach out to me daily after those amas uh, wanting to learn more, start up a conversation. Um, I talked with a couple of meme coins that are totally willing to ditch the chain that they're on and come on over to L1X just because of that interoperability place. So, so yeah, I mean, people are, words getting out. Let's just put it that way. The uh, KOLs that we're using are, are doing a good job um, with that trying to help us get out with marketing. Um, so yeah, it's it's a slow grind. Unfortunately, we've kind of fallen behind the, the eight ball a little bit uh, in terms of uh, hype, uh, just because of all these freaking meme coins that are just going nuts right now. And that's where the new yeah. shiny coin that's out there that everybody seems to be uh, drawn to. It's like, uh, you know, a, a June bug, getting zapped with the zapper during the summer, you know, just can't take their eyes off it. And yeah. uh, they're going to miss out. That's for sure. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if you'd be able to answer this question or not, but um, when, because you've got a pro you've got, say you've got a meme coin, well, take a meme coin. So meme coin says, right. Okay. We're going to deploy. We're going to use layer one X as the LP. We're going to be like a brand new meme coin. So the LP is hundred percent on, on layer one X. Like, you've got all these influencers kols what you can bring into a meme coin but at the end of the day most people use trending sites to see the charts like dex screener dex tools coin gecko terminal um if they're looking at a meme coin say 
because this meme coin, when, when it's on L1X, you can buy it on Solana, like uh, BNB, AVAX, Ethereum, whatever. For someone that is a DGen on BSC, they're going to be looking at, as on the network on Dex Green or Dex Tools. They're going to be looking at BSC. Or uh, same same with AVAX. They're going to be looking on AVAX on on Dex Greener. How how will a meme coin that launches on L1X and get exposure onto these trending sites because it's on L1X, but it's also on every connected chain as well? Is there some kind of API that that can be plugged into each of these? like providers so it doesn't matter if you're looking for l1x on bsc avax ethereum solana it shows up on all of them yep yep uh there's things in the works on that right now can't say too much uh these are some of the conversations that machi's having with some of these uh different decks and exchanges and things like that is is trying to build that that uh kind of tunnel for for people to kind of come in this we can say because it's i mean we already know that it is but a, a meme coin that wants to come on l1x mint their coins on us uh obviously they they can use us as the source destination um and be able to to uh, launch their their tokens uh on being bnb binance you know if they want to or solana ethereum but they can do it right from our our platform and still manage everything from there vice versa they can also you know if they let's just say they do a billion coins right they can put 250 million in ethereum 250 on on binance 250 million on solana and then another 250 on l1x and the nice part about it is is that they don't have to go and update the balances manually like you would normally um so if uh people transfer from you know solana over to binance uh those numbers will just automatically go and be auto adjusted because everything's being done through the x talk contract and so that's going to be huge for for meme coins going multi-chain uh in the future but uh you know primarily if they just want to at least just come and and uh mint from here onto a different chain uh, the capabilities that they would have with that being on chain here with us is is phenomenal. Yeah, uh, that'd be that'd be interesting because I I had a I've got a like a friend that um, he's very well connected with meme coins and I was telling him about it and he just can't he just he just because that layer one X is new he just can't wrap his head around um, how the trending side of it works because he's like he said well if you can get on all these trending. Like, and we bring the right influencers in, like a meme coin, and just smash it on L1X, providing that the trending services are all picking it up on native chains. So, yeah, I mean, if that if that can happen, like, oh my god, I mean, it's weird, isn't it? You've got a meme coin that's on every chain, but it's on one chain. Yep, it's crazy. It's definitely crazy. And you know, like I said, I I talked with just two just in the past couple of days that uh, are willing to jump ship come over basically re uh do a version two of their coin over on us so that they can kind of get that whole interoperability built into it plus some unique opportunities for utility as a reward token where before they never had any type of uh, utility it was just a pure shit coin yeah so um is the opportunity for um pre-sale <laughs> Or is it just a case of redeploying and just like just going live and just pulling the liquidity, airdropping all the um, existing holders, and it's not won't be a launch as such. It'd just be moving liquidity and airdropping. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they're all different cases, but yeah, you're, you're pretty much right on the nose there. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's some there's some cool things that I've I've had brewing for about a year now that I want to do. It's just a matter of. <laughs> getting launched getting everything taken care of and then kind of building the infrastructure for people that want to launch their own coins and things like that so that'll be fun in the future yeah yeah i'm looking forward to i'm looking forward to um i'm looking forward to launch there and i'm kind of looking forward to after the launch because i think everyone on the team and even even the community because the thing is the community 
we've, most people have been here that long. They feel part of the team anyway. So I think everyone's got them like pre, pre-nerve kind of jitters um, for launch because it's it's a big thing for everybody, isn't it? It doesn't matter if you're a, you've got a C-suite position, you're a moderator, or you invested, you invested whatever you invested into it. If you've been here since the beginning, everyone's got them kind of same feelings about it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. And, you know, uh, from a executive team standpoint, we want to make sure that we're we're definitely taking good care of our investors, um, you know, making sure that we're just not launching to launch. Uh, we're setting it up for some good success, you know, things like that. And so there's a lot of domino pieces that we've been working on in the background of things so that we can uh, set this up for success, because, you know, obviously, you know, you ask, you ask uh, any one of us from Kevin all the way down to me. And I mean, <laughs> first in a lot of those meetings as well. But, uh, you know, I, I think we all agree that this is something that's going to be huge. And uh, it can definitely be competing with the Ethereum's, you know, a lot of the, the quote unquote, big, big chains that are, are pretty popular right now. And I, I honestly feel like to be honest i mean the the coolest thing that came out years ago was the smart contract from ethereum and uh i i honestly feel like there hasn't been any any major innovation from there until x talk made its public debut a year ago and yeah. uh, i think that that's the next big thing that people will, will definitely tap into for sure yeah yeah. I mean, if you look, you look at, um, you look really like Polkadot, like Gavin Wood obviously m- moved away from Ethereum because obviously Ethereum he probably wasn't happy with. So he created what he thought was this interoperable chain. But in reality, it's just another closed chain, isn't it? It's not, inter- it's not, it's interoperable to a point new projects coming in, joining their chain, but it's not, it's not that in- innovative at all, is it? So what L1X, yeah, what L1X is doing is, yeah, you can't really get any more innovative than this. Right, right, yeah. right. I agree. And, you know, it's it's one of those things like I got to see it firsthand. Oh, gosh, almost a year and a half ago. And that's what made me fall in love with it. And that's when I told Machu because Machu and I knew each other from a previous uh, previous projects. And uh, so I was like, dude, seriously, I want in on this like I I don't even care if I have to be the L1X janitor. I'll uh, <laughs> <laughs> whatever I need to do to be a part of it. And uh, so, lucky enough, they needed a, a UI UX uh, uh, user experience guy. So uh, that's one thing that I uh, that really caught my attention too is this that Kevin is focused on building out that whole you know user experience type of thing and. Yeah, uh, you know, we were saying this a year ago, and and now you're starting to hear a lot more projects being focused on it, and uh, which is great for for crypto in general, in my opinion, because uh, if we're all focused on trying to make it seamless and and so easy that grandma can do it type of thing, you know that we're we're gonna have some good takeaways from this next bull run. Uh, that's for sure. People are going to be testing a whole bunch of new stuff. It'll be paddle tested through the bear market. And then uh, we'll see what happens on the next round. You know, what survives, what doesn't. And that's the best thing because it's almost like an agile kind of process, right? You innovate, you deploy, you gather data and learn, you analyze, you go back to the drawing board and you just complete that cycle over and over and over again and that's how the big companies do it and that's how we do it and that's kinda, how we're doing in crypto it's kind of like um it's kind of if you think about like the progression of like l1x and what what is anticipated to come it's a little bit like solana because solana really like last last bull market it actually it went mental didn't it but it didn't really have much of a use case back then didn't really didn't really do anything but then right then it's gone through the bear market and then it's coming to the bull market again and it's it's basically the premier chain at the minute because of what it because of the basically the, the gas fees and the meme coins bringing over that kind of narrative but like layer 1x is kind of in the same position isn't it it's just building up now to launch 
it might not have all the awareness on this bull market, but it's probably still going to do insane things just because of what it does do. But then the next bull market, that's when it's really going to take off. That's when it's really going to be special because, like, what's happening on Solana now is probably going to be do exactly the same for L1X, but on steroids. Yeah, yeah, um, 100%, 100%. So, yeah, I agree with you on that one. Um, these these bull and bear markets are very, very important um, just, uh, just from an innovative standpoint. Um, I think it's, I think, uh, the other thing too, to look at as well, which is interesting is, is if you kind of take a step back and look at the, um, user behavior of a lot of people in the last bull run versus this upcoming bull run. Um, and you look at the cycle of what the cognitive behavior has been in previous bull runs as well is, uh, a lot, a lot of people are getting smarter. They're getting wiser. Uh, they're not like, uh, I mean, you still hear people aping into stupid stuff that don't even have websites or, you know, anything like that. Right. But, uh, I think that you're getting a lot more people that are getting crypto savvy. Um, and I think that a lot of them are having that aha moment for themselves, uh, where they are realizing that they can take what they do in the real world and bring it over to web three and actually have a pretty lucrative uh career out of it and uh i'm i'm one of those guys right and uh just started out as an investor and happened to find a couple of projects that uh needed some uh feedback uh you know everybody on the internet is always just uh an opinion person they like to give their opinions on things and but uh um, I, uh, presented a couple of, uh, pitch decks to people on how they could approve their UI UX experience. And that was the start of it because I was already an investor in the community. And so it was a great opportunity for me to kind of bridge that web two to web three kind of, uh, career path. And, uh, now I'm pr primarily full time in crypto. So it's been awesome. Yeah, it's good getting your perspective because you've kind of been you you've you're basically doing what you did in web 2 but you're doing it over here for l1x and yep. the more the more that i like i mean I, I i'm like not on i mean i'm in quite a lot of different communities not really blockchain communities but a lot of different communities and everything tech wise it's always focused on just the crypto side the the bubble the web 3 but mm -hmm. like the the more you hear layer one, like the more the, the more you listen to Kevin and Matthew and yourself, and a lot of the applications, what uh, people what, what are being discussed at L one X, it's all about just onboarding the real world. It's not about the people that are already here. It's about bringing in the people in Web two across to Web three, but without them knowing that they're coming across to Web three. Like it, mm -hmm. it's and you don't you don't you don't really hear that idea from many projects it's just they're kind of focusing on the people that are here already and layer one x is kind of focusing on the the population that isn't really interested in crypto but they're going to be on the blockchain whether they know it or not yeah, yeah it, it it was very interesting to see us during the uh uh pre-sell the private cell and the public cell right and so uh, those three different layers, how many people did purchase without a crypto wallet? Um, and that was a good indicator right there that we've got a lot of non crypto people, uh, joining cause they see the potential of what this can do. Um, which is awesome. So that's it. That's an exciting thing from uh, an executive level as well. But, uh, but yeah, I wholeheartedly agree with you it's uh it's we are definitely on a path to uh unite that's for sure unite but also basically um kevin and i have had conversations about this as well as is it's almost uh like raising the bar in terms of development um you know if you've uh, ever worked with a developer if, if you are a developer you know that you've got your own way of doing certain things and everybody has a different way to get from point a to point b and um, it's interesting when you try to start collaborating and bringing that all together 
there's not always, even though they're using kind of the same languages, coding languages, it's not always like one-to-one -one where you can just make it so compatible and easy to kind of uh, interact with one another. There is a grind there. There is some, some different elements that need to happen in order for them to communicate together. And so that's where LNX shines. I mean, we're the universal translator between all these projects and chains. Um, so that we make it so easy for people to to uh, integrate with one another that they don't have to get down to that granular level of things so that's where i think that a lot of people don't really realize uh is where we're going to shine yeah yeah and listening to you too i have a point to add as well like i think the lack of interoperability between chains hasn't really helped the unison between web 2 and web 3 and i think that's for the fact that there have been, you know, groups and cults now which are working, working more towards, you know, the advancement of a certain chain. It has shifted away from the advancement of blockchain more towards, you know, the advancement. There are Solana devouts, there are ETH devouts, and obviously fanatics in, in all different chains, but it's it hasn't really been about, you know, advancing the blockchain technology. And I think that's really pushed back on the the user experience and you know the whole onboarding aspect we've been we've been talking about where it hasn't been seamless for anyone and it's become more about you know pulling users from one another where i think yeah to your point cody like l1x would really thrive because it aims to solve all of those challenges and it's i keep saying it again and again but it's like uniting all the blockchains right it's not about fighting with one another and and i think yeah that's really powerful in its own way yep no one no one project will have the answers to everything hands down it it's just the nature of the beast right um and so if you're hyper focused on one specific thing i mean you take the SaaS world you know software as a service right um there the model has been around for gosh almost 20 years now and uh it's it's a huge thing because they're able to able to be so hyper focused on one thing and do it really really well um and if you think of blockchains they are kind of doing the similar thing where they are so hyper focused on certain key technology that they've developed that uh, is really good now they just need somebody to come in like l1x and bring it all together um and and have these things interact with each other um you know uh back in you know, working in web two, you saw the evolution of SaaS products. And uh, when they started to integrate with other platforms, other SaaS products, that was a huge milestone for them. Um, one, because they were able to tap into new audiences. And so if we take that model of why they did it, one, to tap into audiences, two, to help with user adoption and three, to pull in a little bit of data. Um, not all the data can definitely be transferred from one, one platform to the other because in web two data is their currency. So they're a little reluctant to give that up. But if you look at that model and what we're trying to do over here in web three, it, it's there's no difference. It, it really just boils down to collaboration, collaboration, collaboration and uh, it's it's interesting that a lot of these projects are so uh on themselves and thinking that they've got uh you know the next best thing when it comes to this or that and you know a lot of times they do but it's like hey you know what if you took this technology and paired it with this one that's clear over on this other chain with this other project now you're trying now you're talking right now you're able to do all these different things that you can do and um you know that that's the big part is this like the whole communication level um doesn't matter whatever model it is and in, in life it's always comes down to communication communication is key and uh you know some chains have tried to do that at the communication level between each other which you know that's where bridges were born but uh the way that we've built our own vm consensus and oracle kind of thing 
being able to tap into it from a smart contract level and be able to pull in data along with logic and assets, I mean, that's, that's untouchable. And so, you know, for us, we could, we could go out with this huge chip on our shoulder of like, Hey, we're, <laughs> our shit doesn't stink and smells like roses and we've got the next best thing. But, you know, from day one, the one thing that I've really enjoyed working with uh, Kevin, Machu, Mike and Efe is, is that uh, we're, we're all of the same cloth when it comes to it's like we're not here to compete. We're here to unite and work with people. And I think that that's uh, evident in our relationships that we've been able to build, especially with like OmChain and HealthLink and some of these big, big uh, industry leader kind of things. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you brought up the example of software. I mean, what better platform than Restream, right? Like as an example, or or stream, yeah, where we're, you know, streaming to multiple platforms. Yep. And and why? Because each platform has their own benefits. So it's it's like yeah, recognizing, like you said, like not one chain has has a solution to everything. Like there there are strengths and weaknesses of every, and you just need to have access to all of them. Yep. 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 Exactly. Exactly. Um, and it's, it's, uh, a good software company can, can actually, um, they, they don't go outside of the box. Um, you probably heard me talk about this numerous times, but, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a, I hate the, the term think outside the box because I feel like that's an overly used cliche term. And uh, for me, it's it's one of those things that it's like that to me, when you think outside the box is a bolt on experience that affects your user experience, it affects your UI, um, and it creates a pretty siloed experience on the whole bigger picture, right? And so, um, for me, it's about it being able to expand that box and customize it to each of your uh, users that you have coming in, right? And so that's one of the key functions that we're really trying to focus on with the L1X app is this uh, customization, scalability, as well as being able to uh, allow the user to consume data, consume the projects, consume crypto any which way that they want not being um, kind of put into a box in a sense by these kind of templated kind of uh, versions of, of what the protocol wants them to experience. Um, they should be able to, you know, interact with the smart contracts how they want to. So. Yeah. I keep saying, well, I've said this a few times, like if you think about, if you think about the tech of L1X, like we're, I mean, I mean, you don't want to be too arrogant and say it's superior than everybody else because every, every all of the, all of the like blockchains, they've all got pluses and minuses, aren't they? But it's pretty superior. Like when you start looking at the tech, and when it gets to the point where the community kind of gets to the same level as the tech, that's when that's when the network effect will really kick in. And it's just it's just getting that getting to that point in it. The the adoption catches the technology. And imagine where where we'll be then. Like that, like right now, you've got like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Layer One X up here, and then you've got you've probably got the community down here with Floki Enu meme coin or something. But it's going to get to the point. It's just going to keep rising, and at that point, that's that's when you'll start seeing. Without talking about prices, but then you'll start the market cap will start rising because increased networking it just means increased market cap. Hundred percent. I mean, especially if you take a look at. Uh, Ethereum, Binance, Solana, Optimism, you know, all these different chains that they've launched, it has literally taken them at least two to three years to kind of hit the levels of where they're at right now. Um, and a lot of that has to do with adoption. A lot of that has to do with just the, the grind of, of starting a new project, right? But then you see that eventually they come to a certain point where it just seems like it's a hockey stick of growth um, and market cap. And uh, I mean, that's for any project, but they've got to be able to, to last through the first, you know, 
three, six, nine, 12, 18 months, 24 months um, to establish themselves and, and go. And, you know, it's, it's amazing, uh, you know, doing all these AMAs is kind of a PR push for promoting, you know, TGE and, and uh, L1X that how small the crypto industry really is right now um and uh how many people know each other if you're familiar with like the seven degrees of kevin bacon that's what it really feels like to me um you know type of thing so it's it's like every time i jump onto an ama it's it's always like oh hey you you know I caught it. you know that <laughs> you know that kind of thing right and uh and, and so that's what's so mind blown to me sometimes too is it's like why aren't we collaborating more if it's so such a small niched community um we we just need to kind of get over whatever it is and just kind of extend our hand across the aisle and say hey let's make this work let's just make it work right um i met a great guy uh with a project that we're hoping to uh him and I are hopefully uh, gonna get it going where uh, there will be a partnership between us soon. Um, but he was one that I just met on an AMA and and uh, you know basically started chatting with him offline and we share a lot of the same values and a lot of the same kind of vision for where we want to take NFTs. And the one component that they were missing is that interoperability. And uh, they definitely wanted to be a cross chain kind of thing for NFTs. And what they're doing is actually pretty cool. And uh, they were just missing that one thing and we stepped in and we could provide it. So it was a good conversation and we'll be picking up the conversation again, hopefully here in the next couple of weeks after TGE so that we can get them on boarded as well. Yeah, so there's a lot of things, uh, there's a lot of things happening behind the scenes there. Uh yeah lots and i wish we could just record ourselves because there's so much going on it's hard to <laughs> regurgitate everything and uh, yeah you know my my hats off to our marketing department uh sandra and and Anna and you know everybody that's behind the scenes especially our mods as well uh you know for joe all those guys they're they're doing a phenomenal job of of uh keeping keeping things on 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 task with the, keeping the community up to date on all these meetings we have with them and stuff but uh yeah it's just it's kind of those domino effects sometimes you just gotta wait and wait and wait until they start falling and once they fall then you can start seeing what's behind the curtain what's been happening so yeah and then you get that kind of eureka moment and all those all those naysayers so all those ah yeah i'll wait i'll wait till it launch you see what happens <laughs> then they're like oh damn yeah i should have actually got in when when i were being told by everybody get in get in get in yeah i should have got in <laughs> yep yep exactly so you know regardless there's always going to be fudsters there's always going to be rock stars there's going to be everybody in between and you just take it with a grain of salt and move forward and and uh until the proof speaks for itself right so yeah, yeah. I, I, say, I, I like crypto's walker shirt i told you so <laughs> i told you so yeah you got that done and we, we, we to be honest we all need one of them i need one of them because my wife like she's she just does not believe at all uh, she thinks i'm in here wasting my life brainwashed by coin people as she calls you lot <laughs> uh i think like just touching on what you said before though like when you say i think fur was talking about um all these different projects kind of keep oh well people on projects i should share should say or blockchains themselves people keep themselves to themselves and kind of help push one narrative like kind of interesting in it what the what the short term and long term long term future holds because like with layer one actually uniting all the chains and all the projects like i wonder what's going to happen for a lot of things like you're not going to have you're not really going to need these siloed blockchains or these siloed communities because in a year from now or five years from now new people that have come in won't even experience what we've experienced so because if l1x does its job right the entire space will look so different that it'll 
I mean, it's, for instance, someone coming in a year from now, if L1X does what it's intended to, Web3 will be a united chain. It'll just be one chain connected by L1X, and no one will probably give a damn what's connecting it. It's just they'll just come in and, oh, yeah, well, you can get on any project and you can swap it to any other project on any other chain, and that'll be it. That'll be that'll be the all and end of it. So you start looking at it for the from a user standpoint, but then start looking at it from from like um, like a KOL or start looking at it from a marketing perspective, like how the hell do they wrap their head around it all now? Because they've, they've had these little niches, these little clicks where they've been able to do micro-targeting on marketing. And now all of a sudden, it's just going to be all fl- thrown up in the air. And it's like one big space where everything's game. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You're, you're exactly right. I mean, um, I think it's also kind of like a generational thing as well um the mindset of some of these younger younger kids that are coming in um to crypto and and things like that they're bringing a whole new uh type of uh user persona right that you hit it right on the nose they don't really care what chain they're not they're not associated with the um exclusivity or the uh the chain brand itself it's like oh i only i only do this with uh projects that are built on ethereum it, yeah. they're not like that right they're they're uh they're basically like okay this is my problem this is my issue this is my want yeah. now who can provide that to me and who can provide it to me the cheapest and the fastest and the best quality experience that's really what it boils down to right yeah and, uh you know those guys are the ones that are are typically the 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 ones that hop around quite a bit um until they can find the brands that they feel comfortable with and then that's when they kind of dig their teeth in and they they become like those cult like advocates for it right you think of like the apples the androids you know those kind of people they've tapped into those younger dems and uh as a result i mean they've got some die hard people and that's why you you always you want to shy away from those kind of debates on twitter (laughs) yeah yeah you get you you can like dig yourself a hole can't you (laughs) i think yeah i think you hit the nail on the head i've never really thought of it like that but if you think about like blockchains and and you've just said like people dart about from one to another and i think like a lot like you said a lot of younger people don't care about chains and i think a good example of that is a project that just launched on boost a uh, boost base called roost which was a really highly pushed highly private sale backed um meme coin and people were just flo- flocking to it and a lot of people never used base before at all but they didn't care because this opportunity had come up on this chain. And mm-hmm. you probably get a lot of ETH maxis that are nah, not interested in that. But like the younger people don't care, do they? People that are new to the space don't care. And what you just said about brands, that's exactly what it is, isn't it? Blockchains are just brands. It's just like who's in the cool club? Like who's well, who, even the brands, it's the projects that are on the brands right yeah. or on the on the chain sorry excuse me it's getting late my words are starting to <laughs> mesh together um yeah it's it's more or less this the the projects are the brands that are on the the chains the chains are more or less think of it as kind of like the mall right it's they're the mall and all of the different shops that are in a mall those are the different brands that are out there nobody really says hey i can't wait to go shop at the you know uh, mall or whatever yeah store right they're like i'm specifically going to go to x y and z store um that's at the mall right it's that same philosophy yeah and when when you say that as well like you say your, your your malls are your blockchains and the stores are the brands um the, the projects are the brands like if you think if you think about that it doesn't even you, you bring that back into crypto and back into blockchain it doesn't make any sense does it you've got like nike which you could kind of say is equivalent to pudgy penguins right now because they've gone up the above board apes and you you've, you've got this pudgy penguin which is the probably one of the I, I mean i'm not too clued up but let's say it's the number one nft project in the world 
So you've got pudgy penguins that are just basically saying, right, okay, we're okay in this mall. We're not interested in any other malls. We don't want to. We don't want to get out to other communities. We're just going to stay here. And when you when you think of it like that, if you put that in the Web two world, it, it it's stupid. It doesn't make any business sense whatsoever. If you said that in a Web two world, you'd be kicked out. You'd be like, what are you? What are you on about? We're only going to sell it in one country, or we're only going to sell it in one one shopping mall. You'd be like, nah, nah, nah. We want it in every mall on every island around the world, and that's what yeah. L one X and that's what L one X does. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And to take it another perspective as well, as you, you know, you mentioned Nike, take uh, all your major apparels, right? A lot of people don't realize that they all come off of the same factory line, pre pretty much, right? Um, yeah. It's just that they slap a, a label on it and they have already branded it. But it's not like you've got Louis Vuitton who is out there promoting that they're off of the same line that you know, maybe coaches on, um, they're not promoting that and, and consumers are not like, Oh, I'm buying it off of this line, you know, type of thing. They could care less about that. All they care about is their products, their brands that they, uh, can connect with on an emotional level. And, uh, yeah, you're right. That's what it really is. And so, the sooner we we wise up to that kind of mentality, I think a lot of lot more people will have that aha moment for them. Yeah, so like really, like um, you look at you look at like brands, and then you look at I don't know. I'm trying to think. You've you've got like uh, David Beckham. Like he's he's like a fantastic brand ambassador for all these for some of the some of the um, companies or brands that he works for but like you, you think about blockchains and i think i think well ethereum's the most successful blockchain and you're looking at, and like to take it back to like the blockchain isn't the brand because in reality like vitalic is behind ethereum and people aren't buying into vitalic are they? they're buying into the the projects that are building but we we've got something very special here because we've got we've got layer one x that is going to enable all this cool stuff to happen and intro and like make everything go multi-chain but rather than having like a vitalic we've got we've got kevin who's like he's got this insane kind of um he's got this good vibe about him he's, he can he comes across very well spoken he's very articulate he's very likable and that says a lot and then we've got you and then we've got matthew and then we've got we've got mike so there's there's a whole raft of people so you've got the brand, you've got the blockchain, and then you've got like, I mean, you guys, in reality, you, you've got these C-suite roles and you've got all this extensive knowledge that you've got, but you've also got that um, brand ambassador role as well because you're you're pushing L1X, not just on the tech, but just how you come across and how you are as people. And to have you guys up there, like, and, and like even going down, going down the line to like Ina, Sandra, and then you're going down to all the mods and everybody that represents L1X, there's, there's a lot of amazing people part of it that are going to help support the tech. Yeah, 100%. 100%. You know, and yeah, there is a huge push from our angle about what X Talk is and, and things like that. But, you know, uh, give it a few years. Yeah. You know, I, I, people, people won't be talking so much about like, ooh, X Talk, X Talk. You know, they'll be just talking about this new sweet game that they're playing. <laughs> that you can yeah. pull in all these different NFTs from all these different places into this game. Um, that's what they're going to be talking about. Well, and no one, no one talks about the internet, do they? No. Well, no. the internet, the internet is so good. Look, look what I can do. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a prime example. You know, like when, uh, you know, for me back in the late 80, uh, 90s, you know, kind of thing, uh, hearing that old AOL dial up kind of sound. And, um, you know, for me, it's, it's kind of that nostalgia thing. And I look at it then and they were hitting the internet so freaking hard. And then it kind of, you know, if you look at a chart, it's kind of like users are down here and hype is up here. Yeah. Hype, hype, hype. And then eventually they're just going to cross and then, yeah hype's going to go down but the users are going to keep going and they're going to become the brand ambassadors they're going to yeah. become the ones that are talking about it but yeah i mean it's it's not like <laughs> you you hear things of like 
get on the internet and yeah, get <laughs> build on, your yeah, business. Yeah, right? the internet's gonna make you a success. <laughs> that, yeah, that good old internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah. I remember the. I remember the good old days. I think my first, my first modem was a US Robotics fifty six K modem, and I'm like, <laughs> this is because I think they just replaced the twenty eight K. Yeah, fifty six K. Plug it into the telephone line and let's hear it dial up. Oh, that's awesome. Shows oh, you, that, that shows your age, doesn't it? When you remember, when you remember, like you, well, fifty six K modems or twenty eight K uh, modems. <laughs> heck yeah, that's uh, yeah. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I do, but uh, yeah, but yeah, sometimes, it's a, sometimes it's I feel a, like you, you kind of you'd you'd love to like just knock a couple of decades off your off your gen off your age, wouldn't you? To just experience this generation for longer. Yeah, in a sense, but you know, I've got kids that are already this age and and coming into the real world of things and. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I want to. I, I like the time that I grew up. I'll, I'll leave myself there personally. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, yeah, when I were a kid, I mean, when we used play out, I mean, we used to do some stupid stuff. I mean, I, I remember making a zip wire out of this like wire, tying it to a tree and like, just climbing up a tree and just diving off this zip wire and then digging holes like and covering them up so people fall down them and stuff. And you think, what? Like the. <laughs> Do, do, doing traps for doing traps for your friends so they fall down and probably break the leg or something like you, you got up to you got up to no good and and you just got dirty and you no one cared where you were when you got in you come home when it's dark hi mom hi dad like now you, you're on your mobile 24 7 people don't even go out anymore do they it's like it's tech 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 no 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 that's for sure i mean you know with with me growing up on a cattle ranch one of the things that they used to have us our parents would have us kids do is uh you know uh when we needed the tractor to get more diesel for our tractor and stuff uh they would have us just drive it to school and then on the way back they would give us some cash to basically go and fill it up and uh i mean dude i'm like eight years old driving this big freaking tractor along the highway everybody imagine passing honking at me and i'm like dude i'm freaking eight years old give me a break <laughs> and uh the cool part is it's like the the you know the the culture the town that i grew up in i mean that was common you'd pull up to school and uh you know we had our grades from you know basically kindergarten all the way up through through uh high school and uh all in one all in kind of like one big campus one couple of different buildings but that was it but you pull in with your tractor and you're not the only one there's like 12 other tractors there yeah, from just... other families that are sending their kids in but uh yeah. there's right, no way i would let my kids do that at eight yeah it's no crazy way. isn't it what it's crazy isn't it what you what you did then and nobody thought anything of it and now because obviously you've grown up and stigma and everything changes you, you you think with the times don't you even though you know back then it were normal and acceptable you kind of then put your sensible head on and you think yeah well, maybe that wasn't so good of an idea such of a good idea i remember my dad my dad had come home from work and he'd send me he'd send me around to the corner shop for like cigarettes and beer and i'd be like eight nine ten years old and and corner shop the man would just give it me because he knew it were for my dad like you get if that happened now they get shut down immediately Oh, for sure. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just times of times have changed. <laughs> that's for sure. But, uh, you know, I think I think these uh, kids will look back on uh, the, that are in it right now. Right. Um, that are just getting into it. Uh, you give them a few years, decades underneath their belts as well. They'll be looking back saying, gosh, you remember when we had to use this thing called MetaMask and all these like uh. <laughs> stupid wallets to access our crypto and oh man i i hated using those 12 word seed phrase 24 word seed phrases and having to use a cold wallet and all this kind of stuff to protect and blah 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 I, yeah I, just... I mean yeah you'll probably you'll put it'll probably get to a point and you'll just think you'll think about opening your wallet and you'll open your wallet It'll be probably the tech will be that. I mean, you start. I start. I don't know if you saw the recent, um, um, the new Rolink, 
the the, the yeah. advancements. What that I think they were yeah. like a paraplegic guy, young, young, a gentleman in his thirties, I think, and they videoed him for the first time, like doing stuff on a screen just with a power of thought. And you're like, that is pretty sick. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely a futuristic thing that's that's here for sure. I mean, from a UI UX designer standpoint, you know, working through with a lot of Fortune 100 companies and stuff prior to jumping into crypto, it's it's interesting because they are all about trying to create that symbiotic kind of uh, relationship between machine humans. You know that kind of thing and and uh we had a great taste of that when that smartphone rolled out right it became a good yeah. extension of who we are what we do um information at our fingertips communication at our fingertips uh uh pretty much anything at our fingertips and then you know start dabbling around with uh how we connect with people how we communicate with people nowadays through social and and stuff like that it's we're definitely heading there. It's just, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of leery about, you know, Terminator coming to fruition, <laughs> but, uh, you know. yeah, well, I mean, it is, it is weird in it when you start thinking about like the technology combine, combine that with AI. I mean, AI is technology, but then you, you can you, you, you think about hardware and then you think about AI and combining the two. It's pretty, it's pretty insane in it what's coming and like for our kids well they'll just grow up with it and accept it for what it is but like for our for, for us you know you, you obviously you've seen before when you see during and then you see after so you can get a really good perspective can't you yeah yeah you really can um you really can yeah i met so, i met um i met one of them ai pete i can't think what she's called now she's got uh, she's an AI woman. Uh, obviously, she's not a woman. She's AI. She's she ain't real. But I met. She was at talking. Oh, she's called Sophie, and she was at talking twenty forty nine in Singapore. Uh, and you could talk. You could you could walk up. You could walk up to and talk to her. And it is such a bizarre experience. You're literally having having a conversation with somebody that is not real. That's a robot. And even the facial expressions and the thoughts of the face, because like she's thinking, and obviously she's. She's not thinking. She's accessing a database, but um, it's it's insane. It's insane having a conversation with somebody and you, you've got a facial reaction and a, a completely independent opinion on something that looks like they've been thinking about, which if they have or not, I don't know, but pretty great. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, I'll share a good experience with you around that. Like a lot of people think that AI is, you know, somewhat fairly new but it's not. It's like blockchain. Blockchain technology has been around since the early 90s. Um, AI has been around, you know, for a lot longer than we think. And uh, I had my first experience with it while I was working over, while I was living out in uh, uh, the Bay Area, Silicon Valley. And uh, I was working for one of the major, major brands out there. And um, one of the things that they had me do was uh it was back in 2010 that i started working for them and my role was uh basically trying to figure out this whole social media thing for them and how they can um you know tap into it and so for me um i started working with a lot of this uh, uh professors of psychology at stanford and berkeley and things like that and that was a real education and uh, as we started coming together, one of the things that we did is we built the uh, third uh, ever in existence listening center where we would pull from the pipe of Facebook, Twitter, uh, um, yeah, Instagram wasn't around for when we started it, but uh, you had like Pinterest and things like that, LinkedIn, but we were pulling from all of these different channels and we were trying to figure out a way of like tapping into that like socially listening right well we hired this firm and i won't drop names because i don't want to scare the crap out of people but um we hired this firm it was a million bucks a month and uh this firm had uh we started working with them but basically what they would do is this uh again this is an e-commerce uh company that was out there 
um, people would go in and they would, uh, so if I had a post for an example on Twitter and I would say, Hey, I'm going to Australia. Um, you know, what, what kind of things should I buy for over there? Right. Well, this software when tapped into that pipe would basically start building profiles on people. So take my name, put, imagine like a file folder. It would put my name at the top and then it would say traveling to Australia. And, uh, then for an example, then it would start checking all the public data to cross-reference any flights that I was on or anything like that. Right. Um, and then it would start compiling all this stuff together. Um, isn't it ironic when you go to places like Amazon, eBay, things like that, they have this predictive kind of technology that you haven't even typed in anything into the, uh, search bar. And yet the things that you're looking for pull up immediately on the first page, or they, uh, happen to show up in your social media threads, you know, things like that. Um, it's, it's this kind of thing, right? And so we started working with this company a little bit more and more and more. And, and it was interesting because, you know, take it as a different angle. You know, uh, if I said that I had a, I, I was looking to buy an iPhone for my son's birthday, uh, you know, and I would, I would possibly mention his age. Uh, he, they would start up a folder for me. They would start up a folder for him and they would say, Cody has a son approximate age, this start up, uh, unknown because maybe I didn't mention his name, right? Unknown file folder for son approximate age related to Cody. And then, uh, maybe down the road, I, I said, Hey, I got him and I, I got my son's name an iPhone for his birthday. Uh, does anybody recommend any good places to get accessories for that iPhone? So now they update that file with the, the kid's name. They update that he has an iPhone and that he's looking for accessories, right? And then like everybody else does, they usually post something on, on their social media accounts about, uh, um, you know, their, their kid's birthday, they show a picture of their son or their daughter or, you know, the whole family, whatever. And, uh, then this AI would basically go through and start picking out faces and start trying to build out files on those people. And it was just nuts. Right. So we started working with this company and about eight months into it, we found out that they have only one, they're owned by one company. Any guesses on who that company was? Uh, one company. They won't... One entity, I should say. <laughs> Meta? No. It's a, uh, it's a big C brother. CIA? Big brother. Yeah, you can kind of go that route. But yeah, so they oh, had... Oh. I was going to say, it sounds like kind of CIA kind of behavior, doesn't it? Where they're tapping your phones and checking yeah. everything on you. Yeah, but it's just crazy how they just are exploiting people's data like no other. And this was back and in 2010. Yeah, And so the... you can imagine how much it's grown and evolved since then. Yeah. But it's... it scares the crap out of me then, and it still yeah. scares the crap out of me now. Well, you think how AI will have, will have evolved through data. That's the thing, you know, AI progresses through data. So the more data, the more AI progresses. It's like it just it just continues, doesn't it? And it's the, it's the data that gives the AI the technology to be even better than it's been. The, that's why chat GBT and all these different versions, it's just because they've collected more data to analyze and then progress it even further on. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely interesting. You know, you, you look at all these quote unquote, smart con uh, devices that we have in our houses. They're the dumbest devices that you can have out there unless they're tapped into a, a wealth of data, right? Yeah. And uh, I, I, uh, I, I also consulted with a uh, smart home company that developed a lot of different devices and, and things like that. And, uh, you know, it's interesting because not even all their products spoke together. <laughs> they were so siloed on their yeah. 
experience that it was just like, are you freaking kidding me? You know, your doorbell can't talk with your security system or your smoke detectors can't talk to your security system. It's like, are you freaking kidding me? Like, and you're out there claiming that you're a smart, smart yeah. home company and, and building all these smart home devices. And it's like, you got to have some sort of data to tap into and and uh because of privacy stuff here in the us a lot of them couldn't do it so they had to just go out with clever marketing to get it done but uh but yeah i mean that's why as we make this transition from web 2 to web 3 i mean it's i i'm all for it because you put the power back to the people and yeah. um yeah well, uh I mean, if you think about like what you like you said with that, with all that tech, and they were basically pulling pulling all this data and then using it to like build files on everybody. But it's not even you can't even say they've done any. I mean, does it is it morally right what they do? Probably not. But like all marketing firms do underhand tactics to gather information from people. But like, there's nothing underhand going on, really, is there? Because all because mm. since the since the like the invention of social media it's all open source free information that we willingly give and put out there so yeah. they're collecting data what is available for everybody to see so they're not even doing anything wrong really are they it's there no. they're using it they just they just no. yep. monetize they're just monetizing it yep and they're tapping into the data the pipe of data the fire hose of data and that's coming from all these different social media platforms yeah so and really, they're really. they're using it to i mean you think about it like they the in web 2 they have you leave a digital footprint wherever you go as much as you try to protect yourself you're always going to leave footprints but you've got these data aggregators that come in and just pull from all these different places to just collect data and build out uh files on you and they turn around and sell them to the highest bidder and so i mean when people when it's free it's not free <laughs> yeah. you know it's uh you're definitely giving up your data and uh who knows how that can come back to bite you in the long run but i mean it's just the way we we are as a society right now is, is it's kind of like yeah screw it you know <laughs> i'm already i've already been breached 50 million times already from this company and that company yeah I uh, think it, exploitation. No, it's like I think it's just ah, yeah, okay. It, yeah. It, it happens. It happens that often. I mean, oh, I mean, here in Australia, the the amount of the amount of data breaches that have happened, and for the best part of it, no one really bats an eyelid. You've got like your paranoid people and your people that are really obviously into the data protection that will probably pursue, I don't know, compensation or pursue answers. But most people are sheep and they don't. They don't care, do they? Just, it's a herd mentality. It's like, ah, well, because I mean, the amount of banks um, uh, that have been exploited, big companies that have been exploited, where they've basically given out passport, their driving license, all this data, and yeah, then then you start thinking, like, really, that's why that's why digital identity is such a big narrative in blockchain because it's such a big frigging problem. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Um... Yeah, I think that digital identity will definitely solve it. Um, one of the things that kind of made me walk away from that whole industry um, is uh, is if you ever want to go down a rabbit hole, Mark, I highly recommend you look up a thing called persuasive technology. I'm go I'm actually googling it now. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's it's crazy stuff. So as I mentioned before, I was working with uh, professors. There's a, there's, a, there's, a persuasive, there's a persuasive technology conference in 2024. <laughs> yeah. Is it, uh, is it, is it actually is it, done through uh, Tristan Harris? Is that, is that guy's name on that page at all? Um, this is the, – the website is actually called persuasivetech.org. Um so I don't know who the uh, guy is behind it, but it probably won't surprise me. It's in. Yeah. So there's a guy by the name of Tristan Harris. He, um, the guy's brilliant when it comes to this kind of stuff. But uh, a lot of people don't know. And this is where I have, you know, the data is one thing, right? Sharing data, selling data. That's, that's 
that's a whole nother issue. The real issue where I kind of had that come to Jesus moment and had to do inward looking into things is trying to use that data to basically build out tech that would make it so that people would develop specific cognitive behaviors that you want them to uh, either purchase more stuff, um, continued binge watching a show, um, so on and so forth, right? Um, that steals time away from you, steals money away from you in a sense that uh, they're able to subconsciously speak to your, to your subconscious mind um, to tap into raw emotion, um, past experiences, nostalgia, you know, that kind of stuff that gets you uh, accelerated to do what we want you to do, right? And so it's pure manipulation. Um, if you are familiar with Netflix, Netflix is one of the biggest uh, persuasive technologies out there with the little spin. So every time that you finish an episode, it automatically says starting new episode in five seconds. Dude, that Dude, I'm watching. I'm watching Shit's Creek, and I'll put one episode on, and before before I don't, before I know it, I've watched five. <laughs> yep, yep. And exactly. it's exactly the same thing because, like, within within about three seconds, the 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 beginning, the the boring bit you're not interested in is gone, and writing and all that stuff, and it's just straight into it. You don't you don't even realize you've if you if you actually took a breath, you wouldn't even realize you've got onto the next season or the next episode. Yep. 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 So if you ever want to watch the wheelhouse that I came from on Netflix, there's a, there's a uh, show called social dilemma. I highly recommend you watch it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Get you, you'll get an idea of the world that I used to be in before I had my ethical, uh, enlightenment, I guess you could say versus, uh, yeah, kind of where we're at today. So, just so that everybody knows we're not doing that kind of stuff here but uh yeah know, that's what that's <laughs> yeah that's why actually code code is here no one really wants layer one x every code is coming and everyone's just been subliminally brainwashed into wanting layer one x <laughs> cody uh, is the master manipulator the puppeteer <laughs> nah 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 my friend like i've i'm so excited for web3 and what it can offer by putting data control, identity control, and basically allow the user to build the experience that they want through a web three internet of the future. Um, to me, that is when I had that aha ethical moment of walking away from that industry, which was very, very profitable. Yeah, yeah. to walk away from it and come over and, uh, you know, do do UI UX jobs here and there kind of thing until I got fully integrated into web three and saw the potential of it. And then when I saw L one X to me, that was the connection of what I've been looking for to kind of, uh, push the narrative that I want to try to help people that are stuck in this web two thing, yeah. because honestly, you know, this is why a lot of bigger companies are not wanting to move over just yet because They've got a cash cow, <laughs> a herd of cows, right? With all of the different data sources that they're bringing in with all their users that they can yeah. exploit and sell. Why would you want to break that up? Why would you want to break up that model? And so, you know, you look at a lot of these people that have just had enough with it and they're ready to just move on. And that's why it's so appealing to what for web three forum because they see this utopia type of vision of what it could be in a decentral manner and uh i mean i'll be honest i got sucked into it as well because i want that utopia thing like i want my kids this future to be protected from the games that they play uh you know all that kind of stuff so that i know that they're not getting exploited and you know their data is being hacked and things like that i think that as a parent, that's one thing that we can definitely uh, hope for in the near future. Yeah, definitely. What what's that program called again? Social. Oh, the the net the Netflix. The yeah, it's uh, called Social Dilemma. 
So is this like kind of what what you was it what was you was experiencing in at work yes. your kind of, yeah, your kind of environment? I saw that documentary. Oh, you work with the people on the show. Yep. Cool. That'll be interesting. Not thinking, the yeah. people that made this show, but the people that are being interviewed, because it's it's talking more. Uh, it's taking the social platforms. Yeah. Is it like, is it talking about, about like ethicals and stuff? Yeah, yeah, and there is a real need for ethical compliance across the board, um, and it's something that de is desperately needed. That's for sure. Oh, so yeah. There's a couple of people that have left big positions within Google and um, Amazon and eBay and like yeah. all these different companies. And they are they are definitely um, trying to make change and, and trying to implement ethical. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's a funny one, isn't it? Because if you like going back to what I said before, like all this data, what they can basically monetize it's all open source. It's free for anybody to use. So it's not like they've stolen it. It's out there anyway. But do it by by gathering all that data and using it to manipulate. Um, it's just being clever, isn't it? But it's not breaking the law. And I think when ethics come into it, if that becomes a legislation where it is crossing the line, then it can become illegal. Then it makes it harder to do what they're doing then, doesn't it? But it's a funny thing because it's it's open source free data. But then how are they using it and how are they manipulating people with it? Maybe it's crossing a line. Um, yeah, in a sense it is. Um, in a sense it is, yes, it is. Uh, I would say it's more unethical, not necessarily, not necessarily illegal because they are getting all your public data. Yeah, yeah. And social media is a platform for people to just put their life out there. It's yeah. interesting, right? Um, it, That's there, it is really interesting about the psychology behind the different types of uh, platforms that are out there. That's for sure. So. Yeah. That's why the, the ethics thing, it's like, how do you, does ethics, is that, if you brought in legislation, does that mean it's illegal or is it just a framework that people have got to follow? It's, I mean, uh, if you're familiar with what happened to Facebook about 10 years, well, about eight years ago with the Cambridge Arcadia data breach, um, that opened up, that opened up the industry quite a bit when it came to social, um, the whole exploit of how they were using data to target people. Um, so like for an example, when we were running Facebook ads, um, you know, back in the day, I loved this feature. I could take my whole customer list of emails, upload it into Facebook and actually send unique ads specifically to you, Mark. It literally has your name in there. It has maybe like something that I knew about you, for an example, right? Um, yeah, I and, and the conversion on those things were so freaking high. And uh, then Facebook had to come out and make those changes and do things like that. And it's, uh, yeah, it's just really interesting. So, yeah, I know. Well, I use, um, I've got an, well, I've got like a, an Amazon business selling um, like products online. And um, I use a piece of software called ManyChat. And that's like a floor kind of layout where it's like, if this, then do this, if this, then do this. And it literally takes you through a whole floor. And it's it's basically just gathering customer data and doing it in a way where you're not breaking any laws, but like, yeah, you're kind of manipulating people by offering them something to give them, to give you something back. And in the end, you get like the, the once they've got to the end of the floor, literally the idea is just to get their email that's it so you've got an email, yeah. an email list and then it'll give you like um i think it's the facebook id as well yeah and it's interesting because depending on the information that you gather on a person you only need about three to five uh bits of information to almost with about a 90 percent accuracy rate be able to identify the person yeah it only takes three to five points of yeah, data well, which is just yeah, well, crazy to me i mean not not long ago like that, that back in 2000 this is 2020 um 2000 and 2019 
um they many many chat the 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 like the, the basically the the company that were gathering all the providing the service you'd get you'd get a rich source of information because they did pull it from amazon so you, you'd get the name and address and because because they're your because they're your customer so but that's all changed now even when you're selling on amazon they don't give you they don't give even though they're your customer but they're not your customer they're amazon's customer so now they've stopped revealing the the, the personal details you you get the first name you don't get the last name or the address yeah it's crazy it's definitely crazy down the yeah. rabbit hole cody i'm going to um price prediction oh uh, yeah yeah g evan uh yeah cody's probably read it in point yeah i'll just ignore that <laughs> <laughs> yeah i gotta i gotta be signing off here it's like 2 a.m here so yeah yeah now it's all good g, g no, evan was... said g yeah, evan said, was... cody, was... cody give us your price prediction for the L1X peak ball of them. Uh, I see, but got to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the story of today. The internet connection's been dropping out all day. So, yeah, you, you just keep fair. Right. Right. Keep fair in it. <laughs> no, it was, it was a good conversation, Mark, as always. You know, I, I have, I have you. missed a lot of things, I think. Yeah, what was that? You, I missed a lot of things, a lot of alphas. Yeah. 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 yeah but it. Kind of more of a history lesson of Cody's past. <laughs> yeah. No, quite, in quite interesting, actually. And it all, and it kind of all ties in as well to like L1X and data as well. Like what L1X yeah, is doing. Yeah. A lot of things to mark now. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, anybody that's been listening for the, basically the last two hours kind of knows deep down the reason why i'm so passionate about l1x is that you know for me it solves a lot of the problems that i've uh, dealt with over the years of of things and so i'm definitely looking forward to kind of uh bringing new innovation to the market and on so many different levels and uh, cody i'm cody i'm looking forward to right when l1x has actually made us a lot of money that I can actually fly over there and you can take me to a football game. That's what I'm looking forward to. I want to, I want, I want, I want to go to a U.S. football game. You want to go to a, a U.S.? All right. Yeah, proper, yeah, proper football. Like, well, not, not soccer, like proper U.S. football, American football. I want to experience though. And may, maybe even, I mean, now I know you ride a horse, maybe even we, we ride a horse to the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's there's laws against that now my friend but uh you know 20 years ago yeah you could probably get away with it but yeah uh, yeah but yeah, well, please, please yeah do definitely a, come on over. sorry what was that give please do a l1x head giveaway hat giveaway we just did we gave away three of them uh, are you saying more. we need to do another it's one same design <laughs> um uh yeah let's 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 get to tge first and then uh then we can talk my my brain is so wrapped around that right now uh i yeah. can't think of anything else yeah so. no i think you've got i think you've all got your work cut out for you haven't you like the resource the resource drain on the team at the minute is so intense i mean i'm surprised you're still awake Cody. to be honest uh, i've been averaging about 18 to 20 hours a day kind of going through stuff and uh yeah yeah, AMA, AMAs, in multi, AMAs in multiple time zones don't help either, do they? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, I'm usually ending my day right about now, and then I'm back up around 7, so I'm only getting about 4 to 5 hours of sleep. Yeah, a night. you crash. You crash. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to go crash, but it was good. I'll check in on you again tomorrow, see if you guys no, are it's still all good. <laughs> it's all good. Love, love talking to you. Catch you later, Corey. Yeah. Likewise, see you guys. Bye, Have a good one. Bye. 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 You you missed you missed the alpha there, uh, Ronak. Ronak. Now we're just we're talking about all sorts of things. Um, like layer one X. Yeah, we're talking about layer one X. We're talking talking about like um, his his um, Cody's like history where he's worked in the past without naming names, but like going into like ethical stuff and data and yeah. Pretty interesting, actually. And Co for anyone that doesn't know, Cody is the Co Cody's got like a weird title. Is 
He's got a C-suite position at Layer 1X, but it's a title that I'd never even heard of, and it's called a Chief Experience Officer. So Chief Experience Officer is basically he's in charge of the visual user experience, um, both like what it feels like to engage with things and what's your experience using things, but also like the experience visually as well. So he's got his work cut out for him, and I think he's doing a good job because if you look at the L1X app, yeah. It's a pretty, it's a pretty damn good and clean interface. But got to give respect to Chris because Chris is, Chris basically pulls the data from Cody's head, and then um, puts it, presumably with a team of people as well, puts it onto onto the um, onto the screen. What we see here. Yeah. Now that we're good. There we go. So we've had we've had Matthew in, we've had Cody in, we've had Fur in, we've had, Ron, we've had Ronak in, we've had Crypto Walker in, we've had Skippy in, we've had we've had the Queen, the Queen of Layer One X in, Albita. Although Sandra and Ina will not be happy me saying that, and, and I personally know both of them. And like Sandra, Sandra's a Queen as well, and so is Ina. So we've got we've got three Queens at L One X. Will they three be joining queens. us? Uh, at some point, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna start messaging. I think, um, yeah, I'll send. I'll send some messages. I'll get. I'll try and get Sandra in. Maybe trying to get Ina in. I mean, a lot of people probably haven't even spoken. Like he's both here. If he if he if he gets free, who you like to see? Who he is? Sorry, uh, Kevin. The Kevin. Boss. Yeah, yeah, the boss, the big boss man. A big yeah. boss man. I think what I might do as well, I mean, I don't know about anyone that's listening, but um, although, I, see, what I want to do, I want to do an experiment because having having a live video stream through Restream or through uh, StreamYard, um, I can broadcast it to like um, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Kick, uh, Twitter, which is fantastic because it's one one bit of content is getting out there across all these social platforms. But when I'm looking, right, um, the only people that I can see, Kicker's got some views, but no one's watching it on Facebook. Eight people are watching it on YouTube and 549 people are watching or have tapped in and watched um, on on Twitter. But there's no, <clears throat> to, to speak, it's not like Twitter spaces. Twitter spaces allows people to just put their hand up and you can invite people up to speak because it's a it's um it's an open network. Whereas, be, whereas so friendly, yeah. yeah, whereas being on Restream, the only people that can speak are people that have got the link and they've got to click the link and then open it up and then they can they, then they can be invited into the space, which is it's kind of good in a way because it allows us to be on multiple uh, social platforms at the same time. But I want to see if going live on video on Twitter allows people to behave the same as what they do when they join a Twitter space. Because when you join a Twitter space, anybody can speak. They might have to put the hand up, but you can have two co-hosts and you can have, I think, 10 speakers on at, one, uh, on at once. And if someone wants to speak, they put the hand up and you can visually see someone wanting to speak. So you can either drop people down if you've got all them people up or you can, you've not got that many people up, you can just invite people up to speak. So it's a more... I'd say it's more of an open discussion, but I don't know if the live video stream on Twitter behaves the same as what it does as a Twitter as a as a Twitter space because at the minute this is a, a broadcast on Twitter, so it's not interactive on Twitter. It's only interactive when you come here. Uh, so I think the next time I don't know if this will shut down now because it's on it's on. Um, I might cut out, but it's on Fur's internet stream. But it, it might be an idea to put it into Twitter and just have a have a live have a live video on Twitter and just see see how that works. If people can jump up, if anyone if anyone knows, I mean, because Twitter live video live video is um, quite new on Twitter. But if anyone knows if it acts if it acts the same as Twitter Spaces, please drop it in in the comments because it'd be good. I'd like to know because if it if it did, I'd probably end 
I'd probably end this um, and then jump into open it up and jump onto an actual Twitter space itself. But I'm not again. I'm not hundred percent. So yeah, but yeah, big thanks to um, big thanks to Cora. It's good having it's good having some of the team coming in and getting their perspective because we don't always sometimes you don't always get to just have a have a banter and have a chat about just regular stuff, which is nice. It's been thirty um, thirty yeah more uh, more than thirty hours, I think. Nice, that's good. I feel I actually feel. I don't know. Yeah. I don't feel. I feel good today. Um, Two hours more. Yeah, I think like ending it. At, um, I don't know. Like when it when it went off last night with three o'clock in the morning. I mean, this we can keep it going. It just it just needs it needs a minimum of two people in the chat. You can't and like depending on who the people are as well. Like if you've got someone that's a real good talker. You could probably do it with two people, but ideally, you probably want like three people in the chat at the same time. Uh, but it's hard because people have got lives, aren't they? People have got kids, families, commitments. So even though time zones, there's always someone up in a certain time zone, but not everyone wants to jump in a video chat and um, spend too much time nattering about whatever. But the the good thing is because it's because it's a community space, it's not that hardcore layer one X. It doesn't have to be L one X, L one X, L one X. You can kind of you can just get to know people a little bit and just have conversations. It's not it's not like I don't know. If if boss comes to the stream, the chat will be full of questions. If boss come to the stream, it would be yeah. I mean, I could probably I could probably. Um, invite him on um uh but i think it needs it needs more i've, I've realized it needs more interaction so when you've got a di when you've got like a discord you can see exactly who's 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 participating who's there um when you've got this stream you've only got who's in the comments when they post you don't actually know who's watching or who's in who's there like the seven people in youtube um there's potentially 500 plus people on on twitter but again i think twitter is showing people that have watched and possibly left i mean yeah. i know i know um cody is a legend cody is a legend he is obviously absolutely yeah Cryptic V is a legend as well. So is PK. So is G Evan. So is Master Chef. So is Star Lord. PK. PK, baby. <laughs> give me a P, give me a pair. PK. And Tarek. Tarek's also a legend. Uh, where is Tarek? Tarek is up there somewhere. Tarek Jamel. Tarek Jamel shorts, so presumably he might have a YouTube channel. Cody's still here. Hey, what's up, buddy? Cody, oh, he's showing the love. Cody, get to sleep, my man. It's like <laughs> two, two, two a.m. in the morning, and he's. I know what it is. Cody's getting four more. He doesn't want to miss anything. Oh, he's, he's checking. He's checking. We're not talking about him while he's gone. We are. We're just bigging you up. He's trying to get more alphas for us. Yeah, yeah. V591 is a, is also a legend too. Oh, that crypto, crypto, crypto psycho, he's a legend too. Yeah, I like crypto. I don't, I don't know who he is, but he's a legend. And Ronak, don't let's not forget Ronak, the OG in the house that has been has been like up here from the beginning, from the get go. Tarek, Tarek was asking earlier on, what is a marathon? So like a marathon is just something that goes on for quite a long time, but it's not it's not a race. So you kind of just get there in your own pace. So you've got a destination. A, ra a race, typically, right, to define it, a race is you don't enjoy the journey. You just want to get to the destination. A, a marathon, you take your time, you enjoy the journey, and you, you build and... 
enjoy the experiences along the way. Just take as a human merit him. Yeah. Where human is running, but here our stream is running off for a yeah. long time. Yeah, the marathon is the stream. Uh, BTC 200 and G Heaven. I'm just looking at all the... Uh, the thing is, when you're talking and engaged in chat, I'm a man and I can't I can't absorb both. So like it's good how you like Ronak, it's really good how you pick out the questions in the chat because when you're in conversation, you don't even notice the chat. It just becomes noise. So a lot of the time, unless someone else is talking, then you can read and kind of catch up on a bit of the chat. Yeah. Crypto not is saying uh head to uh lol two twenty AM had to respond to a few last people on the other side of the world before headed to bed thanks again well, good night god bless Cody. Good have a good sleep. have a good sleep and yeah we, we're so close now aren't we like this this tga good night gn gn gm ga and in all reality people just said gm now don't they it's like in web3 gm means gn and ga yeah, means, yeah gm 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 it's just gm in it for everything doesn't matter um, i know only gm and gn yeah GA is good afternoon. Good afternoon, yeah. It's a good afternoon. It's 2 p.m. Yeah, GA, GM. GA. You guys too. Yes, we are. We are. It's um, yeah. it's gonna be it's gonna be exciting. I can't wait for I can't wait for the transition. The thing is, right, what I've this this is how messed up my weekend is. On on so Monday, right? I'm I'm planning on I wanna I wanna continue the hype. So when Monday comes, I want to stay awake all the way through until nine o'clock in the morning because I want to transit. I want to transition the space into, into directly into the space what Layer One X official are having. But then, I've got to go to work on Tuesday, and I've got a dental appointment at four o'clock on Tuesday afternoon. Um, so I've literally, I literally have no sleep. I'll go straight through without having any sleep at all. So I'm not really, I'm kind of, yeah, I don't know if I'm looking forward to it or not. I'm not too sure. Tomorrow but I'm I'll, not sleep. Yeah, in 12, tomorrow 12 a.m. it's the launch. Uh, Indian standard time it's 12 a.m. for the launch. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I put, uh, the thing is I, I, I'm kind of gutted really because I, I'm, I'm doing all this, I'm doing all this um, pre-launch party, whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to call it. But on Tuesday... I've got to go to work and I've got to go, to, I've got a dentist and I've got to go to work. So I'm actually, I'm, I'm going to miss the launch. Like, how, how, how effed up is that? Like, that is crazy. Like, I'm, I'm doing a pre-launch party, but I'm not here for the party. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, 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 we had a pre-launch. Uh, what was that? We have a, a party, I think, Adams by the L1X. Uh, wait, I can't see it. Yeah, there were two events in Discord. One which is going on, it's the marathon one, and another one is launch day live AMA. Yeah, and then there's another one. There's another one after that. During the launch, there's also there's also an X Talk Space series, which we is can bring them on the screen itself. Yeah. Launch day live AMA. Uh, I'm just going to post something in a chat, um, a big chat. Um, what's it called now? Um, I'm getting hungry now. I'm getting hungry. DeFi Dojo. Master Chief. Why not you jump up on the space, Matt? PK2. Uh, Master Chef have, have been saying you something. Uh, all these hours of pre-launch just to miss the launch due to work. What the yeah, and, yeah, I know, I know. It's, it's mental. The thing I've got um, 
I'll, I'll tell you something, right? Um, when I was, when I was, well, work. So I've got to go to work uh, because. I don't know. I've got I've got a job that I've that I've kind of got to do, um, and it's not going to take me all day. But I've got to, I've got to do it. But I've also got a dental appointment, so and I can't miss that either because I've been waiting for. Well, if I if I miss this, I can't get another one until May. So yeah, I'm looking forward to going to the dentist, which you don't normally say, do you? Who, who looks forward to the dentist, really? But when I was when I was um, eleven, I got knocked down by a car, uh, and it basically the the only part of the only part of the um the only part of my body <laughs> that made contact with a car was my head <laughs> so none of my body touched the car the car just hit my head and i i remember i remember being in hospital and my head looked like um a, a, an inflated basketball it was huge and i had two massive black eyes my face had swelled up and it basically destroyed my teeth. So my front teeth are actually dead. Um, and it's got to the point now, they, they've over the, over the years, they've discolored. So I'm getting some kind of cosmetic work doing on teeth, some cosmetic work done on my teeth. So I've been excited for it for a long time. It's the only time in my life I've ever been excited to go to, go to the dentist. And I don't recommend getting knocked down either. It's not a it's not a pleasant experience. So stop, look, and listen when you're crossing a road. Yeah, and the crazy thing is, right? This is this is a funny story. I never knew, I never knew who knocked me down because I was I was 11 years old, and I don't know why. I don't know why, but I never knew who did it. And it wasn't their fault. I think it was my fault. I think I slipped off the. He curb. was eleven years old. You was eleven years. No, I, I was I was eleven, and okay. it wasn't it wasn't the driver's fault. I think I slipped off the curb because I remember I remember looking, and then I don't remember anything then from the hospital, but I slipped off the curb, and I never knew who did it. And my best friend from being four years old, we was four years. Yeah, no, my, my, yeah, no, my, yeah, no, my, my bet, one of my best friends who I've known since I was okay. four, um, oh. we was out, we was out uh, on a meal with my wife, um, four of my best mates and their wives, were like a, there were eight, eight or ten of us out, and we we're at an Indian restaurant, and I started telling, I started telling the story, um, and, and obviously my my best mates knew I got knocked down because I was at school with them, so they knew what happened. But I was just telling the story uh, while we were having we were at an Indian restaurant, and and one of my best friends, uh, I think girlfriend or wife at the time, I think a wife at the time, Vicky, and she's she's like, where did where did this happen? And I'm describing where it happened, and it was it was her mum, her mum that knocked me down. So my best friend's mother-in-law. <laughs> knocked me down as a child but she she didn't know who i was because i don't know what happened she didn't she didn't hang around i don't know i don't think it was hit and run or anything but i never knew he knocked me down and she didn't know who she knocked down and it was my best friend my best friend's future no, wife uh that um knocked my down knocked me down so pretty pretty funny story oh my god <laughs> yeah this uh, is what's wait Sorry, when, you joined, when you joined the Layer 1X, who was the first person you met? Um, I think it was... Well, I met I met everyone. I kind of... When I, when I come in, because there was an event happening. Um, so what I was... You met first in offline. Yeah, yeah. So offline. I, I didn't meet anyone. The first time I met the team was in person. I never met I never met him online. I met him in person first. So the first time I met, I was at the event. So I, I kind of I remember I remember Mike. Um I remember uh Matthew and Kevin and also Sandra. Um there was another lady that worked in marketing that doesn't work there anymore. Um and yeah, one other one other person. Um so I met I met all of them at the same time, but after the event, I had um I had a conversation with with uh, Matthew, 
that time. And then when I went back again, there was another event at a later day. And I had a conversation with Matthew and Mike and, and, and Ina and Sandra. But then I got introduced to Kevin. I could have spoke to Kevin the first time, but it was a big event and there was a lot of people kind of wanting to speak to Kevin. Um, as you probably would do when you make when you, when you meet someone like Kevin, I didn't want to, I didn't want to intrude. I didn't want to interrupt or step on anyone's doors or anything. So I didn't speak to Kevin the first time, but when I went back, Matthew in, in like, um, um, introduced me to Kevin and I had a, I had a selfie with him. I've got a, I've got a selfie with Kevin at the office somewhere, uh, but yeah, it was, it was really good. It's really good. Like to meet Kevin, to meet them all, meet everyone in person because they're all just real. Like what you see is what you get. Like there's no fakeness. That's just how, how they all are. Like Mike, he's Mike's such a good dude. Like Machi, Kevin, um, Cody, even though he's American. I mean, you've got to, I mean, them Americans, they're, they're a weird breed, aren't they? But Cody, Cody's all right. Cody's not a bad American. <laughs> um but yeah uh and then like this even even like joe because joe's not joe works for obviously he's the community manager but joe isn't in australia joe i think joe's in tasmania so well it is australia well that is australia it's a state but yeah so i met i met joe as well australia crypto conventions i've met met quite a lot of most of the team, to be honest, and yeah, they're all really nice. I'm debating this geography things. Yeah, yeah. All these hours of pre-launch just to miss—it doesn't seem right, does it, Master Chef? I mean, it's it's kind of ridiculous, really. I mean, how, how the hell can I miss? How can I miss the launch of the one thing that I'm building up? Uh, right. Uh, I I think two two comment two two comment sites have been opened. Uh, what I can see two comments display here. Oh yeah. Yeah. One is on the main screen and one is on the outside that we only we can see. Ah, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, all the all the comments are popping up now. That's better. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I I heard about the Lear Onyx uh, first time uh, in the YouTube channel. Uh, there was one Indian guy. He was just promoting the Lear Onyx for 15 seconds, I think. He just told that join their Discord. Uh, they are the awesome project, and they might be launching soon. And they're uh, they are in the testness phase. And that time I uh, that time I I have never <clears throat> I have never uh, got into any new project before uh, layer 1x it was the first time nice so Ro ronak what what yeah. country what country are you in india uh, i'm in india yeah yeah so my my father-in-law i don't know if i've told you but he's from he's from surat yeah. surat gujarat yeah, yeah gujarat yeah yeah and i've never i've never been i mean like um, it'd be nice to go, but I've never I've never been yet. So are you are you are you from anywhere near Gujarat or more south? No, I I I'm from the northeast side, Assam. Oh, you're from so that's the opposite side. Yeah, that's northeast side near Bhutan. Yeah, yeah, because Surat and Gujarat that's the that's the northwest side, isn't it? The the the, the, the yeah yeah northwest, just yeah. opposite of us. Yeah. Yeah, I remember looking at it on a map, and I think, yeah, it's, I knew it was on the left-hand side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are in the one corner, yeah. they're in the one corner. Yeah, yeah. So, like, quite a, I'd imagine quite a distance apart then. <laughs> yeah, they're, I think it's been the longest distance. Yeah. 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 No, that's nice. So it's nice. It's I'll nice. That you, so it's nice that you found out about Layer One X, and it was just through a fifty through a fifteen second YouTube short. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I saw I saw about Layer One X on the full video. He was like a technical anal, analytic boy. Uh, he was nice. just saying, uh, yeah. He comes for the daily news and says about something technical words. 
uh, there I knew about the Leronix. He gave the 15 seconds promotion to Leronix. I knew it's it was a free promotion. Yeah. Yeah. He he loved the project. That's why he told about the project. He's been never promoting any of the project. So is I he um, is is he in the Discord community? Uh, I'm not sure about that. Literally. Oh, so you don't you don't you don't speak to him then? Is he is he like a, an inf is he an influencer? Yeah, he's an influencer. He have about one fifty k subs. Yeah, send send me his send me his details. I'll send him a message. Maybe it'll make yeah, some wait, uh, because we could do uh, we could we could do like a like. Does he speak Does he speak English or when he does the videos? Yeah, or? yeah, he 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 could speak English, but in video he's speaking Hindi. That's oh, yeah, that's he speaks the channel Hindi. Name. Yeah, yeah, I can't, I can't speak Hindi. But yeah, he could speak in English, I think. Yeah, probably, yeah. So. Yeah. So it's called Samjadu Bai Bai Baya. Samjado Bhaiya. Hmm. Samjado Baya Baya. It it means uh, Bhaiya means you you are telling the the big brother. Big brother. Ah, okay. Yeah, Samja means explain. Please oh, explain, explain me, brother. Explain yeah, me, brother. Yeah. Yeah, I'll give him I'll give him a follow if I can find him. If and you can, if you copy paste this, you will get it. Oh, I think I've uh, I think I might have found him. Nine hundred and nine yeah, videos. Yeah. Um does it, does it say explain trading in easy way wait let me see uh yeah 150 152,000 subs yeah 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 he's just in a okay. just on a video yeah he's just done a video he's got c he's got uh cz on a couple of videos oh he's not <laughs> yeah cj Elon Musk because he's covering the news daily crypto news yeah 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 he's got uh he's got elon musk on one with green eyes <laughs> i like it elon elon musk is his favorite uh favorite person i think because in before in intro he used to uh, use elon musk and his maximum portfolio the huge huge part of his portfolio is in dogecoin that's what that might be the reason ah uh, oh he's pushing he's pushing his own bag his support he's pushing his own bag is it <laughs> Yeah, that's okay. This was the first and I think the last Hindi channel where where I have heard about the layer one, and I couldn't find other Indian channel promoting layer one. Yeah, I mean his video he's done really well. I mean his videos he's had he's had um he's had almost ten million views. Uh, yeah. Oh, he's got a tele. He's got a Telegram chat as well. Yeah, where he gives the ins insights like uh, Wales, uh, Wales, uh, yeah, Wales movement of BTC from here to there. Yeah, he's pretty. Yeah, I mean, he's got nineteen thousand nine hundred and forty subs. I'll put, he have I'll, one more. One more. He have one more YouTube channel. He have two two YouTube channel. This one is his second one. This one, SMD Crypto. The short form of Samjhado Villa. SMD Crypto. He does two. He's got two, two YouTube channel, channels. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, I couldn't find which one is. Uh, SMD crypto. No, wait. Uh, I think. It... Mm, what was the name of the other one? Uh, I couldn't find. He might be promoting in one of his videos. He's a crypto trader, and I see him uh, doing the profit of 
टेन थाउजेंड परसेंट इन दिस सिक्स मंथ्स ऑफ बुल रन प्री बुल रन he so he, he met, bought so he's made he, some money then yeah he bought he was telling to buy us btc in 16k when others were telling to buy in 10k they were waiting for the 10k but he bought in 16k the lowest it's a very good luck and then he 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 started a 10x uh, trading 10x future also and he have now 10000% of his money He got a hundred x in six months. That's huge. And still, his trade is going uh, open. I'm just swearing. Is this a luck? Yeah, the other YouTube channel name is S D B Crypto. Fourteen K subs in the second YouTube channel. Uh, this one. what was the first crypto or first crypto project you have been uh your 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 mic is muted i think so is that better yeah yeah So um the first project that I ever bought the first project that I ever bought was Cardano so oh, that was that was the first one um and which was the first early project you have been the first what project early project means the project which was not launched and you have joined them oh god it's for, for me it's layer 1x obviously yeah the, the earliest project the earliest projects i got in was um come a project called cryptic which is it's like a web3 browser on on well it's on, it was on shibarium it's now on ethereum and that that this is i mean i didn't i've not i've had to take any profit from it but i put i put 0.1 ethereum in which at the time was worth 180 dollars and okay. that that hundred and that 180 dollars at one point about a month ago was 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 worth six sixty thousand wow Oh my off a hundred off a hundred and eighty dollars it was worth sixty thousand dollars like that is yeah that it, it yeah, literally it's, like it's 50 it, times it, yeah 50 yeah yeah it went it went mental yeah. 
But I didn't I didn't sell. I mean I'm still a holder and I, I took some money out, but I've not I've never made anything significant. So I'm hoping I'm hoping that that's gonna change. Well, I know that's gonna change with layer one X, but I've got a lot of other things as well. Have you ever got uh, scammed or hacked? Oh god, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've, um, um, so, so one of my first recollections was with I don't know if anyone anyone's heard of this blockchain, but there's a blockchain called Harmony. Um, Harmony, yeah, yeah, I heard of it. Yeah, yeah. So I bought I bought into Harmony, and they have their own. I think they have their own wallet or something. And I think I was, I think I was staking to a, a node or yeah i was staking and i did something i don't know what i was i didn't know what i was doing and i went into the voice chat um and i started talking no the video oh yeah i went into the chat and i started talking and i got i got some guy dm me and it said how many how many had how many admin and me being me being new i'm like oh great okay so i've got this problem blah 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 and he said right, okay all you need to do you need to go to this website sent me a website and he said you need to create yourself a mnemonic phrase and i didn't have a clue what i was doing and he said right you just put your seed phrase in and i, and I was just putting my seed phrase in a website but the website was yep. actually live so he could see he could see what was going on on the website so my funds my funds disappeared so that was that was the first one the second one, which is the yeah. major one, this is the one where I could cry. Um, I downloaded. I, I have like like no, I use Solana, and I have I have a Phantom wallet. Phantom wallet is the best wallet. Like I've used I've used a lot of Solana wallets. Phantom's the best one. And back in 2021, there was only there was only um, so Phant Phantom had a wallet on uh, desktop, so I was using the wallet on the desktop. And the other, I was at work and I was getting him, I, I wanted to, I wanted to check my wallet as you do, like impatient. And I, I downloaded, I went onto the Google play store and I downloaded the phantom wallet, put in the seed phrase to recover it. It didn't work. Put it in again. Didn't work. Um, and I got home. I didn't think anything about it. And then three or four days later, check my wallet. And I had to lie down on the floor cause I just felt, I felt sick. My wallet was empty. So this this wallet, what was on the Google Play Store, which if I had an Apple, this wouldn't have happened because an Apple, Apple wouldn't have allowed a fake, um, a fake app on the on the on the uh, App Store. So I basically give my seed phrase to someone, and at the, yeah. the, the time there was five thousand US dollars worth of Phantom worth of um, I had I had um, Sunny D, um, I had Radium. Um, I had, um, I, I, I had about three or four different, different projects. And then to make it worse, I got four more and I bought them all back with new money. So I literally spent the same again, bought all the same tokens back that I had. And this was in 2021. So this was the bull market. It happened. Peak of bull run. Peak of the bull run. And I, <laughs> I, I basically got wrecked and sunny sunny d sunny it's called sunny aggregator sorry it's called sunny and sunny aggregators work like they're all they're literally they're worth nothing nothing so cost me ten thousand dollars and i got nothing out of it same same as me i i have put uh eight percent or ten percent of my portfolio in gala games uh, i'm very passionate about games so uh, it was 80 cents but now it's worth is three cents per coin and it's getting some been, of like these hacks have you been buying more of it though have you been dcaing never no yeah well Ga gala games gala games is going to explode in the bull run like i yeah I... there's there's something going on between their board members yeah and I, I lost some of the uh, Gala games, I think 2% of it, uh, in while transferring it from BSC chain to the ETH chain. I actually, they have migrated from BSC chain to ETH chain again. 
uh, and I was not aware of that. Uh, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was in my own real world. I was not taking so much crypto news. I was not listening to crypto news. And after two months, I heard that the time to migrate from BSC to ETH has been already finished. And I got stuck there. And in uh, in July, I got stuck. And in August, September, in September, I went to P Network. And I, I have uh, talked to their support system and they gave me the one way. But honestly, they, uh, the number of gala games tokens i have lost in that bridge was very high yeah i i i, 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 I own I, I own i own a lot of gala games you yeah yeah great yeah. i lost about uh three thousand gala games in that bridge which is which was worth about eight hundred dollars like four hundred dollar uh, sorry yeah four hundred dollar that time gala games was seven or eight cents yeah, well, I mean, you look at where it's like because they're building a lot. I think the dispute's not as bad now. I think they've moved on a little bit, so they've got a, they've got a lot of investment. If you look at the price of Gala Games now, it's considerably gone up, hasn't it? I mean, if you bought if you bought in at like eighty cents, obviously you're going to be way down. Seventy eight. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you bought in at um, at its all time low, which was about two cents, um, one point five cents, I think. Yeah, yeah. So if you buy, I've been buying it since I've been buying it since rock bottom, because I'm looking at all time eyes and all time eyes. It's like, I mean, it's something like 60, 60 x or no, maybe fifty x or something back to all time eye. Um, but I think Gala Games because they're doing a lot. I just think Gala Games is going to explode in this bull run. Um, yeah, yeah. So, but it's that's only because I've been buying it's cheap. Like I'm not I'm not down on it. I've, I'm I'm like up on it. I've made I've made quite a bit since I bought into it. My my investment in Gala Games has just kept going up and up and up. Started off as a small Do you have a Gala position. node. Do you have a Gala node? I don't I don't think I have enough for a node. How many do you need for a node? I saw some of so I know some of my friends. They bought the Gala node. Uh, Gala note or what's that premium something? I'm not sure. It was worth three hundred dollar, and they're giving monthly the gala tokens. And yeah, nah, was I it just, gala note? Now, no, no, I just, the same. Yeah, yeah. I just, I just hold it. I'm just gonna hold it and make money on it and sell it. Um, yeah, I, I, I played a couple of gala games games itself. First one is Townstar I played, but it was quite hard for me, not sure why. I'm not good in farming type of games. Battle Royale is my first choice. Yeah, I'm not really I'm not really a gamer. I used to play games, but not recently. Okay. Okay, wait a second. PK, you're cooking dinner, man. Cooking dinner. I'm starving. And I'm kind of relying on my wife to feed me. Your, your uh, grandfather was um, Indian. Yeah, well, my my um, no, my father, my father-in-law. So my wife, my wife's dad. Okay. Yeah. So okay. my wife, my, my wife, my wife is um, half Indian. Like Kevin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Kevin. Yeah, my wife, my wife's half uh, half Indian, um, and she's part English and part Italian. Uh, if you go to Canada, you will find a whole city of Punjabi people were migrated from India to Canada. Oh, yeah. It's a whole city. Yeah. Yeah. I like, um, yeah, I like, in, I like India because uh, my father-in-law is Indian and yeah, uh, you have a, an appreciation for the culture, for the culture. There are a variety of culture. 
I'm living in India, but I don't know ten percent of its culture. Yeah, yeah. And you know, lots of. And I love, I just love curry. I love curry. I love, I love dal. Can eat it all day, every day. <laughs> which what what which one? Curry and like dal. Oh, dal. Dal, yeah, I love dal. Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. Like, Eating like with the rice. Lentils. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah, dal. Every Indian would like to have a dal. They, they used to not yeah eat rice without dal, especially yeah. where I used to live. Yeah, I might actually. What I might do, um, because am, am I controlling this? Uh, hang on a sec. Am I controlling that? Yeah, I am. So I'm. What I might do is play just to um, go back to. Am I am I actually controlling this video stream, or is this cut? Is this um, the previous one? Uh, I knew, yeah, here we are, newsroom. So one of the glossary ones, isn't it? So I might just, I might just, I might just play this. Um, so we've got some like content to go at. So watch the full AMA. So this is the L1X consensus mechanism. Because it just lets people know a little bit more about like L1X consensus making mechanisms, pretty, pretty important, and it will give this a play just to fill people in. It just gives a gives a bit of time for me and you as well, just to rest our brains a little bit. <laughs> uh, crypto Crypto Walker is writing. Hi team, I will try to get Sano to come on board tomorrow or tonight. What is Sano? Um, what's that, it, guys? Um, oh no, Shane! It's his, it's his buddy. It's someone else from the community who's into L1X. Okay. Okay. There we go. Yeah, I think we're on here. I think we've done it. So, um, once again, welcome back. Welcome everybody from the Layer One X community and from everywhere else around the world as well. Good morning, good afternoon, good night, good evening. Um, I've got to come up with a few more good things because I'm I'm starting to exhaust all the ups and downs of those. Um, but we have a, a really awesome presentation and of course a, a classic Kevin Miro board uh, prepared for this evening or this morning wherever you are. About uh, it's a deep dive into the consen consensus mechanism and of course uh, we've got the Layer One X founder Kevin with us and also. A uh, very special guest, our research manager, Niraj. Um, it's uh, awesome to have you here. It's going to be, uh, I suppose, fantastic showing the depth of the team that L L1X has got behind us as well in all aspects of things that we're building. Um, and, I, you know, it's just going to be a fantastic show to to show how everything kind of works in the background as it has been this ongoing series. But I won't, uh, I won't add on too much because otherwise we'll end up uh, like we did in this morning space with... Uh, Layer One X meme coin launching about beard token and all sorts of stuff. So I'll pass it straight over before we get out of hand. Um, Kevin, would you like to kick us off? Yeah, yeah. Thanks for that. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to wherever you are. Welcome to the second episode of L1X Tech Tector. Um, today we'll probably dive into um, L1X consensus. But before I before I begin, uh, maybe uh, you know. Dr. Neeraj, uh, if you want to introduce yourself uh, and give us a little bit, you know, give the community a little bit of background about yourself. Uh, sure, Kevin. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Neeraj Kherwal, and um, I have got an IT industry experience of uh, more than 13 years in academic as well as uh, of the industry as such. So I have been working on the technology uh, since last more than five years when I have been into research. Um, I am uh, happy and glad to share that we have also received uh, Australian innovation patent on the blockchain interoperability uh, patent that we had filed. Uh, similarly, we are also looking for an Indian patent uh, to get granted soon. So uh, apart from that, we have uh, many research papers published in the uh, public domain as such. So uh, that is about myself. Back to you, Kevin. Yeah. Thanks for that. Thanks for that. And, uh, you know, Neeraj is a pretty humble person, just like me, uh, Joe. 
she's a phd in blockchain interoperability and uh, um, you know having her on board kind of helped me out because when i uh, you know drafted the version 1 of the white paper we were at like 60 pages and then dr neeraj and dr pony clark the head of blockchain at uwa stepped in and they are responsible for the version 2 you know they extended it from 60 pages to 120 pages so um it has been fun working with uh, you know neeraj because um a lot of discussions you know when you start in interoperability you know it's hard to find people that can carry the discussions at the same level and when i you know started discussing with neeraj and it was a conversation where i was interviewing her and you know uh, for the, for the job and it was supposed to last for like 30 minutes it lasted for 2 hours because she had already gone through the white paper and was already suggesting what we could do so that was that was that was great okay um without any you know further delay let's jump into the white board and let's look at what we have today yeah <clears throat> fantastic okay. classic kevin miro board yeah yeah um, i think it's 100% needed Uh, I guess uh, I should start, right? No, I can, I can, I can get started. Okay. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll hand it over to you once the consensus comes through. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fine. Oh, it's funny why it's not letting me. But anyways, let me share my entire screen. Okay. Perfect. All right. So, can you guys see my screen, please? Yes, sir. Yes. Awesome. Okay. <clears throat> okay so today's topics basically around you know our consensus mechanism so we are going to go over the proof of x network architecture the consensus mechanism itself uh, the network framework as well so how the nodes are divided the contracts or you know uh, because we have different types of nodes we have different level of activities that these nodes do and what is the contracts look like even the transaction type the block types we are going to go through the transaction life cycle we are also going to look at the database drivers that we use we'll have a look at the fee model and maybe we'll touch a little bit upon the reward structure as well for the nodes because we are drafting a wiki uh, you know uh, so that everyone can look at it at the same place um so for those of you who are new over here and you know want to know what layer 1 x is basically layer 1x um, you know provides three different features the first is it allows you to go multi chain so you can have your assets across different chains and it lets you manage that as well it also has a native oracle system where your uh, information that you want to bring onto the network um, you don't have to use a third party application to do that and the third one is um, you know it's built in a way to solve the blockchain quartet um including uh, you know scalability security decentralization and interoperability and to do that it has a feature shard strategy so many blockchains have shard the database but we shard according to the features that we offer um so yeah these are the three uh, key pointers that define layer 1x let's jump into the proof of x network architecture <clears throat> all right so I understand a lot of you have already you know gone through this and I like to reiterate it so you know you get used to this um, architecture as well because for those who will be hosting nodes it's pretty important to understand this so layer 1x has two different types of nodes and the reason we do that is because in the blockchain quartet when you're trying to solve the problem of scalability security decentralization and interoperability if you think about it i don't think blockchain scalability currently is a problem and the reason i say that is there are a lot of blocks on a lot of layer 1 chains which are empty right there are not a lot of transactions in them now of course you have bitcoin and ethereum that get clogged up but again until we don't create a strategy of moving assets you know from one position to the other you are not going to leverage the aspect of scalability anyways that's like if you're trying to send emails if emails were not you know going to go from yahoo to gmail why would you need you know 10 million emails a second right you wouldn't need that much so again our focus right now is on interoperability and security 
and at the same time we will work on the decentralization and scalability aspect of it so being able to securely exchange information is the priority and in order to do that we have two types of nodes one is the event listener node which is over here and the second type of node is the um, full validator nodes now the event listener nodes as the name suggests is an oracle system that is the x talk node like we call it and we have another ama that we've already done on that so on this um, ama focusing on the full validator node the full validator node is again divided into three different parts right three to four different parts the first one is making sure that the l1x transactions don't have a bottleneck right so the full validator node in the first instance focuses only on that the second one is the type of contracts so there are certain times where you know you need to transfer the contracts and this is where two types of clusters they come together to function um, you know accordingly and and we also have the x stock and evm So the Xtalk specifically understands that if the event listener node is to go and execute a certain piece of software on the full validator node it has to first interact with the xtalk node because what we have done is <clears throat> when you want to listen to a certain event from an external source the xtalk node has a contract called as source chain registry you will go and say that i want to listen to my address or my contract address x for information y on place z that information is stored in the x talk nodes and that is why the event listener exactly sends this information back to the x talk node to know okay once i receive this information what else do i need to do now many of the chains over there um i think it's it's red belly in australia as well where they have forked the evm infrastructure solely relying on evm but in the vm ama that we will have we will see the gaps that we find in evm and how there can be a problem of scalability over there but to um, you know increase the adoption we have an l1x evm instance running with us meaning although you know you may go and deploy a contract that does not interact with l1x vm at all you can just use the l1x evm but this is the line of separation where an l1x contract an xtalk contract and l1x evm instance don't need to be uh you know uh, kind of tied up to each other so you can have an xtalk uh, contract talking to a l1x evm where you don't want to go and build a contract on l1x vm so that it provides a way for developers to come and redeploy the same sm smart contracts they have but still leveraging the interoperability aspect so this allows them to like quickly speed, you know a testnet environment deploy their evm contracts they have and with a single xtalk contract allow them to go multi chain so we have kept it in this way it's pretty modular and we do see that for the next 10 years you know this kind of infrastructure uh, will will suffice now just quickly touching upon the security points table there are five areas that we have kind of recognized that we need to focus on from the security standpoint so of course the public private key generation algorithm um, you know we have the sep 256k1 that is even um, evm compatible we have the hashing data to the state so how the data is hashed on from the transaction and the block level onto the state we also have like a global snapshot checkpoint and i'll come to that later on once we go to the super cluster the other one is the node to node communication so we focus on we have two types of networking architecture 
architecture. So one is JSON RPC and one is gRPC. So gRPC uses some thing called as Crotoba. What it means is it is easier, faster, and more secure to use gRPC when the nodes are trying to communicate with each other. But when a client, like, you know, you send a transaction from a website to the node that uses the JSON RPC. And of course, the block proposal verification. Um, Neeraj will go into the, you know, POX consensus in depth, but we do have a randomization algorithm and a register where a node selected once will not be selected up to a certain point in time again uh, for a certain epoch level so this allows us it's like you know in terms of the consensus modularity it allows us a great way of saying if you don't want to use X, you can use Y and still achieve the same level of security, you know, with us. Now, I understand that there will be a lot of developers looking at this video even right now and in the time to come. So don't freak out. I'm going to show you something, but that's mainly for the developers when we open source the code. So I've also created I like to call it the hash wire, right? So I've also created a, you know, a flow chart that shows each and every function, each and every calling that happens from one place to the other. And this flowchart is pretty complicated for everyday people, but this is only to be used when you want to go and analyze the whole consensus code. Like you want to deep, you know, deep dive into the code itself. This flowchart will help you to understand how the functions move from one place to the other. But anyways, uh, we'll share this board across. So this will be there as well. Um, yeah. Coming to the POX consensus phase, I'll let Neeraj go uh, through this because she's the main person who has written this part of the paper, which has been approved by me, but it'll be best for her to go through this. Uh, sure. Uh, thanks, Kevin. Uh, I'll just share my screen. <clears throat> Hello everyone. So we'll start with the LONX consensus process. That is nothing but the POX consensus process. So uh, to make it easier to understand what we are going to do is we are just simply uh, going to have a quick look, look how POX consensus
time or say a lower response time then um, we'll be able to handle the uh, transactions more efficiently and in a uh, like smaller block finalization time so that is the reason another factor that is getting counted and the last one that we have is security measures so this security measures is more related to uh, like uh, ensuring the identity and integrity of the participants Uh, so that we mitigate the financial risk as such so uh, these are the uh, like metrics that are being considered to evaluate the uh, eligibility of the of a node to get selected as a uh, what we say to get selected as a block proposer so uh, you might ask like um, like uh, we have in all this seven uh, parameters as such right three plus four seven parameters as such so uh, would they all be equal so the answer is uh, no we are actually providing flexibility uh, to this uh, so first of all why is that required so the very uh, basic reason is at the start all the nodes would have uh, got the node nft and price of that node nft is same for all the nodes as such right at this stage so next what comes is uh, stake age so since all the nodes are uh, like uh, join will be joining the elvonix network now like since ours is a new blockchain network so stake age also becomes uh, like uh, not that significant factor so which factor will be contributing more as of now so that would be locking period for how much time the node is willing to commit to the uh, elvonix network and want to uh, actively participate in the network so at this point locking period should have more weightage as compared to stake balance and stake age so uh, i'll just move down so that is the reason we have created this uh, sheet for the weightages for each parameter or each metric as such so say initial six months stake balance and stake age is having comparatively less contribution for calculation of your stake score and locking period is having more weightage over a period of time this can be normalized in the similar uh, sense in this initial stage your response time will matter more as compared to your uptime as such because initially definitely all nodes uh, would be willing to be available most of the time as such so that is the reason we have added uh, these weightage factors so that uh, the pux consensus mechanism is flexible as per the uh, like network dynamics are changing so it is flexible to adapt to that so uh, you might be wondering uh, okay we have now calculated the we have now uh, like uh, have these metrics as well as their weightages so how are we going to get this x score so for this what we are uh, doing is we are actually using a uh, fuzzy logic mathematical model so uh, as you can see these are just the mathematical formulas as such where each metric is getting considered so i won't go into the depth of this this was just to give you a glance like um, the how uh, the proposed px consensus is actually supported through the uh, fuzzy logic min max multi objective model so um, this flowchart will give us a quick review as to how would a node get selected as a block um, proposal yeah. just just before yes, you definitely. carry on yeah just before you carry on neeraj i just wanted to give you a bit of perspective on why the response time is so important to us right um so you think about let's take a situation right let's say there are two different nodes and both of them have started producing the blocks and are syncing with each other now 
let's say both of them have reached the block height of 100 right so 100 a and 100 b if let's say the b node drops right let's say there is a network problem the computer crashes now the node a reaches 110 120 let's say the node reaches 120 when the node a uh, node b comes back to life if you look at let's say near protocol the way the syncing works is it will get the most updated block 120 and start syncing in a descending order right the problem is if there is another block which will happen in a few seconds the syncing stops it gets again the block height and starts syncing it over there so the 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 ability of node b to sync with node a is in a way where node b has to be faster than node a if you think about it now this sometimes can you know result in a in an inefficient and lock condition what we have done is we have reversed that process so if the node B is out of sync. It doesn't start from block number 120. It starts from block number 101 and makes its way up. But at the same time, because it's based on the block hash, our algorithm allows us to have this node run into two different perspectives, which is one is the sync perspective and the other is the active perspective, which is it syncs up to block 120 and starts taking in transactions for this 121, 122, 23, but then still keeps going in the ascending order to finish the sync process. So instead of like this lockup me mechanism where you're going in descending order and you're again trying to keep up with the whole flow, this is what we have changed. And that's why in the, in the initial stages to test how efficient this is, the response time weightage is the higher. Yeah, yeah, carry on. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. Thanks for uh, like giving more detail about this risk, uh, significance of the response time, how, why we have added the more weightage yeah. to it. So uh, now we'll move on to uh, this uh, basic flow chart where we'll try to understand like on what basis or how a particular node is being selected as a, uh, is being uh, like getting evaluated to be eligible to become a block proposer. So uh, we'll have a list of active nodes in the Elvenix network. So initially, we'll be checking whether they have the minimum stake. That is nothing but the node NFT as of now that they need to have. If a node doesn't have that, then node will be getting discarded from the list of eligible nodes to become a block proposer. Okay. If it has a node NFT, then in that case, the stake score will be calculated. So we have uh, like just now been through the various metrics which are being uh, contributing to the stake score. So as we all know now that these three metrics have uh, they have weightage added to each one of them so that this stake score is calculated accordingly. Similarly, kill score is also calculated uh, based on these four metrics that we are seeing again we have the bridges attached to each of these metrics and we have we calculate the kin score for the node so based on this stake score and kin score we get the x score of the node now if you notice again stake score and kin score would have weightages added to each one of them so that uh, the uh, like x score for a particular full node can be calculated based on the uh, like network requirements as such. So once this X score has been calculated, a threshold would be there that minimum this much X score should be there so that a node can participate or become eligible to be a block proposal. If that is not the case, uh, say if some, some node uh, doesn't have a good response time. Uh, then in that case, uh, in this or they have very low participation history. So in that case, if they have uh, got the X code which is less than the threshold, they would get discarded. So once this condition is satisfied.
where your x score is greater So the so the internet has literally just been dying. I think I've got I've got a live stream. I've got a live this live stream going on here, and then um, Fur has also connected on the back end as an admin. And this live stream has been a nightmare. So what I'm gonna what I'm actually gonna do? Um, I'm gonna start a live stream again, and because I'm using Restream, there's another. Because the basically the premise behind using Restream is because I can then share it across um, almost all different socials, so like YouTube, um, Twitter, Facebook, Kick, um, and I think Instagram is the other one what it's connected to. Um, problem being, I don't actually think it like I don't think Twitter likes it, and. Um, it's broadcasting it, but then it kind of slows down showing the views because it's not a because it's an actual um, a broadcast. Because what what I want to do, but basically when when you when you have Twitter Spaces, Twitter Spaces itself allows interaction, so it allows people to put the hand up and they can everyone can see and it's like oh such a what he wants to come up and then you can invite him up and they can come and speak. Um, and I think it's good. I think it's a lot more engaging, and I want to. I want to see if that can be done um, on the live feed video, but doing it direct through Twitter instead, because if it behaves like Twitter Spaces, I think it's going to be way more, way more engaging, way more interactive, and you can you'll be able to see who's there as well, who's coming up. So that's that's what I'm going to do, and this is this has been going now, and it's crashed um, twice already. And because I need to stop and start it anyway, because es Escobar made a good point that um, after about four or five hours being live on a stream, what it does, it's Twitter stops showing it. Because I think, I think it's too long uh, and it stops showing it at the top. And I, I think the reason for that is because it's not a Twitter space. It's a, it's a video broadcast. And I think if it's broadcast on Twitter or it's it's um a live feed on twitter i think i think twitter behaves differently i think it gives you premium um viewing a viewing access from different from people that are, that are tuning into twitter so i'm gonna do that i'm gonna do that and i'm gonna wait for uh some let's have a look yeah, I'm going to do that. So my wife is making my wife's making dinner. I'm feeling refreshed, revitalized. I've had five hours sleep, but I'm, I'm feeling good. So my wife's making dinner. After dinner, I'm going to stay online until my wife calls me. And then I'm going to shut this down. I'm going to open up a Twitter live video, forgetting this, forgetting this uh, studio restream thing and just working with the Twitter, working with the Twitter, um, like, uh, software. I, I've never used it. I've never done a live video, but I'm going to use Twitter and see how it works. 
So I'm going to post a new link in the comments. And Kimist, good morning, GMGM. Hey, PK, I hope you enjoyed your dinner. Cooking dinner at the moment. So you, you're in, I don't know, you, you're in, you're over east, I presume. Um, yeah, so Kimist, I'm going to direct the message. At, in fact, I'm going to direct the message at you and PK because you're both here. So t Twitter is basically a nightmare. And I think I've realized what it is. Because Restream is a piece of software where you create content and then it, it kind of distributes it out to uh, different different people, different uh, socials. It, um, tw I don't think Twitter likes it. I really don't think Twitter likes it, and it stops showing it in front of people. But I, I also have had issues as well because I think the bandwidth that it needs to 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 make Restream work. I think it's too much for my my poor internet connection. So I'm going to shut this down after my dinner, and then I'm going to go live again on Twitter direct. So forget this restream. It's not going to be. It's not going to be on YouTube. It's not going to be on any other social. I'm just going to do it on do it on Twitter. And the the reason for that is as I've just explained. But one of the main reasons is when I'm when I'm looking right. There's at the minute there's ten people watching it on YouTube. There's uh, 10 people watching it on Facebook and 620 people on Twitter. Now, those people on Twitter, are they live or are they people that have viewed it? I'm not too sure. I know on, I know on YouTube and uh, YouTube and Facebook, they're actually live viewers. So all like 90, 90, what 95% of people that are viewing, are viewing it on Twitter. So forget the other platforms. I just go to Twitter, watch it on Twitter. Um, it's a shame because I, I want to be on YouTube as well, but I want to I want to experience to see if I can get real engagement on Twitter. So because I like the idea of people putting the hand up and you can see them and you can invite them up as a speaker and you can have like two co-hosts, you can have 10 guests. And I want to see if that's the same for the live video feed on Twitter, if it's the same as Twitter spaces. So we'll only know when we try it. I might do a demo. I might do a test space just to see what happens. But yeah, you missed some guests. Kimist, we had on. Um, we had on. Do you know what? I feel really bad. I was referring to her as the Queen of Layer One X, and I didn't include you, Kimist. I actually feel I feel, I feel ashamed. I feel like I should. I feel like I should get up and go and stand in the corner and put a cone on my head in the naughty corner. But we we had we had Alba pop up she graced us with a present a presence and i referred to her as the queen of layer one x and then i felt bad so then i then i've got to add ina i've got to add sandra and i've got to add you as well it's not many queens is there in the space so big up to the queens so yeah you so sorry digressing which i do quite often we had on um who do we have we had well we've, we've had fur in we've not had joey ento today so Joe, Joey Anto, I'm disappointed, man. Yeah, really let the side down. So we had we had Furin, who's been on quite a lot, to be honest. Uh, then we had Matthew on. He came up and was chatting to him for, I'd say, a good 15 minutes or so. But then he had to hop off because he was getting important calls coming through. Uh, and then we had Cody on. And Cody was here for about two hours, um, having a really good conversation with Cody, going into a bit of a deep dive about his past without digressing too much about where he worked um but yeah we're good it was it was it's been a good day um i feel refreshed revitalized so hey crypto psycho do we do you know if mexi or bitmart will do an official announcement for l1x haven't found anything in these websites well i bloody well hope so like right? if they don't yeah they will be yeah 100 100 percent when when um when any blockchain uh when any centralized exchange um, lists a new uh, block, lists a new project, they always do official announcements because at the end of the day, they want to create volume for projects that list. So it's like it's like their, it's their way of marketing it. So they, they want to get as many eyes as possible on the projects that lists that list on the on their chain. So yeah, as soon as as soon as it's confirmed and they've like provided the integration, the liquidity, all the stuff that's that, that's done behind the scenes, 
as soon as all that's done and launch day is imminent, then they'll post it. And I don't know how, how they work. I don't know if they, if they post like um, as they launch, maybe, or they post and give a bit of notice. I'm not too sure because the thing is, they can only post it when L1X is actually on the chain and connected and the liquidity and everything, all that stuff that allows you to buy. They can only post it when all that's happened because obviously if they post it beforehand, um, then they can't. you can't really do anything with it, can you? Um, so, I mean, they could post it beforehand in reality because they're announcing that it's going to be launching at a certain, t a certain day or a certain time. So, yeah, maybe forget what I just said there. But yeah, they they will be they will be announcing it one hundred percent, and yeah, I'm open. I'm looking forward to the other announcements as well because there's not there's there, there isn't just Mexi, there isn't just Bitmart. There, there are going to be more now. Will they all roll out on day one? I don't know, but they might they might roll out like um, throughout the week. Also, um, Cryptic V. I don't know if you was here when Machu was in, but he was like he, he revealed quite a bit of a bit of alpha now. They probably need to go back and sleazy might be able to timestamp it. I don't know how that works on on you on on our Twitter, but he was talking about um dexes that L1X are connecting with on different on different blockchains. So like on Binance, for instance, uh, ETH, I, I think AVAX. I don't know if you, I don't know about all every single dex, but he was basically talking about um Oh, chemist as well. I'll tell you this as well. Plus everyone else, obviously. <laughs> but he was talking about having a wrapped version of L1X. So, like, do you know when you're on like Pancake Swap and you can you can literally buy anything? Right? You can buy ETH, you can buy Polkadot, you can I think you can buy everything: Cardano, Chainlink, um, Bitcoin. And for people that don't have a clue that are on Binance, they actually think they're buying the token, and, and in reality, they are because the liquidity is backed. Uh, by the official, by the by the uh, asset itself, but you're buying a wrap version of it. Well, Machu was talking about a wrap version of Layer One X too, so you'll be able to be you'll be able to be on Binance and go to. I mean, I don't know what Dex is it is. So if it were Pancake Swap or maybe another Dex, I don't know, but it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, if you're on if you've got B B and B and you you you're a DGen on Binance, if you've got to go to uh, another another decks like i can't even think of buying pancake swap decks is um cookies cookie swap is it um baker baker swap something like that but you go to these other decks and you'll be able to buy l1x and it's a rat version of l1x but the liquidity is backed by the original asset so you, you you're getting l1x and that's i don't know if that's going to be rolling out from launch day but it, that is something that's happening as well so you drop that alpha so that's that's really good. Um, Crypto Walker is in the house. Crypto Walker, come on, sir. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. I'll see you on a hey, um, PK. Appreciate you, man. Um, now I was trying to do the I was trying to do the space twenty four hours nonstop, but it doesn't it doesn't actually work like that uh, because Twitter doesn't actually like a long form content i don't think so it, it stops showing people your, your feed if you will so yeah chemist is wondering when she's going to be retiring same time as me in fact chemist you don't need to wonder when um it's going to be the same time for all of us so cryptic v crypto walker um we're going to be retiring yeah, it is. We're going to be retiring all at the same time. Could be 2024, 2025. But dude, Cryptic V, the alpha with the uh, Dex, that's insane. Because it's in, it's important being on it's important being on centralized exchanges. But you have got to remember, most Dgens like are here, aren't they? Most Dgens are, are perfectly comfortable using using like Pancake Swap, using Uniswap, um, or I don't know, Giro Wallet on Cardano. If you want to Dgen over here, but yeah, there's for, for the for the the Dgens of the world, which there's a lot of Dgens. Like, if you can buy it on Binance Smart Chain, you're not you're not changing anything, then, are you? Like, the the hype goes out, people get aware of Layer One X, and then say, "Oh, sh where, where can I buy it?" 
And then like Matthew's like, well, you just go to um I can't think of the swaps, but like pancakes. Well, you just go to pancakes, what put in L one X, they'll drop down, you can buy it there straight away. Um that is that's that's so good because that's gonna that's gonna help adoption because you don't need to say, Oh, well, you need to go to um L1 Dex or like L1X app or whatever, or you need to create an account with Bitmart, or you need to create an account with um Mexi. <clears throat> you just do what you do normally and degen away. But this time you're degening into a into a layer one blockchain. Yeah. Tabby. Yeah, so it's gonna be pretty it's gonna be pretty good. <coughs> sorry, sorry, the draft is just getting the door. My wife's just making bacon bacon on toast. So I'm gonna just I'm just gonna eat that. So when I when I come back, um when I come back I'm gonna then go live on Twitter. Um uh, Kimist, it's a shame. You gotta you've just you've just come in and you gotta go. You just gotta go and leave. Distraught, I am. Absolutely distraught. You've just you've given me this false hope. I saw Kimist in the chat and I was getting all excited. Um and then now I feel all deflated. You've just sucked the life out of me. The wind has been taken out of my sails. It's from you completed, Mark. <laughs> hey Ronak. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, I, I just now took my lunch. Yeah, that's cool. I've I've I've, de I've decided right. So the internet. Yeah, forty minutes. I'm out. Chemist, just cancel it. You don't need the money. Just stay home. Stay in stream. Stay here. Stay present. Come on, focus. Focus on what's important. L1X. Put them. Put them. Put them. Uh, blindsiders on. L1X into the into the launch let's go um yeah so ronak what i'm going to do because sharing video for my internet connection is not a good idea it can't handle it so i'm going to end my wife's just making me tea my dinner if you're from northern Eng not if you're from the north of england you call it tea uh but i'm she's making me tea on my dinner and then I'm going to come back. I'm going to I'm going to actually end this space, but I'm going to start it back up again after my dinner, and I'm, and I'm, going, to, and I'm going to do a live. I'm going to do a live stream, live video stream, but on Twitter, so not using this software. So I'll post the link on Twitter, and hopefully everyone then can jump in. And I hope it behaves like a Twitter space where people can put their hand up, and if people want to come up and chat, they can come up and chat. So that's the plan. We we we, we are going to close this. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna. Well, you, I can keep it open, but there's there's no but there's nobody here, so I'm gonna close it. Just eat my dinner, which I'll be about I'll I'll be about ten fifteen minutes, and then okay. I'm gonna come back and then I'm gonna I'm gonna start a live Twitter space, a, a live Twitter video feed. What's because, what's, what's the time there? Um, ten to six in the afternoon. Sorry, six p.m. 6 p.m. Yeah, you'll you'll take your dinner now. Yeah, that's when that's when I eat. That's when I wow. eat. In India, they, 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 in in India, they they take they they take tea in this time, and uh, about 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. they they to take their dinner. Oh my God! Do you know what? Right, <laughs> most people most people in England or Australia especially. Yeah. 11, 11 o'clock. I'd say. 90% of Australians are fast asleep in bed. Oh my god. <laughs> like almost like a lot of Australians are in bed for like nine o'clock. It's like it, Australia's backwards. Well, people go to bed so early in Australia, it's crazy. Like, I, I stay awake. Like, oh, I mean yeah. some people have the tea the dinner earlier. Some people have the dinner like at five o'clock. So yeah, um, so I, I can leave. I can leave this. I can leave this space open, um, but I'm not going to be here. So unless Crypto Walker um, steps up, steps up, steps up, unless Crypto Walker steps up, um, I'll end. I'll end. I'll, well, I can either leave it open. Do you want me to leave it open, Ron? I could you want me to close it. Yeah, I think you can close it. 
Right, well, I'll close it, but anyone any, any, anyone that's listening, I'm going to reopen it in like... Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna reopen it in like fifteen minutes, so I'll catch you guys very very shortly. Ronak, Ronak, I'll see you in fifteen.